Unified welcomes you to the following presentation of the Midwest Esports Conference. Here at the MEC, we partner with schools all over the Midwest to create premier gaming experiences. The most common angles that the operator plays, this is like second to only be long. Fight is likely having a leg shot, but they're too slow! Hariri lands a perfect headshot. Look at Sage. Laying in the middle. Laying in the damage. Going in revenge for their honey. No they way. Sage Wabe gets the quad or two. That was so great. That sounds fun, so I'll give it a chance. Uh, and then we ended up playing in high school uh, the next uh, two years together. We've been playing ever since. So he kind of taught me the game. We've been playing on a team since then. And then now we're in college, so we can't play together anymore. We we we, we do love all the players. Even the ones we shit talk. We love you all. We love you all. <laughs> Body Pluto looking for the plank. Trickster Ooh. waiting. Maybe looking for the steel. Pluto, Pluto has his engage. The scatter of the week comes through. Watch Levi though. Levi hasn't been touched just yet, but the damage is coming through. The melt line gets melted. Jinkwall on a killing spree. And all of Ottawa goes down. Why? Oh. Those don't go in. It goes off the sidebar. Starting to come out. The flash is popped. The rolling thunder is utilized to perfection One enemy and now enemy. it's all on Tyson but Tyson just keeps on going welcome to the MEC enjoy the show Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Monday Night MEC action. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our first series of the day. My name is Mac Dewey. Joining me in the casting booth is my main man Yanni. How are you feeling tonight? You know what? I am feeling pretty good. Uh, you know, wasn't exactly expecting to uh, even cast tonight. <laughs> so thank you all so much for having me on. Excited for a really a uh, fun game between Briarcliff and Cornell tonight. Two teams that are pretty, at least evenly matched, close in the standings, I mm -hmm. guess you could say. But Cornell still hunting that for that first win. And tonight might be the night. We'll see. Hey, Monday night is made for miracles. So we take a quick look at the standings where it's the final night of week number four. Seven games in total. Briarcliff and Cornell, they each got two games left in the season, including this big matchup that really is going to be important for seeding. They are kind of looking on the outside. Drury Panthers with three wins there at the five spot. Uh, Briarcliff going to have some trouble catching them, but hey, we'll see if they can make some magic happen. Drury still got one more game. Might be able to tie three or four. Yeah, it's going to be a little rough. If you can at least, you know, retain that six seed, right? You know, you'll be like, okay, well, you know, we'll go up against one of these three teams that currently have four wins and you know be pretty okay with that. Uh, yeah. But, you know, you don't really want to, you know, drop down any any further or anything like that, especially with uh, the teams like you know, GVU and Ohio Northern at the top of this conference. It is, they are really, really strong teams uh, that I always love watch by. But, um, you know, these two teams, I'm very interested to see how these uh, teams are going to match up and especially these top laners too mm -hmm. uh, i am really really anticipating the picks that are going to come out uh from oxy and eliza up here yeah taking a quick rundown of the rosters we got oxy up in the top lane for briarcliff university mike and camer make up the signature mid jungle duo and zero and raymond round out the bot lane yeah, and on the other side you've got eliza up in the top lane Buddy in the jungle, Failwin in the mid lane, Ixuo and Peaches rounding out the bottom side. And you know, you you know, you told me much about this mid jungle duo of Mike and Cammer. Yeah. Uh, and you know, this top side just seems like it can get really weird and really wacky, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when when looking at the other side, because both of these teams are doing crazy things of the top side. I mean, you know, I want to see what Cornell's going to respond with. Can they get as wild and wacky? As Briar. And speaking about the top side of the map, 
Uh, I feel like Elephant in the room a little bit. There were some wacky bot lane compositions from Zero and Raymond uh, in, in their previous match over the weekend. So I'm curious what other interesting combos they're going to be able to pull out. Caitlyn's support. Uh, I saw the like method, Yanni, a little bit. A lot of traps controlling the objectives. It was a really close game. So Briarcliff, I feel like in, in today's match, definitely looking for a bounce back victory, try and get that second win, maybe move into the conversation at top five. They had a really, really good performance at the MEC Clash LAN event, landing top four placement during that round, Robin. So curious to see if they can keep that momentum moving forward and try, try to close the season out on some good victories. Yeah, and one of the best ways to ensure that you are keeping your momentum from past games mm -hmm. on a good start uh, yep. for the games that you're going to play. And you had already mentioned, you know, pulling something out like the Caitlyn support. You know, we're seeing all these double range bot lanes come out with, mm -hmm. you know, carry and, you know, traditional carries <laughs> and in the support role because you're able to just walk up and knock down these plates, get that mm -hmm. early infusion of gold, go back, pick up the world atlas because you're starting with your Doran's blade nowadays. <laughs> uh, and then just be an overall menace. You come back and now you're hitting gold. You're getting gold and you hit yeah. them. You're hitting more plates. You know, so this is something that we do need to worry about uh, for the side of Firecliff. And I wonder if we're going to, you know, take care with these people yeah. bands. As you see, we've already done the first one. Yeah, Draven, uh, I feel like has kind of crept. I feel like Draven's been so banned so much, Yanni, that I actually haven't been able to see him out on the Rift this season. So I'm a little disappointed to see that ban pop up. I wonder for Cornell... Gonna hopefully be limiting the mid jungle there. Twisted Fate, Hammer having some good games on it recently. And Briarcliff, I think one of those teams that really take advantage of the Twisted Fate super well, making proactive plays with it, attacking side lanes the whole nine yards is Briarcliff. They're gonna continue to limit that bot lane champion pool. Yeah, and honestly, so so smart from both of these teams, acknowledging that. Yeah, Smolder is busted right now, and so is <laughs> Twisted Fate. And, you know, if you're Cornell, you don't want to give Twisted Fate over to Briarcliff, right? Because I know, yeah. he said Cammer, really, really good on it. But, like, Oxy could probably take it top lane. You know, Zoro <laughs> could play it bottom lane because, guess what? Twisted Fate top is actually something so disgusting. Uh, so, you know, good to see that one taken off the board. A couple more off the board as well, that Nico and Gwen mm -hmm. are now gone. Not going to see those this game. I know, Yanni, you may be wondering what I'm looking out for. It's at this point mm -hmm. in the draft, I get a little nervous. Shibby has me get out my marker uh, for the red teams, not banning Karma. And it's another oh, tally. No. It's what I got to do. We're at nine, nine? Mac Dewey, Mac Dewey, nine Mac Dewey pick bans where Karma, is, where Karma has not been banned. I know, it's just the reality of the situation. Briarcliff... Meanwhile, they've kind of adapted here from their series Saturday against Drury. The Drury jungler picked Brand twice in the best of three series. So maybe they liked the pick that Drury was, was putting down and they're going to give it a whirl for themselves here in game number one. Yeah, you brings incredible damage. Mm -hmm. CC a little inconsistent, but if you're in the thick of things, able to get your ultimate off, it'll do a lot of damage. When you see a Vi on the other side get picked first, you're like, okay, I'll at least have a couple of pretty good targets to ult. So yeah. yeah, that's certainly something to watch out for in the jungle matchup because who knows, this Vi could come around and you know, punch this brand into ash. Yeah. Meanwhile, Briarcliff going to be able to respond with the Maokai. So much zone control with <laughs> those two champions. The Maokai ultimate, uh, Pillar of Fire coming in. Uh, it's going to be interesting how Briarcliff positions themselves around objectives. As the Jax gets locked in, Yanni, I feel like these are three champions with a lot of flexible uh, role positioning. They can play multiple lanes. Where do you think these guys are going? You know what? I've been thinking about that since I saw that <laughs> Jax get locked in. Uh, they th could theoretically go anywhere. We could see Brandon the bottom. Darik, if you wow. Were to, if you were to tell me, hey, you have to say where these guys are going for <laughs> sure, I think it's going to be Jax in the top lane, Brandon the jungle, and okay. then Maokai at support. Maokai at support has just been a, a, such a pain to deal with, right? But yeah. The good news is that pain is not going to hurt nearly <laughs> as bad when there's a Terek on the other side, as you pointed out. Uh, it is going to be a big nuisance of a bot lane for this Ash Terek, so... Whoever the uh, Briarcliff is going to pick as their AD carry, they need to be ready because 
uh, they will be very slow, very stunned, and then very dead. Yeah. Uh, interesting, I think, sort of development here is the teams make their way through the second phase of bans. Cornell, they opt for the Taric support champion going down into the bot lane. It means Eliza loses some of her signature champions. The Urgot's going to be bailed away, banned away. And then uh, Bailwind's actually going to lose their Orianna. Uh, so Briarcliff in the second phase, you know, the solo lane champs, solo lane players are still needing some love. And I wonder here, Yanni, which player Cornell is going to prioritize. They give Bailwin the red five counter pick as uh, I was telling you about these fun top lane champions headed into the game. <laughs> yeah, you know, Garen can just run anybody down. So this is going to be a pretty big test here for Oxy, right? Because mm -hmm. if Eliza just gets out of hand early, you happen to give away one or two kills. Uh, he, he might be looking at a game over screen, uh, yep. the defeat screen <laughs> popping up at the very end. We're seeing a nice adaptation here with the Misfortune getting locked in. I was wondering what Briarcliff was going to do after the Senna Seraphine got banned, especially mm -hmm. into an Ash Taric lane. But, you know, Misfortune's <laughs> ability to be able to get off poke with the Make It Rain, pretty good in lane. And I see you're, you're emoting IRL, the Olaf Locket. Tell me about it. Where is this going is it gonna be brand in the mid lane maybe mike rock mike has mike has had some great olaf performances i've seen it let's see we get the run down i missed the final pick it's aurelian soul for fail mm. going against his cameras brand uh that brand not going into the jungle ecu they they call the audible they're sending Mike on Olaf into this composition that we see here. We saw before, I feel like teams playing against Mike's Olaf didn't necessarily have the tools to play against it. But something I really like from Cornell's draft here is actually the Taric ultimate can kind of neutralize what Mike's whole game plan is. So that's, I feel like, going to be a key interaction to watch. Yeah, he's going to run in, try to deal some damage. Not be able to deal any damage, get CC, <laughs> and they probably die. Yeah, so that's pretty rough. And the yeah. early in soul pick is honestly fantastic. Mm -hmm. So good into short range champions, Jax, Olaf, Count Brand, <laughs> and uh, and Maokai. And you know, Misfortune's auto attacks ain't exactly long range. She's yep. got her ultimate, but uh, really that first pick of the brand gambit into thinking that you know Cornell is like, oh, that's clearly in the jungle. Not really paying off because the moment they gave Eliza Garen, that just allowed Failwind to say, I want whatever is going to be so good into this team composition. <laughs> Classic counter pick, as you called out. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be rough for Briarcliff in this game, I think. I think Cornell has a great late game scaling team composition. And ultimately, it's a little bit better than Briarcliff's. But Briarcliff, they do have the Wombo combos. That's what we're going to be keeping our eyes on. But you got to start with the early game. Who's going to survive the early stages as we hop onto the rift? Summoners, welcome to game number one of our first series on this wonderful Monday night of MEC action. It's Briarcliff University on the blue side taking on Cornell College. I think too surprising in terms of summoner spells. Mike going that ghost, uh, you know, again, not super surprising. Seeing Ash on the other side go Ghost uh, against the composition that has, you know, a fair amount of CC. Uh, you're going to have to watch out for the Maokai as, like, taking some love taps there. <laughs> I think we get a little preview of that interaction you were talking about. The good use of the counter pick. They'll win. Just going to breathe, just flamethrower anyone who comes up close. Uh, but no information uh, given really too much between either teams. I think they both see... Uh, all the junglers on the top side of the map. So I think Eliza and Oxy gonna take a bit of a breath. Uh, probably don't have to worry about too much early game pressure. They're, the jungler's normal path is gonna be to head down into the bot lane as Yanni. We get some trading between these aggressive bot laners and actually Raymond's flashing away and what is going on? It's first blood for Cornell College straight out of the gate. Yeah, a tree fell in the forest and everybody was around to hear it. Zero is in trouble too. Wow, all, almost all the summoner spells, three out of four in both flashes for Briarcliff's bot laner, Zero and Raymond. Wow. Yikes. That is really rough start for the side of Briarcliff here. 
uh, you know, I had good positioning there from uh, Ixuo, like, mm -hmm. just being there. And the problem is, level one Ash, you just have to, you know, hit your W, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you're not going to get away. Uh, Sweet Peach did a good job being on top of things, too. Oxy, meanwhile, on the top side of the map, it's going to be kind of, I was kind of thinking headed into this game, Oxy and Eliza, not those mm -hmm. tank players in uh, the top lane as Aelwyn and Kammer. This might be our matchup to watch. I know we were talking about the top lane, but these mages are going at it. Both mid laners forced to flash away in lots of early action to start this one off. Yeah, and the really weird part is early on, Brand is actually a little bit more favored when it comes to range because in order for Aurelian Soul to really put in a lot of damage and make those big trades happen, you have to flow toward the brand, right? And if you're going into the brand's <laughs> territory, it's not exactly where you want to be. Voting Oxy, going back and forth. I kind of take a deep breath, but between these two, you know the action's coming as Eliza slams down for a Failing? solo kill. Mike finds the ax to take down the dragon. He aims for the head, Yanni. And he picks up the kill onto Failwind. Yeah, who knew that axes were super effective against the dragon type? <laughs> I hadn't tried that when playing some of my uh, JRPGs, but uh, really good stuff coming out of Briarcliff to be able to get that kill. But you know, Cornell with the return kill, pretty important there in that top side. You know, we mentioned uh, if Eliza, otherwise known as Cambodia, can really uh, get themselves going, this will be a bad time for Briarcliff. And uh, Eliza headed into this one, going the Ignite Summoner spell. She wants to win the early lane and is able to get uh, take a right step in that direction uh, with the first blood. So Oxy teleports back up. Wave is going to be pushing, and Eliza should be able to, I think, catch a pretty nice wave. But by the looks of it, I wonder if Oxy's actually frozen, and I'm trying to figure it out on the mini-map. Can't really see it just yet, but meanwhile, cameras... Oh yeah, look at this. Wave not in an ideal position for Eliza. That's a little tough, but we get some action in the bot lane as Mike is kind of waiting out here, Yanni. I wonder if they're going to be able to set up the bait. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to see a kill happen in the mid lane. Oh my lane. gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, see, this is Failway now going to work and dealing tons of damage. Still down quite a bit in the CS department though. So it'll be a long while before Failwin is you know, like, okay, now you're just the alpha, the omega and mm -hmm. going to single-handedly win the game. Meanwhile, top lane, Eliza not taking her foot off the gas pedal, but Oxy knows how to spin his weapon around as well as the leap strike is going to finish off Eliza for another top lane solo kill. Two of them as the top laners continue to trade blows in this heavyweight matchup. Yeah, I was just about to say the same thing. They are going back and forth, and the worst feeling in the world is when you get a solo kill, and then you get solo killed immediately after. And the craziest part is, no jungle intervention needed. So these junglers mm -hmm. have been able to do whatever they want, trying to set up a play on the fail win, but it's so hard to be able to take down Aurelian Soul. Yeah, able to use that movement ability to get on out of there. Uh, Hawkshot going to try and scout out. They see Mike on uh, the top side jungle there of Cheese Ravioli. Uh, Grubs are going to be started up here. I think as Peaches looks for a bit of a play in the mid lane, I think is able to get in undetected. Camera though, hits level 6 at the perfect time. Stun does connect though. No flash available as Peaches, a successful roam into the mid lane, gets a kill. Yeah, that does mean that Mike was able to go and start on those grubs. Got the first one looking for more, but, you know, uh, Cuddy could head up there, but is going to realize very quickly that, yep, all three of those grubs are gone. And, you know, I got to say, Mike has been having a really good game. It feels like this Vi has just been a step behind. You can see slightly behind in CS, but mm -hmm. the big thing is no objective trade. You gave away the grubs, no trade. Meanwhile, training in the bot lane, but... Everybody's okay. Yeah, and it really, for Cornell, was probably a good opportunity there to go for the dragon after getting the mid lane kill, but Raymond and Zero, they're in control of the lane, and 
She's ravioli, might get caught out here. CC chain. Oh, the seer comes out first, just going for damage, trying to get him down. Cuddy though punches back. The stun goes wide. Akutso getting stunned up as well. It is a 4v3, now 3v2, and Mike is looking to go on a rampage. Akutso flashes over the wall. Peaches runs for the hills as Akutso trying to use that movement speed. It is going to be enough. It's only a one for one trade, I believe, at the end of the day. But Briarcliff, they're not looking to trade objectives. They're trying to get them all as Failwin looking for the engage in, flying and diving in, getting so low, trying to heal up with Peaches. It's another one for one trade. These teams, they can't stop going back and forth, but they can't help it. It's a close matchup here on Monday Night Zero, flashing away. Yeah, and these guys are just going back and forth and back and forth. And guess what? Cornell says, you know what? We get to go onto this dragon now because Sweet Peach is healthy. And while Ash may not be, who exactly is going to walk in to stop them? You can already see that Mike is headed toward the top side uh, because he's just got to take care of those top camps. So, you know, good fight there from Cornell, able mm -hmm. to just edge out Briarcliff and secure the objective a little later than you'd want. But listen, you'll take the goal in your pockets all the same. Yep. And they're ahead right now as we hit the eight minute mark. Shout out Akutso, the ADC, uh, international relations, economics, and business major, mm -hmm. taking care of business 202 right now. Got a lot of gold in the pocket. It's going to be a huge back for the Cornell bot lane. Yeah, that's what happens when you know about economics. You just go up 600 <laughs> gold in game. Honestly, it's a buff. It's like a cheat code sometimes. So no, good, good on them, especially you know, being a senior and looking to lead the charge with their team. You could see Raymond get caught out here, but Fail went in trouble as well. I love that. Uh, as he's going over the wall, he's able to flame breath, continue like on terrain. He's like, ah, get away. Don't don't root me <laughs> in the fire. Luckily, uh, enough of a uh, uh, bane for Raymond. He said, I don't want to mess with the flame. I don't want the smoke. Arrow is coming into the mid lane. It's going to barely miss camera there. Kutso looking for a little bit of a Hail Mary play, but Peaches was there for the follow up. It was a good effort. Hoping to see more of those as Oxy's roaming down. Uh oh. Yeah, we're in trouble here. No follow up to be had, but now Oxy from the flank. Oh my goodness, what an engage! The roam down perfectly timed as he gets a kill there onto the enemy mid laner. Yeah, you're gonna go TP back top, go soak that wave. Good impact to be had. Ooh. More action, Yanni, in the mid lane as Peaches is the next to get caught out. It's a shutdown for Raymond as Akutso might actually have to be careful here. Mike didn't use his ultimate. It is looking like prime dive territory down in the bot lane. Yeah, I love that Briarcliff has been making these quick plays, right? They're like, okay, listen, we're going to bring our top laner down. Go take out the mid laner. But again, more fighting. It just doesn't stop, Yanni. On Monday night, traits, uh, stuns go away. Fail when forced to back off. And here comes Mike, ultimate ready. Ghost not quite up yet, but he's mad. He's running in. He uses the ultimate. Oh my goodness. Fail when just trying to dish out as much oh. damage as possible. But Mike, the human highlight reel with a solo double kill in the mid lane. Oh, that's insane. That is just a feels bad moment. Uh oh, Oxy taking it. So close there, but. Yeah, just a, such a feel bad moment. And this freshman coming in and playing like a vet. Bullet time in the bot lane as Akutso tries to stop the rampage, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Peaches can't heal enough damage. The root's now coming in. Peaches just going to try to go to town on zero. One hammer slap after another. Doesn't come out with the dub. It's a double kill for the Briarcliff bot lane as Cameron roaming up. Oh, no. What is Eliza oh, doing? No. Oh, she tries to go back in, but Oxy, one strong auto attack, able to trade it one for one. Uh, Eliza, they had that. They just needed to say, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna get over aggressive. I'm not gonna get over aggressive. And then when got over aggressive and this aggressiveness has meant that Mike was able to just walk up to the void grubs and take three more grubs it seems doesn't have the greatest sieging potential in the world, but mm -hmm. that's helped out a little bit by those six grubs, right? You start spawning Twitch chatters, you know, the little <laughs> void mites to go and hit the turrets. And, you know, all of a sudden you get an extra minion or two. Those auto attacks are going to mean so much more when you're doing true damage. 
Yeah, helps the Baron power play, really helps kind of accelerate that pushing potential. You've got Oxy, a huge split push threat on the top side. Failwind going to have to deal with bouncing fireballs. Cammer trying to lock down the kill, flashing for it, and does it. Cammer with a solo kill. Yeah, this is pretty rough as, oh, more fighting going down to the bot lane. Gank coming through from Mike. Ultimate Peaches trying to keep everybody safe, but it only lasts a short time. Yanni Zero goes on a killing spree, and Peaches once again going to try to run for the hills, but you got the goon squad on your tail. Meanwhile, Cammer under arrest for that solo kill. She's Ravioli trying to finish it off and does so. Peaches somehow manages to get on out of there, so really, across the map, it's a one-for-one -one trade, but Yanni... Over the course of all this action, it's been Briarcliff coming out on top with the gold advantage. They're up 3,000. Yeah, since that dragon skirmish, it's been all Briarcliff. Bailwind looking to come and help a little bit here, but nice disengagement there from Raymond. For a second there with the enchanted crystal arrow, I thought maybe something's going to happen here, but the stun kind of lasted a little bit uh, shorter than I thought it was. Dragon, though, Yanni spawning now. Yeah, and I, these teams are, you know, they're not tuckered out from fighting, but Raymond, you know, with that ultimate being down, it's going to be much harder to try to fight for this dragon because yeah. guess what? Mike and Hammer are getting forced off by Failwind, so Cornell is going to be able to secure their second dragon of the game, but they've gone down by 3,000 gold now, Mac Dewey, and it's not looking like it's going to let up anytime soon. Sure, Eliza's going to get a couple of plates up in the top lane, uh, but they just can't make a play onto camera mid. Oxy and Raymond looking for a pick as Eliza may have overextended. They got the phase rush, but it's not going to be enough. So much, uh, I'll say ground control. I mean, they got a lot of stuns, a lot of roots up there. It's hard to get away. Eliza caught up there. Has to be careful about the solo push potential, but now uh -oh. a dive onto the bottom side. Cheese Ravioli, perfect punch into Zero's face. It's a shutdown for Akutso. Yeah, really perfectly done there. Uh, Akutso went in, was the first one to tank it, so not the greatest, but got their damage in, got out, and then Vi able to just barely get out. You know, textbook stuff, and you get at least one back and could take out the turret here. Gotta start somewhere, right? But the push potential is actually going to keep on going. Briarcliff not taking their foot off the gas mm -hmm. pedal. Oxy and Raymond going to try to get some damage on to the second top lane turret. Cheese Ravioli does have ultimate. Enchanted Crystalero mm -hmm. misses, but Failwin has here. roamed up with the ultimate ready. Only level 9. Oxy level 11 on this Jax. Really strong point uh, for the Briarcliff chargers as Ox or Mike, excuse me, Mike is going to get another objective. He picks up the Rift Herald. Root uh -oh. connects. Twisted advance. Don't stop. Salt and battery to try and get out, but another ultimate comes out. Raymond's trying to slow him down with the undertow, with the damage. That's going to be enough. Fail win, though. Dishing out a little bit of damage. Mike, though, uses his ultimate, able to escape. Yeah, Raymond's root was huge, but he is going to get chased down. It looks like he'll be okay for right now, but... Yeah, that route was huge, cutting off Failwind, preventing them from getting into the fight. That means that Mike was able to get out. That's a critical shutdown that Cornell could not pick up. And now, they're in such a bad way here. Gold's still expanding, but Rift yep. Herald in the back pocket of Mike. Now, they didn't lose that top turret yet, but you saw the damage they were doing to that turret because of those Void Grubs that they picked up earlier. It's just so easy for them. The turrets are like paper mache. Failwind going to try and stop the bleeding, clearing the wave. But honestly, I think he's got to be careful. Oxy's got the Trinity Force completed. Rallies for Failwind. Slowing him down a little bit with that flame breath. Certainly makes it a little bit challenging. Peach is actually going to spend some time roaming up. Eliza heads down into the bot lane for some more solo pushing. And, you know, 16 minutes into the game, listen, not all hope is lost. And Cornell does scale exceptionally well. If they get picks like this... No, it looks like Oxy running away. Oh, you know what? Counter-Strike doesn't stop, Yanni. It happens to be that fire breath, but Failwind is out of mana. You have no mana, but it doesn't matter. Peach is going to get the shutdown. Top laners trade their lives. It's a tale as old as time. Uh, Briarcliff going to be pushing here into the bot lane. 
Yeah, and we're going to see Rift Herald come out here and get that charge off. See our Twitch chatters in action, doing their thing. <laughs> they do a, a modicum of damage to the turret. Uh, but yeah, you know, because Failwind out of mana there meant that that shutdown went over to Sweet Peach, right? And that was a 750 gold shutdown that you really wanted on your Aurelian Soul. Uh, it, it's going to make life a lot harder on Cornell here. Mike looking for an engage with Raymond flashing in. They can't catch Peaches, though. Too sweet to eat. Ultimate comes in. Peach is going to try to slow everyone down. Another arrow goes wide. Raymond, it's his opportunity to look for a fight. Mike going in as well. There's no Taric ultimate. You can't stop the damage. Failing with trying to fly away. Ravioli flashing away as well. A lot of close fight, but Mike's now the one getting caught without his ultimate. It's a shutdown for Kutso. Briarcliff, they may lose this fight as Eliza storming in. Wow, what a engage there. Gets so much damage. Shut down onto Raymond now. Kutso with the ghost. He's zooming on a killing spree. Four kills going over to Cornell College as they take the fight without losing a life. And that's what happens when you bite off more than you could chew. It was a really well-timed ultimate by the Vi once the Ragnarok had expired. Boom, yep. big shutdown goes over to your Ash. Sweet Peach, beautiful flash, two-person stun. You pick those up too. And now you can see that gold lead that was 5,000, not even 2,000 right now. So Cornell, you know, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't get all of their backs in. It looks like uh, Vi didn't quite get their back in, but... You know, a lot of confidence to be able to fight for this dragon now with almost everybody missing summoner spells. Teleport coming in from Camer. Oxy trying to get an engage on to fail when, again, a lot of zoning control. This is Briarcliff's River. I don't think they're going to let up. Raymond's able to set it up super well. And Camer makes it really hard for Cornell College to approach. And there's no Baron for Cornell to trade with. Yeah, and that's going to stop their dragon stacking and... You know, if you're a scaling team, obviously you really like to be able to, okay, you know, we get three drakes, we put ourselves mm -hmm. on soul point, mm -hmm. something like that. Just not able to do so here, uh, but that's that's okay, right? Because they're the ones that have it, uh, They, you know, the two drakes. So they ha are the ones that have time to say, you know what? Let's give this up. No big deal. Give get us, your backs you know, in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give us five more minutes of scaling and, you know, picking up items and things like that. And they'll be in good shape, so... Now, one dragon, not the end of the world, but I am interested to see who's going to make the next move because Briarcliff feels like they're starting to get a little hot under the collar. It might be a little under the gun. It feels like they need to be a little bit more proactive. Mm -hmm. I wonder how well Oxy's going to be able to control the side lanes, you think, on the jacks. Hopefully, she, he's winning the 1v1. He's going to have to come up clutch here a little bit. Eliza got a lot of gold in that last fight. She's going up into the top lane. Cammer and Failwind going to try to answer these top lane threats uh, as their respective team's uh, mid lane minion manager, I'll say, with the, the mages having a lot of wave clear. They're able to take care of it uh, quite quickly. <laughs> and... Yeah, they're doing what they can to try to encroach on that vision line here. As oh, is in trouble. That's what you got to worry about, though. As the minion manager, you do not engage. You do not engage unless you got cheese ravioli to back you up. Some additional damage from the vibe. But if you're failing, that's what you got to be careful of. Yeah, I actually thought that Oxy was going to go a little too hard there. Was you saw Oxy was looking for it, but you know, I was like, oh no, are they gonna step into, you know, more dragon breath and oh, things no like way. that? Yeah, but that back means that Failwin, you know, they're gonna have to burn the teleport or deal with the jacks because the Baron has been started. Ashold out! Enchanted Crystal Arrow onto the back line. Eliza has found her target, trying to go win, but quickly pushed off. Objectives not started yet. Baron sort of backing off here. Teleport from fail when Oxy is recalling and then teleporting for a flank. Cheese Ravioli, though, is engaging and looking for the big fight here. Big flank from Oxy coming in to just transform this one as fail when's trying to slow him down. Peaches with the stun. Eliza getting low. Eliza not long as Oxy's found a Kutso. That's what he wanted. One hammer slam after another, but the successful kiting from the Cornell duo. They back off of oxy unimaginable yachty as failwin burns away zero it's a near ace as raymond is the last one standing that fight was so crazy i thought oh no wait failwin what are you doing raymond only you can prevent forest fires <laughs>
But, but uh, yeah, that fight was so crazy because that ultimate from Raymond was absolutely insane. You saw Eliza go in there, and you're like, well, why is it just Eliza? It's because everybody else, had, they got their, their feet caught in the bramble, in the branches. They had nowhere to go, but they were able to survive for just long enough. Team able to regroup. It was a nice move by Ka uh, Camera to stop Failwin from just breathing the morning breath <laughs> onto this Jax. Yeah. But then they lost the ensuing 1v1 and lost a whole lot of damage for their team mm -hmm. and ultimately resulted in Cornell getting a big dub of a fight there. Now it's time for Mike to make another play. Peach is forced to flash as Mike burns the ultimate and has to back off Baron still up. And keep in mind, it was Briarcliff who wanted the smoke. They wanted the fight. They're going to try to control the map around this objective still. And the only thing that is going to be a little bit better is if, you know, Raymond and Zoro and uh, camera pair up their ultimates right mm -hmm. that is the only way these fights are going to get better just don't know if we're going to see that sort of thing happen because we're now very acutely aware of that this is what we've liked from cornell honestly i feel like all season it doesn't feel like a team who is currently sitting winless they've had a lot of great moments and they've won some games and you know, a lot of times it feels like they're close in some of these matchups. Let's see if they can pull it out here against Briarcliff. Mike looking for a little bit of damage. Fail when flying away. Looking at the side lanes right now, Yanni, as everyone's grouped together, Oxy's looking for a flank. Yeah, those side lanes are, are at least fine for right now. Uh, you know, with the turrets that they have up, you don't really have to worry about that. They do worry if Briarcliff is going to try to muscle their way in to this dragon, and it's going to cause problems. Raymond looking for a big root here, trying to slow everybody down, but the Taric ultimate hits a lot, but it doesn't hit Akutso. Uh, Mike goes down, though, looking for the dive. He can't catch him. Akutso able to flash away and rain down damage onto Briarcliff. It's a team effort from Cornell as they pick up the kill and look for the dragon. What a shot there by this Ash. Stunning up the misfortune for the entire fight. And when the misfortune was no longer stunned, Everybody else was immune. There's no way for you to get into that fight. So Mike is looking back like, where is everybody? There's my <laughs> squad. But And then Mike wanted to go down. Oxy coming in on that flank. But listen, there was no flank to be had. There was no other side. There was a pincer maneuver with only one side of the pincer. Cornell is just playing around these team fights super well. And now looking to take some control here. Back-to-back -back fights going their way feel back to back to back fights going their way they're building some momentum here in this match and yanni they've taken the gold lead now as well as are sitting on soul point yeah they're in such a good spot right now briarcliff forced to fight them in four minutes right and guess what that's four minutes more for this ash to get a little bit more gold potentially get their third item you know, for failwin to potentially get their third item as well that is really bad news and Briarcliff just has not been able to put their ultimates together for a fantastic fight. Now, the good news for them is that they still have those ultimates, right? They will mm -hmm. have those ultimates going into these fights. So they can put it together, but they're so far behind at this point uh, from the lead that they had. And sure, it doesn't look like it. Back on the dragons. They're behind enough that they need to be on point in this next fight or this game could be over. Failwin flying once more. It's been so many times Oxy's like, I want him, I want to go get him. Failwin's like, no, get away. But they might have a pick here on to Cheese Ravioli. This might be what Briarcliff are looking for to charge back into this one. That's huge, Yanni. As the rest of the team's looking for Baron. It's so low already. They killed the jungler. Can Eliza work out a miracle with Sweet Peach is coming down? The ultimate damage coming through, but Failwin. Oxy has found his target. He's looking for revenge, but Akutso still alive, Yanni. Firing away. Raymond able to take down the Coronel mid laner as Eliza close to falling. It is carry on carry action here. It's bullet time as Akutso so can't handle it oh my goodness check your watch it's time to run is mike looking for more peaches though able peaches has been on a rampage this game yanni yeah peaches has just been doing the most right now the support's both having fantastic games but mm -hmm. that fight it should have went more convincingly in cornell's way because this ash gets on top of the maokai it's like okay i want to go kill the maokai meanwhile 
on the top side, Eliza is like very deep into the fight and it's like, oh, yep. I have to pull back to try and help out. Goes down themselves and then it's an odd numbered fight. Obviously, Cornell had enough where they were able to ensure that that wasn't a complete disaster. Yep. And Cornell also kind of in an interesting position here, Yanni. They're ahead, but they also have potentially Mountain Soul in the next two minutes. So uh, on one hand, you want to maybe try and play a little safely in these next few minutes. Try not to get caught. Everyone's got to play together here because it's in these moments where the game, when it's this close, can either be won and lost with one fight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not to say that, oh, you know, Cornell up three dragons with another one in a minute 30 is guaranteed to win this game. Oh, no, no, no. You saw that last fight. If that fight had gone a little bit better, you know, Briarcliff, they ripped the Baron on their terms, but only with three of them and were taken so low. Now with this next Baron started, Cornell could fall to the same folly that Briarcliff did last time. Yanni, Oxy does not have teleport. It is a 4v5 situation. As bullet time comes out, Baron's getting low. It's a miracle steal for Mike! Oh. How did he do it? He saves the game for Briarcliff. But the ensuing fight, his life is traded as Oxy is now solo pushing Ellen. with six void grubs. Damage coming out of Vakut, so he's trying to make it worth it. Raymond getting mowed down by Failwind, but Oxy in the bot lane, they don't need him because another play from the human highlight reel. Mike steals Baron. That is so huge because Oxy was on the split push. Look, the base has been broken, Magdui. Briarcliff getting the miracle, as you said. And that was a well-played fight from everybody else. And guess what? You forced the misfortune off, right, by Failwin floating over. But that meant Failwin wasn't there to try to clean up the rest of the fight. And yep. because that fight was so elongated, nobody could answer that, Jax. That is exactly what Briarcliff needed. But the problem is Briarcliff is not on the map to be able to stop this soul. Wow. What a sequence of event. Just how we're like, you know, we're casters will be like, oh yeah, this game's far from over. Mike just blew this one wide open as the dragon begins. Cammer's teleporting. Let's see who's going to join. Failwind does not have the teleport available. Oxy with Baron buff and two grubs. Eliza has to stay in answer. It is a 4v4 situation here on the bottom side of the map. Let's see Raymond. Definitely someone you want around is... She's Ravioli, maybe gotta look for the pick. Peaches, someone you also gotta worry about for Briarcliff. Ultimates are all online across the board. Yanni, the objective begins as the top laners go mm -hmm. face to face. Mikey needs another steal. Can he get it? The Miracle Maker, yes, it's Zero! Who steals the dragon? Cornell, they lose another objective. Akutso is seething as he mows down one champion after another. The ash damage is serious as the stun comes through. Cammer's just gonna get melted in the cooking pot but a bullet time for zero once again zero coming up with some big plays he gets a shutdown there on to fail with zero to hero in that fight securing that dragon saving your mid laner and now cornell has to be reeling right that is a bad news because guess what this base broken open obviously you know, we talk about they have the scaling but Briarcliff now are able to put more pressure, potentially break the space open a little bit more, utilize that bottom lane. One thing, though, is that because these objectives are still down Baron for three more minutes, by the time that Baron is back up, that inhibitor will also be back up. Wow, wow, wow. So much. This is a 30-minute Monday night showdown that has lived up to the expectations, Yanni. I'm taking a deep breath, just trying to prepare for the next fight, try to take this one in. Oh my goodness, this one's fun to watch as she's ravioli going to be trying to buff up the rest of the squad. As you mentioned, bot lane inhibitor still down, but uh -oh. coming up soon. Oh my gosh, is Cheese Ravi only going to get caught here? It's a bit of a rumble in the jungle as it's a lot of brand damage going to be spread around to everybody. Stun does connect. Enchanted Crystal Arrow comes out, but Cheese Ravioli is already down. He tried to use the ultimate, but it was a moment too late. Fail win, huge damage there on to Raymond, who just gets deleted and chopped down. It's one yeah, for that's... one trades, but the jungler is lost for Cornell. Yeah, that's not too bad. The problem with that one-for-one -one trade is that 
Teleport was expended by Failwin to get into that fight. So that is a mm -hmm. critical summoner down in a situation where, you know, you lose your support for that. It's not at a point of the game state where that actually is going to matter. So I say that's a win there for Briarcliff. The only problem is that Cornell, they do have a lot of summoners up. This Taric Flash is going to come up very soon. They're going to have five flashes to one, maybe two on the other side for Cammer when that comes up. That flash advantage is going to be big that I think Cornell might want to just start a fight over nothing. They're going to have a few reasons to start fights, but Oxy doesn't need a reason to go to town as Failwin barely escapes once more. He's looking at maybe migrating to another lane on the map, but he knows that bot lane's his to manage. Really close. Baron in 90 seconds. Cornell, are they going to be able to find an opportunity to do something before then? Yeah, and, you know, burning that flash there, very, very rough for Failwin. You know, Oxy flashes as well, but I'd say that's a win again for Briarcliff because you know, this Aurelian Soul doesn't have nearly the damage mitigation, right? Once you float out of a fight, it's kind of hard to float back in and you don't have that quick repositioning tool. That is certainly going to make an impact in this fight because who is going to be able to max this, match this Jax? You have no summoner spells now. You are liable to die one versus one. Yeah, exactly. And as the minion waves continue to push in, it's a lot of pressure for Briarcliff. As you mentioned, Failwin, no teleport, now no flash, can't respond to a cross-map play. Objectives are slowly but surely coming, including that red inhibitor respawning. So a bit of a breath of fresh air, Cornell. They get a bit of a moment to compose themselves, but it's a lot of members in Cameron. the mid lane. Cammer caught out and shut down. That's huge for Cornell as the engage continues. Raymond is caught as well. Cheese Ravioli locking down another member. Oxy, once again, it's like a monkey's paw. You get some kills, but Oxy's going to make you regret it. Yeah, and that inhibitor going down, as long as they don't lose the game off of it, Cornell's totally fine with this trade. The only problem is we're going to see a 1v1 come in fail when... Looks like they're just going to be able to push off Oxy, but if they get a little too close, it could be a problem. Baron getting started up here by Cornell. Do Mike and Zero have another miracle in the back pocket, Mac Dewey? Look at Akutso. So much damage from the Ash, but Mike has ultimate. He's not going to test it. Wow. He backs off and gives up the objective. He knows Dragon Soul is coming up. You got to give your team the best shot at winning this one he knows it's not with baron it's with trying to take this next fight in the river critically sweet peach burning the flash hammer still has their flash available raymond's flash is going to be up too so flash twisted advance on a priority target going to be huge here but this dragon is a must fight for briarcliff Oh my goodness, Eliza, big damage potential. This is not your average Garen, but I feel like back in the day, Garen was a big tank, but now it's been these kind of Trinity Force fun one-shot builds. This is kind of new, hey, new hey, standard. Have it. Oh my gosh, Oxy potentially caught here, stunned up by the arrow. Dragon has spawned, and BCU are focusing on the objective here. First, they get it. Oh my gosh, Eliza with the execute. Oxy goes down. It's a 4v5 now as bullet time just takes down Eliza in return. Mike trying to go into the back line, but Akutso still alive. Mike goes down. The carry's going at it now. They're all that's left as Zero flashed on and taken down. Akutso's godlike 9-2 in 19 performance for the Cornell ADC as with Baron buff, they push the mid lane. I can't believe that Briarcliff continued that fight. Once Raymond died, it's time to get out. It's time to live to fight another day. Now, Cameron is going to die themselves. They're going to burn away. That is an ace. And this was a game that Briarcliff could have taken the victory. But Cornell, the team, one of the teams, no wins in their ledger. No match wins. They are going to go up 1-0 in game one unless Raymond has something to say about it. Teleport from Failwind coming in. Mike is coming up shortly as well as Zero, but that's the second Nexus turret down. Cheese Ravioli focusing on, on the win. Akutso trying to get some auto attacks in there as well. And yes, Yanni, they do it. Cornell strikes in there on the map, taking game number one at the 36-minute mark. It was a grueling one, but well-earned.
I can't believe that Oxy <laughs> hopped on the Vi there. I, I think you might have had a chance if you wow. get on top of the Ash. That was a crazy game. Some of these fights just absolutely chaotic, so close back and forth. Anybody could have won that game, but ultimately in the end it was a huge win for cornell wow. and cornell they're sniffing you you smell that you smell that <laughs> smells like a dub to me cornell <laughs> on the precipice of getting their first match win of the season listen back to me i am here for it so am i a miracle mondays am i right welcome to monday night mec ladies and gentlemen what a fun first game of our best of three series that's right We've got more of that action coming right up just after this break. Hey, Yanni, do you ever want to compete like the players here at the MEC? Because for me, it, it looks really fun. Then join us in Jacksonville, Illinois on April 6th and 7th for Unified Gaming Fest, Illinois College. Use code in the chat, exclamation spring championship in uh, go to the event page, reserve your tickets now, meet the players at the MEC, enter into tournaments, have fun. We hope to see you guys there. Again, we're going to hop into a quick break before getting into game number two. Don't click away. We'll be right back. First question I've got is, have you been to a LAN before, competed a no, online? No? First LAN. No. Wait, really? Yep. All right. All right. Well, uh, as far as your experience, uh, versus online competition, uh, what are some of the best aspects about playing on LAN? Uh, I, like, I like that I can like, see my opponents. Because like, like, sometimes the, like, if they make a good play, I get to see them excited, and then it makes me feel less bad that, like, they made a good mm. play, you know? But That's so, you're, you might be the most wholesome <laughs> player. I uh, also like, I like being able to fist bump. It makes it feel a lot better mm. than, like, because it, it's like you, you're like, oh, yeah, these people are, like, benefiting from mm. our failure. <laughs> and, and, like, vice versa, you know? It makes winning feel better, and it makes losing feel better. Right. You know? I, I don't see any downsides. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Exactly. It's a flawless system. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the second question, we made some calls. Okay. We got you in on the dev team at Riot yeah. Games. Oh, my God. Yep. They and, play some uh, huh? They play some free? No, of course not. That, he, he had, he strapped himself into the, uh, the foundation of that building. He's going to, he's going <laughs> to die there. Um, but you are, uh, in charge. First thing on the docket is a brand new champion. And it's a collaboration. Like it's going to be like a smite. Could be anything. Talking about a new IP. Could be a real life person. What are you bringing in to to uh, League of Legends as your first ever champion? First ever champ. Um, I got to go with the winner of the 2008 election, President Barack Obama. <laughs> okay. All right. I just any I any specific aspects of the kit that you're like it's perfect for Barack. I'm just I'm picturing draft red side R five pick. They have like a like a I don't know like a scion pop or something. Uh -huh. Just imagine the Obama kind of pick <laughs> on R five. That it, it goes too hard. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Obama. In chat, like we get the drone strike ultimate. True. And, <laughs> and they get I mean, Joe Biden as the counterpart. Perfect, perfect bot lane. Perfect <laughs> bot lane. <laughs> All right, well, uh, 
Uh, final question. Of any of your teammates, who is most likely to go viral? And for better or for worse, why? What is, uh, what's the context? What's showing up on, on my For You page? I definitely think Brody has potential. His, his TikTok goes real crazy. Ooh. It's, it's Campbell's Chunky, like the soup. Um, he's got some real crazy TikToks on there, and I think um, I could definitely see him in like four years. Oh, the name is Campbell's Junkie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm like, why is he doing TikToks about Campbell's Junkie soup? <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, whatever works, I guess. Yeah. It's not my algorithm, but he's, he's, good, uh, he's, he's got some real good ones. So if you want to check out Campbell's Chunky on TikTok for some real, <laughs> real good viral. Viral memes on the Campbell's cream yeah. of yeah, Sorry, no, Campbell's, yeah. Campbell's cream of mushroom. Yeah. Campbell's cream of mushroom. Segment for Campbell's. I oh, yeah, it's not a paid sponsor. Not a, not paid, a paid sponsor. But, 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 but Campbell is doors open. Lamb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have your people call me people. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, appreciate you. Yeah. Good luck in the games. Thanks Thank for uh, coming. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Midwest Esports Conference 2024 Seelaw season. My name is Mac Dewey. Still with me in the casting booth is my main man, Yanni. And after that first game between Briarcliff University and Cornell College, I, I had to catch my breath. I needed some water. That was a crazy one. You know, once upon a time, I was uh, I had to do a punishment for uh, my team losing something when I was casting. And I had to take uh, some of the very, very hot hot sauce they have on hot ones yep. and eat it while casting, right? This game was spicier than that. <laughs> it was crazy. I laughed. I cried. I was wondering what the heck was going on sometimes. And ultimately, in the end, Cornell College took the victory, a very hard-fought and well-earned victory. But job is not done. Briarcliff. Nope. You know, listen, we've been giving a lot of love to Cornell because, you know, Cornell being 0-5, Briarcliff being 1-4. You know, you like to see nobody end with a winless season. But Briarcliff, they don't want to go down. I'm sure they're going to punch back with force. Absolutely. Oh, wow. For this Cornell College victory, I really feel like it was this bot lane that, that showed up big time. Peaches and Akutsa with monster games. Kutso constantly well positioning in the fight. Peaches with the clutch ultimates coming through, keeping not only a Kutso. A lot of times the 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 Tarek ultimates weren't hitting a Kutso. It was key all front line members absorbing so much damage and, and Akutsa being able to kite really well. Yeah, uh, listen, when you can protect your teammates with that Tarek ultimate, uh, it's going to be a bad time for the other team who especially just wants to deal damage, right? A lot of those Tarek ultimates were blanking Misfortune ultimates. Recall that one dragon or Baron fight, I should say, where mm -hmm. Misfortune uh, lays down the ultimate and it's just like, okay, you did 10 damage to the Maokai and now everybody else is in you, including the Maokai. So when you're not able to pump out that sort of damage, especially using a big cooldown like that in those fights, uh, it is very difficult to win and it's a hard balance to strike. Like, Do you want to open with him mm -hmm. or is Tarek to ult? Do you want to wait for Tarek ult to be done? So because of that extra mind game, I do wonder if we are going to see Briarcliff ban it away this time around. Yeah, that's kind of where my head was at. Uh, Briarcliff, it felt like in game number one, we saw, I believe it's the Draven, the Nico, some of those mm. comfort champions. But those, I, I feel like trying to get Cornell, uh, maybe a little out of their comfort zone, but not necessarily champions that countered their composition. So I wonder here uh, if they're going to be a little more targeted in uh, some of the champions they want to take away like that, Tarek. Yeah, let's see what they're going to do as we have made it into the draft. Magdui, we saw Draven, Smolder, and Nico 
off the table uh, for Briarcliff last mm-hmm. time around. They're going to open with the Draven again. They're very, very scared of that Draven coming out of Cornell. I mean, and again, it's a champion that you know, already mentioned. I haven't seen a whole lot of it lately. It's either <laughs> not that great or you've got a one trick on the other side of the band, right? So, yeah. <laughs> it off the table obviously is very important because he's one of the snowballing champions of all time. In a game where snowballing has kind of been removed, Draven's <laughs> As a as a monument to to glory in the good old days, I'll say, um, you know, just just get a 10k lead at like 10 minutes. It's fine, Yanni. I just got a lot of kills. Uh, axes go burnt. As uh, Nico is also taken off of the board, Cornell. They got a, a solution to the I'll, I'll say draft phase that they're a big fan of. Taking away Camry's uh, twisted fate. No, it can go in a few other places, but Camry's definitely been using it quite a bit in the mid lane for the chargers gwen also going to be taking away oxy losing one of his signature champs are you uh getting that uh marker uncapped because it feels like we're gonna get oh. uh, another one you're gonna you're gonna yanni want you because, got me because yeah, already I think, game two yeah <laughs> I, I don't think we're gonna see that getting taken off the board this malachi makes a, a whole lot more sense to get rid of it yeah. and they will lock that one in just because again super flex champion you saw how much of an impact it had. Crazy. Some of those fights were almost lost because of these fantastic Maokai ultimates. So glad mm-hmm. that you get to continue the tradition of uh, adding to the uh, the tally marks on the whiteboard. Ten now, jeez. Got Shibby's the, gonna uh, lose his mind. The, the we're two double digits, marks, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. That we're in double digits, but when you first pick Udir is something that's not too crazy. Ah, <sighs> I f- I feel for Oxy here and Udir's. I am. I played Udir back in the day. I opened some gates myself. <laughs> Control three spamming with the old spirit guard Udir, letting them know, <laughs> letting them know what's up. But Udir's in a bit of a different position, and Eliza is not one to shy away from the counter matchup. Cornell insta locking the Darius. Yeah, insta locking the Twitch too. Oh my god! And now on the other <laughs> side, Senna Seraphine. Remember, this was banned away by Cornell in the second half of game one's draft and now getting that Senna Seraphine, if you're gonna put them both in the bot lane, uh, Cornell, I mean, this Twitch pick is going to have to roam around to get their kills almost assuredly not gonna be able to get Mm -hmm. the job done against these two sustained champions. And this is kind of exactly what Briarcliff pulled out against the Drury Panthers over the weekend. This is their comfort zone. They're, They're going back to the tried and true Yanni, the comp that they got the most scrim matches on this is hey guys we do not want to lose this game we want to go to a game Mm. three we want to give mac and yanni some more games to cast come on let's make it happen as we get into the second phase of bands uh this one's gonna look i think a little bit different for cornell college uh here as uh briarcliff gonna keep on taking away some solo threats funny enough they're banning away the way this time around Valens Oriana might still be in the mix, but that could also be banned away next. Yeah, good news for Briarcliff is that unless that's a Darius jungle, which we have seen <laughs> in some high level play, uh, you get to just ban away two mid laners. But as you mentioned, that Oriana is still in the mix. It is available and up for them to pick. To be honest with you, I'd really like it here. You need something to tie this sort of composition together. You have your late game Twitch with the, the Lulu around them plus your big damage threat in the Darius. Now you just need a way for Darius to catch up to them. Sejuani is a fairly good pick for that. You, know, you can make some top lane ganks happen. So, mm-hmm. all right, I can I can live with that out of Cornell. Give mid lane your last pick. Good stuff. They took extreme advantage of the mid lane counter pick in game number one. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're going to go back to that. Plus, it, I feel like it's a little bad to save that for the counter pick. Here is a pick hammer it is comfortable blinding and uh, likes to i'll say have a blast uh, on this pick yeah and you know i like that they're gonna at least finish this off with the Zinjao because they are heavily indexed into magic damage and here <laughs> does quite a bit of magic damage so yeah. that is certainly a worry but i just don't know i don't really like this Zinjao pick very much no way we're gonna see a zareth get locked in long range artillery mages going boom baby from downtown this is going to be a crazy matchup ziggs versus wow. Zareth. this is a treat 
this is a treat for Monday night, Yanni. Yes! Wow. And, I, I mean, they do need that long range. You got Ziggs, you got Seraphine, you got Senna. Who's going to hit them? It's not going to be Twitch. It's not going to be Lulu. It's not going to be Sedge. You need to put some pressure. I mean, they're going to be low health bars. They do have, though, as you mentioned, quite a bit of sustain. But fail when here. A decent game on the Aurelian Soul. Uh, going back on mid lane mage minion uh, management duty. But uh, I think both of these mid laners showed off quite a lot of playmaking potential in the team fights later on in the game. So uh, on these kinds of mages where you could dish out so much damage and really be uh, a carry from seemingly far away. It's like uh, shooting the three pointer. Well, we'll see if they got what it takes from downtown. So we got Steph Curry on one side <laughs> and we have you know, like Dame Lillard on the other side, right? We're going to see which one of these two is going to be on top of their game. You know, taking a deeper look at the compositions, I have to say this Zerif pick, while very exciting with the rest of the team that they have and the lack of poke, it's just going to get sustained out by Senna Seraphine, right? That is one of the big worries that I have. But on the other side, I have an equally as important worry with this Xin Zhao. Xin Zhao goes in. And the rest of the squad isn't that great at following up. Obviously, Udyr can kind of be a dive buddy with you, but Zig Ziggs wants to do his damage from so far away. That means that if you ult somebody the incorrect direction, like, I don't know, Eliza, for example, gets ulted into Ziggs, into Seraphine, into Senna, well, they're going to be making you, making you do their homework the entire <laughs> week for that. As we hop onto the rift for game number two of our best of three series, Cornell College is up and they are looking for their first series win against Briar Cliff. Yanni, nobody wants to be doing the rest of the team's homework, but when you said to Darius, knock in the wrong way, uh, it, it, it's not going to be looking good. You're going to have to answer for that. Mike, the human highlight reel. Can he make those picture perfect moments? Happen once more, Briarcliff trying to turn around this series. And so they got, I don't want to say they've got a mountain to climb, right? Because they really don't. They played very well in the first game. The only problem is when you play a game like that, where it's a seesaw, it's back and forth, and you don't come out on top at the end of it, you can just kind of feel like you've got a sigh of defeat. And that can affect you mentally going into the next game. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Let's see, Briarcliff, again, this is the composition, their bread and butter. If they were to try and find their comfort zone, turn things around, uh, I think this is exactly how the team would want for this draft to go. I know you're talking about not the best follow-up in terms of engage with Mike on the Xin Zhao, but hopefully you have the Sarah, uh, I'll say, the Seraphine Senna ultimate kind of coming down on Mike as well. Those long range utility options, hopefully going to make the engage a little bit better. So we'll see how, uh, how that's going to go with it. Yeah, and you know, Zareth luckily doesn't have to deal with the pain in the lane sustain coming out here from Seraphine and Senna, so I want to see kills in the mid lane for the Zareth. If they're going to be the doing damage to deal with this sustain later in the game, they're going to have to get ahead. They're going to have to land some stuns onto the Ziggs, get some jungle assistance, and then call it a day. Eliza and Oxy, this duo uh -oh. from game number one. Oh, the hook in misses. Oh, Oxy does get level two there. The bleed stacks. Okay. Five already. But Mike's coming to help to turn around this one. Oxy getting low. It's first blood for Eliza as they flash away. Both summoner spells used. Mike forced to flash as well. Hills traded, but I'm Eliza. That's hashtag worth in the chat. There is one problem with that. No TP for Eliza, which means Oxy's going to get back there first. And, you know, Oxy is going to be able to at least climb back and experience a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in Brawl... You know, I've got more gold. I'm getting some damage items. You know, you'll always be happy with getting first blood as a top laner. Exactly. It's 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 about the momentum. It's about the mindset, right? Being able to, it's, you know, it's a big 1v1 oriented matchup. You know, if, if Oxy's already needing jungle help, I wonder if for Eliza it means he's already lost. But we'll see. Now it's going to be Cheese Ravioli joining the fight. And no summoner spells for any of these top laners means it's going to be hard for Oxy to escape. It's already five stacks in another kill. Goes over to Cornell. 
And they got a clean gank on the Oxy right there. It's Oxy clean, baby. They're <laughs> able to just, it was smooth, right? Just walk right in, get the kill, walk right out, right? And that is it's just really, really good. That's what you want. You want to get your yeah. Darius ahead. Yeah. You want to put this Udyr in the bin, right? Because Udyr is a champion that very early on can really bully their way around some matchups. When you get behind, you're not going to be able to do that. It's a uh, great gank there from, uh, from our, our guy Brody. Mike uh -oh. looking for a play. The bombs connect and bouncing in for a kill. Camer uh, picking up that kill. Cuddy with the comp side major. The algorithm accounted for the top lane gank, but he didn't <laughs> see that mid lane action come, and he's going to try and clear the rest of the, his top side jungle in recall uh, and reset as Mike looking for some more action, Yanni. The bot lane for Cornell's got to be careful. Here comes Mike. Akutso flashes away. Yeah, stepped up a little too far. Couldn't dodge. The wind becomes lightning without it. And uh, as an avid AD carry player myself, if you get hit by wind becomes lightning, you're dead. <laughs> There's not much escaping. And uh, unfortunately, it feels like for Mike and on the Xin Zhao pick, sometimes lightning does strike twice. No, seeing a lot more damage come down onto the spot lane here is... Now, once again, you see Oxy pushing out here, but not able to do too much damage uh, to this top lane, Darius, and Darius able to trade back so much. You see that Cheese Ravioli is hovering around the bot side. Despite the lack of mana, feels like they might need a bailout in this bottom lane. It is at least good that this Twitch is still up in CS, but they are taking heavy amounts of damage. And... Uh, despite the low mana pools, that regens a lot faster than health. Zero and Raymond in a pretty comfortable position uh, in the lane down under. Grubs have spawned as well as the first dragon. It seems like Cornell with their top lane priority with Eliza playing so well. They're going to look for the void grubs. And this is generally what we kind of expect here in season 14, Yanni. Uh, the dragon in Grubs being traded at the exact same time here. Yeah, and this is something, you know, we talked about in the last game where it was Briarcliff, the one doing the Grubs, and Cornell did not have the response. You're seeing the opposite here. Mm -hmm. Cornell's doing it, but Briarcliff, the immediate response. Mike is down there right away, sniffing around for that mid lane gank, did get spotted out, but because uh, Zero and Raymond had no mana, it's just a free drink. Eliza hit level six, does have the slam dunker rune. A lot of basketball references in this one. We're really tying it in there. Totally unintentional, but Eliza getting low here. Oxy's found his moment of opportunity to try to look for the kill. And yes, despite being a level down, Oxy picks one up as fail when trying to run for the hills. Raymond with a roam trying to pick up a kill. The Q set up. Oh my god, cheese ravioli! You can't do one like that! Don't set up Raymond! Oh, that's so rough. Felwin now 0 in 2. That's what happens when you don't have flash available. Because Zero is alone, you know, they're gonna take quite a bit of damage themselves. As as a center main, I saw that lot as soon as Cheese Ravioli came out. I was like, wait a minute, what are you don't don't do that to him? That's a perfect cue right there. You made it too easy. Oh my goodness. Alrighty, as we get into the seven minute mark, Yanni. Again, classic, just like game number one with these two teams. They're going back and forth. Six kills in the first seven. Yeah, the only problem is while the gold lead is obviously still very, very close, uh, you can just tell that Briarcliff is coming into this game with just something a little bit extra in what they have done to the Cornell side right now. Yeah. I mean, Camera is just dancing around fail in here. I'm kind of surprised that Mike didn't want to go for an engagement, try to pressure the Zareth before his flash comes back up. But you know, in the end, the Zareth is kind of in the Dark Ages, right? Down over 10 mm -hmm. CS mm -hmm. in this matchup that you expected to kind of just chill out and farm. This is not what you want. I do want to give a little shout out to Cuddy, aka Cheese Ravioli, the Cornell jungler, who I really feel like has kind of turned around the game. Sedge Jin, not an early game matchup favored for Sejuani, I feel like, but has been making a lot of the right plays where he's pretty much going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mike, who I feel like pretty consistently has been one of the 
Stronger, stronger junglers here in the MEC. Ooh. Cheese Ravioli level six first looks for the moment. Raymond goes down. It's a 2v3 now heavily favored for Cornell College. Mike going to try to head for the hills after the engage goes wrong, but he just keeps diving in, tries to turn it around, but the health bars and the shield in is there. Akutso now 2 and 0, oh, maybe looking for more. Does have the ultimate. Zero not safe under turret. Flashes away. Still isn't safe, by the way, because... Uh, Cheese Ravioli is coming around to maybe try to make a play, but looks like Senna's there to stop any of it. Uh oh, more top lane fighting. This could be rough. Failwin ultimate. Oh my gosh, Kammer is so low in the mid lane. I was like, why do we see the Zerath ultimate? Look at the health bar of Kammer on the left side of the screen there. It is just a sliver of HP, but look, it's Oxy again in the top lane, Yanni. Maybe getting a solo kill, the dunk. The shield, the shield is too strong. Oxy able to absorb the dunk. He's not getting posterized today. That's crazy. You saw, you saw <laughs> Cambodia go up over the top and Oxy was just right there to reject it the full dikembe matumbo right there no 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 not today just waving the finger in his face <laughs> that's so great anyway briar cliff they're finding some moments here here and there but cornell also it's five kills to four cornell actually with the gold lead and void grub advantage which is going to be spawning in uh, quite a few moments here, Yanni. Oxy does have Ghost Flash, flash. from Cheese Ravioli. Stun coming in. Eliza's trying to catch up. Here's the Ghost from Oxy to run on out of there. But uh, I think that pretty much is just a sign and release for him for giving the grubs over to Cornell here. Oxy, though, with Teleport Unleashed now, might be able to, I think, make a play here to come back. Cheese Ravioli. It's Warden. Mike knows. Here comes the fight. And using the ultimate to knock him away, and he takes away one. Yeah, and this teleport from Oxy means that you can't fight for those grubs anymore. So Briarcliff should be able to secure all three grubs this time around, equal them out. And that is big because both of these teams, their sieging power is much, much better than the last two compositions they had. So if you gave away five or six, it could be a death knell to your team. Exactly. It's going to be evened up though here in game number two as Eliza's in trouble. Wind becomes lightning. Find it. Smark once more. Glacial prison. She's ravioli trying to save the day. Eliza, can they heal? No. Eliza goes down as Akutso gets a kill on the bottom side of the map again. Yanni, we are in our heavyweight matchup. These guys, so tanky, uh, can just keep trading kills all day long. Yeah. And Unfortunately for Eliza, Noxie and Guillotine was not up, so couldn't go for the dunk. Had to try to settle for the mid-range game. A jumper did not land. And, <laughs> you know, it's just more kills going over to Briarcliff here. And, you know, again, it's just really weird because the gold lead is still relatively even. Somehow, some way, it's because this Twitch is insane right now. 3-0 and has that Blade of the Rune King. We haven't talked that much about Twitch because this isn't the part of the game where Twitch is strong. Twitch gets strong later on, 25 minutes in. So he's already seeing a, uh, this Twitch just so far ahead at this point. Is that as the game goes on, it's going to get worse. No way. Oh, fell in. No Ooh. way. No way. The oh. snipe Raymond from downtown. From the parking lot. From Deerfield, Illinois. Raymond picks up that kill. <laughs> that was crazy. Calling collect, dialing it up, and landing it too. Listen, you will be very happy with that kill in your pocket. It's a big momentum swinger, I feel. With no ultimate does make the kill potential down in the bot lane a little trickier, but Eliza has to be careful once again. Oxy 3 and 2, Frozen Heart. It's a lot of armor to get through. Eliza may be going to be going for an early Black Cleaver to try and get rid of some of that, but it is not your ward. It is not your river. It is Oxy's top lane in game number 2. You remember when Eliza got first blood? Yep. I uh. thought that we were going to see Eliza run away with this game. And that's just the power of Udyr. Oxy is just playing on a different level, a different plane of existence right now. Four, two, and one, just getting the job done solo. And this is bad news for Cornell because you wanted to keep this Udyr down. Now you're going to have to worry about this Udyr in these fights, running amok on your back line, causing some problems for your Twitch. But also, you're going to have to worry about Briarcliff securing the first two dragons of the game because of this poke-oriented bot lane. 
And with the lead that they have means that they could set themselves up for a pretty uh, quick soul here. And Yanni, that is my really friend, rough. welcome oh, to the dimension of gates where Oxy is unstoppable and he's opening up all the gates. He goes mid for some action, but look at the damage coming out of Akutso spraying and praying and he's on a rampage. I was, I disrespected the gates. I didn't even anticipate <laughs> that coming. I was, I was too much thinking about, oh, how this game is going to go later. But Oxy's like, no, 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 no need to think about the later. You think about the now. And the now <laughs> is a zero four Zareth who is down a flash. This is not what you want. This is, uh, I, this is Steph Curry on his worst night. This is Clay Thompson in the mid lane now. <laughs> It's been a rough season for Clay, but uh, okay. just like Clay, uh, Cordell's looking to turn things around here. Kutso trying to pick up a kill. Raymond able to back off, use his heal. Uh, for these solo lanes, Yanni, Cornell is in a tough position because of the experience gap. Level 11 for both Oxy and Cammer, level 9 for Eliza and Failwin just now getting to 10. Oof. Honestly, that's all the color I can provide there is oof. That is... <laughs> not good and it's only going to get worse and you know raymond and zero forced off here good move here from the sejuani you know just give more gold over to the switch potentially look they tickled they tickled the sejuani Sejuani's starting to take a little bit of damage it's oxy coming down into the bot lane as failwin's gonna try to turn the tide raymond getting low only gets hit by one failwin dishing out some damage but look at the mid lane camera responds perfectly getting that mid lane outer turret it's the first turret of the game He's up 40 CS, almost 50 CS, and the turret. This is going to be disgusting in these team fights. Cammer is going to use the ultimate and just absolutely start crushing these health bars. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Eliza gets a heal, uses Ghost, but the knockup comes through and Mike gets a kill. Flash forward down into the bot lane, flash from Akutso. And this has got to be the hero once again for Cornell. Ikutso had a massive game number one on the Ash. It's going to have to make some more magical team fights happen on this Twitch pick. Yeah, the good news for Ikutso is that this is a champion where you can, especially now that you've got a Lulu in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. You can go stealth in a fight. You can make them lose track of you, get some surprise angles. You can really do a lot of damage, get some of those critical kills. Uh, but you're still going to need Failwind to soften them up a little bit. Problem is, I don't know if Failwind's going to have the damage at that point in time. Take a look at the gold leads. It's a 3,000 difference in the mid lane, 1,000 up top. Uh, but at least you can hang your hat on this 1,600 in the bot lane. Cuddy potentially getting caught here. Raymond has a root flashing away, though. And now a pull under oh, turret. Eliza looking. Dunk comes down. But Oxy with the shielding once more, posterizing. Eliza getting greedy now, and that's just extending too far. Eliza tries to make the play happen, but too much tankiness into three members. Not goes their way. Yeah, and when you commit that much to the most fed member under your turret, you have to come away with that kill. I can understand why they went super deep for that one. We're like, okay, listen, we have to pick this one up. Ultimately, they couldn't. And I listen. I respect Eliza for doing that because if you get that kill, it turns the game around. But yeah, huge shutdown. You know, yeah. But without it, I mean, it's probably just going to go the way that you expect it. Is zero it takes so much damage. Oh, Phelan using the ultimate. That's just going to be to use to clear the wave down in the bot lane. Uh, zero forced to use their flash. That's going to be huge. Akutso going to be timing that, I'm sure. He's like, guys, I got five minutes. I'm going for that again. Spray and pray already almost half off the cooldown, about a third at the moment. Look at Cammer. Two levels. Oh, just a, a full level up from 12 to 13 oh. is caught out, though. The goon squad is come in. Cammer, you have pushed too far for the last time. The teleport coming. It's zero. The Seraphine looking for the charm. The encore. Failwind survives. The wild growth. The shielding. Sweet peaches. Such beautiful support play to try to keep him hanging on. Now, Akutso, it's time to go to town. Mike goes down. Dominating is the Cornell ADC having another big game. That was huge. Getting the initial shutdown onto Cammer and Zero not able 
to land that charm means that it was going to be rough for Briarcliff to start out. But now this Twitch, the pockets are getting heavier, but not getting weighed down by them. You're going to get the objective bounty on this top turret as well. The gold starting to swing a little bit more toward Cornell. I was going to say, Briarcliff, one good fight could be the knockout punch, but Cornell, they punch back and they're showing that they are not out of this one yet. Meanwhile, Briarcliff charging on to the dragon, potentially putting them on soul point here, Yanni. It looks like the objective is going to go their way. And even though Cornell fighting back, it's a close game too here. Kills going back and forth, just like game number one. We better buckle up. It's like a roller coaster ride. I feel like we're we're close to the climax here. As I'm excited to see where this one goes. But Briarcliff, I think with that dragon, put themselves in a more comfortable position than they were in game number one. I'd agree. And Briarcliff has pretty solid scaling on their side too. Both of these teams are much more equal when it comes to their scaling. Take a look at champions like Seraphine, like Senna, like Ziggs. On the other side, you know, again, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Failwin and, and what they can do on the Zareth. We are seeing the Rift Herald get used up here in the top side, but they're not going to drive it in. So we're not going to see any Twitch chatters this game, Magnui. I'm so <laughs> sad. Ah. Huh, good thing we've got our loyal Twitch chatters on the Unified stream to mm -hmm. keep us company for the time being if we don't see Thank any you. Void Grubs. We appreciate all y'all tuning in for... Our Monday night MBC action game number two in our first series here. Continuing on Cornell looking for their first series win. They got their first game win. Let's see if they can add to that. Put the cherry on top. I know they want to walk away with this dub. It's close game two here, Yanni. Yeah, and if Cornell goes and wins a fight, this will be great. Mm -hmm. You've got to just win one more fight and you are firmly back into the game. The only problem is... You've got three minutes and 30 seconds to do it. You do not want to give away this Chemtech Soul, especially to a champion like Udyr, especially to a champion like Sun Zhao, who can really just hang on at low HP, get that extra uh, tenacity, that extra damage, but also remember the heal and shield power that comes along with it. That is like so good for Briar. There couldn't have been a better soul for Briar. Uh, I know Shibby in his mind is thinking it's a little rigged because we've had a lot of Chemtech souls, so I might as well just mm -hmm. draft, draft for it at this point, right, Yanni? Yeah, for real. I know that's totally what Briarcliff was doing. <laughs> but anywho, Oxy looking for a potential pick, Akutso, uh, he does not want to run at him, but it's level 14 for the Udyr, level 14 for the Ziggs. These guys are really ahead, and it's going to make Akutso's job of killing all of them a little bit trickier. And, you know, at this point, you just have to, like, hope that Oxy doesn't end the game right. But the problem is, you saw Oxy on the jacks last time. Hold that thought, because Camera is getting engaged on, but we'll be able to disengage. So, I'll head back to my thought. <laughs> Oxy, in, Oxy in the first game, playing that jacks. guess what? Guess what they did? They split pushed. They know how to split push. They know when to group up with the team, when to continue uh, down their reign of terror to break open a base. Anybody who plays Udyr should know that as well, but you already know based on the first game that Oxy will certainly take advantage of that. Being level 14, being that nobody can really do anything to them either, it's going to make it really difficult on Cornell. Yep. And something kind of interesting, I think, for Briarcliff is that they don't necessarily even have to fight for the dragon. They're the ones in the driver's seat here. They can give up dragon, go for Baron, and add to some of this pushing power as uh, Mike getting a lot of vision control around the objective, Cornell, for the most part, operating blindly here, as a lot of the vision's controlled here by Briarcliff. And, you know, two minutes, uh, so, sorry, 22 minutes, not two minutes, <laughs> uh, 22 minutes into the game, and uh, for the first time, it feels like we've kind of slowed down a little bit. The teams are very much playing the vision game, right? I like what Cornell's doing, trying to make sure, hey, Let's grow out this vision that's coming through here so that way we can walk into Baron and not get surprise engaged on by something like a Seraphine ultimate. Mm -hmm. But a minute left on this dragon means it's going to be time to start getting some of that vision downward. We're already seeing a teleport getting used back there. So uh, it looks like they're trying to make a play onto Eliza here. Oxy teleported on down. This is going to be a 2v3. 
1v3, but Mike already fully stacked up. Eliza looking for the dunk. Did they dunk onto Oxy first? Did I see that right, Yanni? I think you did. And I just, these dunks are just hitting the rim. Unfortunately, uh, Eliza got to get their bunnies up uh, to be able to actually complete a dunk. <laughs> wrong here, shoes, but, hey, wrong listen, shoes, wrong shoes. Yeah, Let me change listen, shoes. <laughs> listen, you know, not, not, to, not to poke fun. It is very difficult when you are behind. We're seeing Oxy at going Akutso. at Mach 5 toward the 80 carry. They have their target. Briarcliff know who to focus, Ooh. but it's Raymond getting a kill onto the support. If they can't get Akutso, they'll settle for Peaches, and it's two quick kills, and Yanni, Dragon is upon us. Potential soul. I know we were thinking, hey, Briarcliff don't even have to fight for it, but why don't they go for it when it's not even a fight anymore? And you said it. Going, oh, you know, if we can't get Ikutso, let's go after everybody else. Listen, Twitch can be a bit of a 1v9 champion, but it is so hard to fight when you don't have anybody else around you. Like, you can't fight a 5v3. This is a very late Baron attempt here by Cornell, and Briarcliff is on the way. The Chargers rotating quickly after getting the Dragon. Mike has so much HP to tank up a lot of Failwind's damage, and the objective is stopped. And Briarcliff, uh, they're in such a good position here. They got the Chemtech Soul. Why not look for Baron next? Yeah, look, Mike's back at full HP. He just healed away all Failwind's damage. Again, just too much healing. Where is the heal cut on the side of Cornell? I don't see anything. I'm pulling out my spectacles. I'm I'm putting my hand right over my eyes just so I can get that extra extra bit of vision. I don't see anything here, Dewey. It's less than ideal, and that means Zero <laughs> and Raymond are going to be operating at full capacity, and they've got a lot of power coming through. Two items complete. Raymond's feeling good on the Senna 4, 1 and 1. Uh, I, I think the good thing for, for Briarcliff and their carries is, yes, Cornell, you go for the long range in, in the Zerath to try and go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but uh, Raymond's auto attacks especially as soon as he gets rapid fire cannon you have to look for these stealth opportunities if you're a kutso but look at the healing look at the damage look at the response shut down is a kutso that could have gone so well but unfortunately there was just enough members of briarcliff near the mid lane and that should be the death knell here briarcliff gonna get onto this baron Cornell, they're gonna need a miracle to try to get it done they are gonna get a shutdown onto raymond but you know, this, this sejuani is just off to the side, fighting with Oxy, can't get close to this Baron. Baron getting low. Notably, Briarcliff, not the fastest Baron team, but they're just going to focus on Oxy. Shutdown goes they over. Pulled they pulled off. They don't have a good Baron taking team. You got Senna, you got Seraphine, you got Ziggs. You could kill champions from very long range, but taking Baron is a very different story, Yanni, no and it may spell trouble for the Briarcliff composition who wanted to they're go for it all, who wanted to go for Baron. They lose Oxy. Raymond is down in Cornell College without their ADC. Yanni, they're starting the objective to try and take it mike and camera has got a juicy flank by the way he's stealthed up they don't know he's back he's looking for the moment of opportunity the control ward is going to come in huge akutso looking for the flank focus on the objective maybe though peach is getting low ziggs bombs comes out they found him and akutso goes down mike with another human highlight reel moment he adds to the tape as briarcliff take a huge fight they find three members of cornell college and now they're able to focus on the objective this is why communication is key. Ikuto either needs to say, hey, I'm on the wrong side of the Baron. I need you guys to come help me or has to go all the way around. And with all the time spent there, they could have went all the way around. And because they didn't it allowed Mike to engage right on top of him, they did not have the damage to deal with the Baron. They peeled off to try to help out the Twitch. And then the rest of Briarcliff showed up to the party. They respawned the key members they took out were back. And that is a big gut punch, sending Cornell College to their knees with Soul up in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Briarcliff still haven't broken into the base, but are far ahead, firmly in the driver's seat. Up 5,000 gold now here as we approach the 28-minute mark, Yanni. Dragon Soul, check. Baron Buff, check. Briarcliff, check. They're getting it all on the map here as Elder Dragon spawns in two minutes. 
We'll see if they can close this one out cleanly. Akutso on the Twitch does have three items, but I think as we saw in that attempt of a dive there, there's so much healing and shielding that you have to work through uh, on the side of Briarcliff. Zero's got the Seraph's Embrace, Raymond with Eclipse, uh, as well as just their abilities and ultimates uh, potentially being used. Akutso, it's going to have to be a little bit of some creative work to figure out what flanks to go for here. Raymond is kind of caught away. He's grouped up in bot. Zero's all alone. Yeah, we'll see if they want to go in on the mid lane or they want to go in on the bot lane. They're going to have to make a very fast play here, Mac. I don't know if they're going to be able to catch them. A lot of move speed. Raymond, though, the Glacial Prison connects, and that is going to do with the shielding. Look at all of that from the Senna. The Xerath ultimate, not enough. Shutdown does go over. Balin able to cash in and pick up some gold. And with the team with Baron getting slowed down at the doors, Cornell call it stopping oh the fight. What the Ooh. damage? Cammer explodes in the bot lane. Akutso gets sent back to base. Is that the dagger? That was crazy there by Cammer. Nail him right in the circle. It was picture perfect. And so when you thought Coronel could struggle back to their feet, maybe try to find a way in, they immediately get bopped right over the head. And now the siege is on for the structures in the base. Hammer taking care of the turret top lane. That's a Ziggs W away from getting destroyed as well. So realistically, Yanni, only one turret in the mid lane really stands for Cornell. In Briarcliff, they made good use of the Baron buff, extending their gold lead by 2,000. As Elder spawns on the map, Yanni Cornell, how do they contest? They're in a tough position, but luckily for them, no inhibs have gone down. Hey, listen, you just go for it. You put up the prayer, you say, hey, we only have one shot at this. Let's take a 5v5. Let's try to pick somebody off. Let's group up. Let's just try to do it because... What's the worst that happened? You lose a game that is already not looking that great? You gotta go for it, right, Yanni? Dragon, they're trying to shove in the waves here. Failwin on the side, trying to get some poke damage. I feel like it's all on Akutsu. Can they keep the uh -oh. ADC alive? Potential engage coming through. Cuddy gonna start taking up a lot of damage here. There is Oxy trying to get onto Akutsu, who's forced to flash away. He's now trying to kite back. Oxy just so tanky. Uh, Akutsu's firing away, but can't do it. Nobody's gone down, but Cuddy is finally the first to fall. Oxy with more shield, and he's going in. CC immune, baby. Eliza is the next to fall. Cornell have lost two. Has they go scrambling back into the base now on full base defense mode yanni can they hang on uh it's gonna be really difficult no summoners on your ad carry no ultimate available as well if i'm briarcliff it is time to just win the game here you've got a couple of minions it looks like udir is gonna escort that wave to the top and they want to take out this bottom inhibitor scorched earth mac <laughs> they are no expenses spared. They want to make sure they do it the right way and they nod up the series at one apiece. Briarcliff, they go to their go-to composition to get them back in the best of three in. The effort is successful here. Three inhibitors have gone down. And if that's not enough, it looks like they're backing off here, Yandi, and they're going to be going for the Elder. The good news for Cornell, they have one more shot at it, right? They have one more shot to find a way to flip this Elder Drake. I don't know how they're going to do it, but listen, they're still in the game. The Nexus is still upright. Their wave is, might be in a little bit of trouble, but the Supers haven't fully hit yet. This is their opportunity to kind of just get into the river, get that vision down. But it looks like they're just going to start it up. They do not care. One shining moment, Yanni. That's all it takes as the objective is started. Coronel, they're trying to go for it. This is all they got. The initial engage. Briarcliff, have they gone in too early? Zero flashing in to try to help the rest of the team. Eliza, not enough damage to tank through. Double kill for Raymond as Briarcliff have arrived to clean up the fight. Wow, a triple kill. 10, 3, and 7 Senna performance for Raymond. With double supers flooding the base, it looks like this is going to do it 
for game number two here. Briarcliff, even us up. It was a valiant effort by Akuto, but they were not able to get the job done. It was just so difficult. Mike took no damage when he ulted. Oxy just took no damage in general. <laughs> and Briarcliff able to muscle their way with a little bit of finesse from their bot side into a victory. Now nodding up the series at one apiece. Mac Nui, we got a game three on our hands. Woohoo! Just what we were hoping for, Yanni. More MEC action on this lovely night. And man, Briarcliff in this second match, it just looked so clean. They go back into their comfort zone, and from the way they were playing the fights, the way they were playing the objectives, I know some of those barons got a little interesting to say to say the least, but for the most part. Uh, it was their match. They were in the driver's seat, uh, and they were taking Cornell for a ride. Yeah, and the Eliza coin flip game one landed on heads. <laughs> game two has landed on tails. But they're not three sides to a coin. We're either going to get the coin on heads or on tails for the final game. And uh, these top lane picks, as you said, you told me they were going to be pretty spicy. They've been a little spicy, but I want to see spicier going into game three don't give me darius don't give me garen give me something crazy i've seen the ergot get banned yep. earlier in that game one give me the ergot <laughs> well yanni you know we like to say here that esports events are more than just a place to compete it's really a social experience you get to meet friends and rivals bond and grow with your peers and create moments that define someone's esports experience it can really capture the passion of esports in its truest sense gamers and their experiences are just one aspect that's covered in Unified's newest offering, Master the Arena, People Power Esports, which you can read using the command in chat, exclamation point, people power. So while we're in our ad break, take a moment, look at that offering from Unified. It's got some really great info and some insight on what goes into powering our lovely esports events here in the Midwest. But don't click out of that browser. We'll be right back after this break as we get geared up and ready to go for game number three. First question, uh, the event here today is a LAN, it's mm -hmm. an offline event, so uh, pretty unique in the ecosystem. What do you look forward to, uh, um, LANs versus online? It's a lot of, it's a great bonding experience with the team, more than anything. Mm -hmm. like being yeah. able to pull up with the boys, hang out all day, play mm -hmm. league, you know, um, I'm from Chicago, so oh, nice. you know, I, yeah, I can take the time. team to you know see some local spots around here. You know, any, uh, any big ones so far? Or on yeah, the... I mean, we went to Portillo's yesterday, yeah, um, but I got a couple spots in mind. that are in town. Like I'm gonna try and get us pizza probably today. Okay, um, from uh... we can go to Luminati's. There's a couple different spots. My personal favorite, I like Michael's uh, Bar and Tavern on Sheridan and uh, uh, Sheridan and Irving. Michael's, oh, yes, <laughs> named after me, of course. Right. Well, I, I mean, you didn't have to tell me. Uh, <laughs> then, second question, uh, if you had to bring any character, whether it's a real person or a uh, game character, anything from anywhere for uh, to be the next character in League of Legends, who's it going to be? Um, have any of the previous boys picked by a character from another game yet? Uh, yeah. No, um, I bring the Lich game. The li yeah, like, I, yeah, I think bringing Arthas to, to League would be fun. Oh, I, I think Arthas would be fun. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Like, nice CC based top laner. Yeah. Like, that sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, not bad. Yeah. Not bad. I mean, you're going to have to jump through a few hoops to, to get that. I mean, why we'll not? If Wizards going through a rough patch, they yeah, probably do to sell a couple yeah. of rights here and there. Easy. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, last question. Um, you. You've been answered by the, some of your teammates, but uh, who is most likely going to go viral on your team? 
for whatever reason. Um, Who's showing up on the for you page? Can't say probably yourself. probably in that a top laner. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's a miracle that you know someone from Quebec is able to be you know decently the legends. So you know, I'm really happy for him. You know, like he's been struggling today. All right, he's been having his moments and whatever, but. I think, like, once people realize that, like, we have a miracle of nature on our team, a good League of Legends player from Quebec will be fine. Like, I think I think he'll be the first one to go viral. I Well, I mean, the the Quebecois are going to go crazy for this one, so. Uh. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you for showing up. Appreciate What's you. Up? Yeah, thank good you. luck in the game, sir. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Midwest Esports Conference CLOL 2024 season. Yanni, we are in the heart of week number four, where Briarcliff and Cornell College are laying it out all on the rift. We're getting geared up for game number three as it's winner takes all now. And this is the deciding match to see who's going to do it. Yeah, and you know what? I got to say, Briar Briarcliff has come around in game two mm -hmm. i did expect a much better game out of them i did have a couple of questions about their composition but didn't think that cornell was really going to be able to do the damage and yeah. you saw it in those late fights really weren't able to do the damage <laughs> uh so we'll have to see what this third draft looks like because you know a third draft is always an amalgamation of draft one and draft two what are we going to see taking off the table right <laughs> you know as shibby likes to say the trauma bands right I, you'd have to think <laughs> the zootiers gotta be gone get them out of here Oxy, it's tough because we saw the same thing against Drury. He has a, a game on a top lane carry, and Briarcliff put him back in Udyr Prison, and he had a really good game in it, despite going down for first blood, right? It was Eliza who got the mm -hmm. first kill in the lane, and then he was like, you know what? I'm not going to die anymore. I'm going to be shielding through everything, and it really worked out. And, and I feel like he had a solid showing for the rest of the match, applying a lot of pressure being a focal point, making a Kutso's life on the Twitch. So, so challenging. Uh, it was just a brick wall in the face of a Kutso who's trying to get onto the back line. And Yanni, it, it was just not happening. He was standing there. Was, You're not getting past me. I'm just going to keep slapping you in the face. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we also would be remiss if we didn't mention uh, Cammer, right? Because mm -hmm. Cammer just put in that work <laughs> on to the Zareth. It was, it was rough. It was not the greatest lane ever. So if you get mm -hmm. a mulligan on that one, right? Game three, down to all the marbles. Cornell hunting for that first win. Of course, we already mentioned it. Briarcliff doesn't want to be the team to give that one up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, for this one, I, I know it's two teams closer to the bottom of the standings, but it feels like this game has a lot riding on it for Briarcliff. Get them back in the conversation of kind of that 5-6 spot. Hopefully leaning towards 5 for the Chargers, if you're a Chargers fan. And then for Cornell, looking, this this might be one of their best shots at getting a, a dub this season to put them in some of that conversation. You don't, you'd ideally like to avoid the 8 seed going into your first playoff match would then be the number one seed from the regular season. So wanting to give yourself some breathing room from some of the top squads in the MEC as Yanni, it's time. What trauma is going to be unveiled here in the van phase as we get going in game number three? Well, it's going to be Draven first off. And to your point about just getting a win right for Cordell, listen, Every great spark, every streak, every comeback starts with a win. 
Mm -hmm. You just got to get one. Not saying that it's guaranteed to happen, but listen, you'll be feeling a lot better if you came away with a victory than if you walked away with a loss. And both of these teams would, because as you mentioned, Briarcliff still potentially some room to move up, but they have mm -hmm. to clean up their game a little bit. You know, if they want to take themselves, fancy themselves as a serious team, they have to cleanly dispatch of Cornell, seeing a couple of more bands come through. This is looking more like the game two draft, which, you know, if you're Briarcliff, mm -hmm. you're so happy. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of bot lane focus still for BCU. They don't want to play up against the Draven or the Smolder. Tarek surprisingly did not end up in the ban list, but here it is, game number three. Peach is so much impact on that Tarek pick that they're just going to take it away outright here. Now, Cornell, do you ban away the Karma? I've got my marker ready. Shibby's gonna be hearing about it. Shibby's gonna be real mad. Three for Maokai, three. It, it's fair. I, I feel like at this point, it was worse earlier on in the season. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've gotten to a point where people are kind of used to playing against the Karma. It's, it feels less bad. It does, every time though, surprise me how much damage it does in the early game. Yeah, she's not super oppressive anymore, but you see Oxy locking in the, the uh, Udir. Are we gonna see the salty run back? No way, right? I mean, okay, this is this is much better. Okay, you're going in on a champion that you have gotten a win on. Mm -hmm. Again, very similar flavor of top lane champion. So Oxy's going to have to be careful at level one. But listen, <laughs> Oxy might just be going, guys, I'll just walk into the turret at level one. It's no big deal. I'll give first blood, and then I'll just do what I did last time and just hard carry the game. Yeah, <laughs> brain strats. It's just that easy, Yanni, as uh, Cuddy goes for the Sejuani once again. And uh, BCU, they're just gonna run it back. Game number two went great. Oh, y'all aren't gonna, y'all you're, aren't gonna change anything. We're locking in the Cenefine. It's Not the uh, once again back. It's back, Yanni. And as as a as a Cena player, I'm kind of here for it. I know it's tough to play into. Raymond looked really good on it, but it's happening. And Cornell, they're gonna adapt here. Maybe they've got an answer up their sleeve. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to answer with a double poke bot lane, right? If they're going to go Ash, maybe into support and then maybe play mm -hmm. something like a Varus and just go a little heavier on CC, try to really bully down Seraphine Senna before they get a bunch of healing, before they get a bunch of shielding, right? So love to see how the second half of bands affects this. You already see Wukong getting taken off the board again for Cornell. I like that Melio is gone for Briarcliff, but... I don't know if Melio Ash would be that threatening. And I wonder, what do you, what do you pair with it, Yanni? There's a lot of, what do you try to play against into the Senna Seraphine? Do you try and sustain through it? Mm. It's got so much poke and sustain to go with it. It's a Taric angle. <sighs> it's banned. It's banned oh. away. Oh. No more. Oh, it is. No more, it Yanni. Is. Ah, no, I'm dumb. I looked over, I'm like, Tarek's not banned, right? Yeah, it could be Tarek. No, Tarek, Tarek was banned, so. Uh, smart move by Briarcliff there. Yeah. I, again, I just think you have to go double poke. I don't know if a traditional support is going to get the job done here. Is Peaches cooking? Peaches is cooking. She's got the crank. Okay. This is wild, Yanni. Ash, let's crank duo in the bot. Funny, I feel like it, Cornell's got their... Uh, colors coordinated very nicely here. Mm -hmm. I feel Sejuani Ash going together, Garen Blitz going a little bit together. Camer is bringing out the Tristana. I feel like this is a challenge to fail when he's like, Give me your worst. I bet Tristana can beat it. It could be a flex too, right? They could yeah. elect to just, you know, flex out the Seraphine Tristana here, which means that they're going to get the most favorable matchup that they want if that is the route they want to go, right? If mm -hmm. they decide, okay, we're not really too scared of Failwind's champion, easily abused early on, you're going to go Tristana, champion like Brand that might be able to do a little bit more. It could be safer for a Seraphine angle. I am interested to see where they're going to line up. You should see in a second. It yeah. does look like we're just going to go with Tristana mid. And you know what? Camera has had such a good time against Failwind in these mm -hmm. lanes that... Why not? Just just jump on them and make them try to kill you. We've seen some really good Tristana games here in the MEC across the board. 
We'll see if Cammer can follow it up with some more Tristana domination. Going for plates. Going for a lot of early aggressiveness. And with Mike on the Xin Zhao once again, Yanni, I think the mid-jungle duo here for BCU, they've got something that uh, they're really comfortable on here. Yeah, and... You know, not even just mid jungle, right? But also top jungle. Mike was helping out Oxy quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And Cuddy is going to have to send a lot of resources toward Eliza. You don't want a repeat of what happened in game two. So I am a little bit worried because if you ask me, this 2v2 on the side of Briarcliff, much stronger than the top side 2v2 of Cornell. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Be interesting, Yanni. I'm getting ready. I'm getting jazzed looking at the compositions, BCU. Locking in something pretty similar. The only difference here uh, between game two and game three is Cammer's mid lane champion of choice. Uh, he did really well on the Ziggs and the Tristana brand. Uh, it could be more of the Cammer action as uh, he's been known to have these pop off games with the Tristana. We'll see if Failwind's got what it takes to go toe to toe against him in the mid lane as we hop on to summoner's rift welcome everyone to game number three the deciding match here in week number four of the 2024 mec season briarcliff university taking on cornell college already we're seeing garen with the ignite no ghost so looking for those early kills uh is eliza just trying to get first blood once again but oxy with the teleport only two teleports this time around as zero no teleport on the seraphine going to go with the exhaust i think that's pretty important especially staring down a blitzcrank so you can see they're just fishing for that hook but briarcliff wisely ensuring that you know, we're going to be in the right spot here uh but you know a couple of wards got down you know all right we know generally where people are going to be but this is still a question on where these junglers are going to start yep briarcliff everyone be safe Stick with a buddy, the, the mm -hmm. good old buddy system to start the game. No, don't want anyone getting caught out. Uh, tough thing for me as a setup player, honestly, Blitzcrank is one of my worst nightmares because he makes the early lane <laughs> phase a lot more challenging. So uh, I'm curious if Peaches is going to be able to find some of these early plays because I think it's going to be really critical as the game goes on. It becomes harder and harder to catch out Zero and Raymond because they have such long range. When you start to just put them in the mid lane and sit, it's harder to catch them out in those situations. Yeah, and we're going to see how these early lanes are going to shake out here, Mac. You can already see, again, the top laners are just going back and forth. But this time it's Oxy, the one with no fear. You can burn me down once. Solo kill me twice, but not a third time, Yanni. Oxy has come prepared. He's got the biscuits as well to help with that early sustain. And for Eliza, the, I think, level one empowered Phoenix stance is a little hard to take, especially when you don't get any starting items. Uh... It's a hmm. strat. It's a strat. You know... It's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off for them as looking for the top lane dive. Oh, you talked about the top jungle duo, Yanni, during the draft, and it comes to fruition as Eliza gets taken down underneath the turret. Beautifully played as Mike able to flash away and get out alive. Yeah, all right, Cam, Cam is doing what they should be doing in the mid lane and just trying to put some pressure on here. Uh, and you know what? Why not? Try to force Failwind into uncomfortable situations, right? You get a mm -hmm. kill or two, and all of a sudden, Briarcliff is rolling, right? This could be a game where they, they may cruise, right? Like, Oxy already getting an assist. Mike getting a kill. Double longsword back. You run into Mike. Mike is going to run you over. Yeah, and this is what I, I feel like Cuddy avoided on the Sejuani last game. As the hook misses from Peach there, Raymond successfully playing really safe. Uh, Cheese Ravioli got kind of quite a quite ahead of, of Mike and was able to trade grubs and not lose anything there. Did kind of fall behind in dragons, but and now I feel like we might see something similar to game number one where Mike just 
goes to town and has complete control of the map. He's one of those junglers who's able to treat the entire map as his own jungle and control it really well. We'll see Cuddy a slight level lead as the top lane. Close trade with a lot of minions. Cuddy does take away the Raptors there and dashes away, but Camer has the mid lane priority to roam and dish out some damage. He's jumping all over the places. Failwin going to have to defend his jungler. Yeah, you got to be worried once you use your dash, but the roam up. Camera does have flash available. He's going to try to time it, but there is Peaches with the knockup beautifully played. You can't flash away from the hook if Peaches is flashing right on you for the knockup. Really well played from Cornell. Yeah, smart move there by Peaches because, listen, every kill that you can get, especially when you're dealing with, like, Senna Seraphine, even if it's not on them, every kill that you can give to your AD carry comes at a premium. Uh, because Ash Blitzcrank is not a combo that does a whole lot of damage. So, listen, you want to burn your flash for that? Good. You already carry a little bit extra gold in the pocket. Make them relevant. And I potentially like the Garen into Udyr maybe a, a little bit more for Eliza. Uh, I know the Darius has been like a really popular counter, and we start to see here a little bit how strong Udyr is in the lane. But with the phase rush... I potentially see the route of some more favorable trades going the way uh, of Eliza's. Hammer's mid lane damage. He's got two daggers. Top jungle duos meeting in the top lane underneath the Cornell turret. Eliza trying to dish out the damage onto Oxy. Getting so low. Yes, Eliza does secure the kill. It's a one for one trade. Ah, cheese ravioli a step ahead of Mike. And when Mike finally got there, could not hit the wind becomes lightning, which means... You gotta all trudge yourself over. Listen, you got two long swords. You got no boots. You're moving in quicksand. Mike couldn't get there in time to save Oxy. That said, you at least trade one for one out of it, but the kill going over uh, to the top laner of Cornell, Eliza, is going to be something to worry about. Grubs getting picked up here, Mike. Able to oh, secure that objective. Camera flashing underneath the turret. Explosive charge not going to do it. And Cuddy evens this one out once again. Jeez, Ravioli baked to perfection. Right place, right time. Oh, camera went auto attack all instead of auto attack all auto attack. If you wait a half second, you can get that last auto off while the ult is used. Oh, man. Actually... I'm being told that the auto actually hit the tower because our producer is a god, and <laughs> that is killer. Oh, I thought it just missed, but it hit the tower. That's a backbreaker, by the way. You lose so much for that. You're going to lose the dragon, too. Mike trying to even things out a little bit. Failwind gets caught. Wind becomes lightning, but a lot of damage from the brand zones away the rest of Briarcliff. Now, Cheese Ravioli, not yet level 6, but forces the flash out of Briarcliff's jungler, Mike, is forced to back away. Good job there by Cornell and Cuddy. Uh, listen, you're getting them to burn summoners. You'd see Peach is looking to make the play. That's cruel. Well timed. It's the rocket jump CC buffer. Say, if you're ever in trouble, Yanni, and you need to get away from a CC spell, then just click W on Tristana at the precise moment you are hit. And very skilled Tristana players can get out of sticky situations like that. The hook goes wide in the bot lane. Oh, Cheese Ravioli trying to make a play here. Uses the ultimate just to back off. Cheese Ravioli. I mean, listen, Cheese Ravioli don't have legs as far as I know, but we're moving very, very slow. CC'd for an eternity there. <laughs> but again, just not a whole lot of damage. And Shader Crystal Arrow, good oh! sidestep from Raymond. <laughs> Raymond, you goat. Dodging that perfectly threading the needle between those two spells somehow escaping both of them and it was a well-timed effort from cornell but unfortunately not quite there the ultimate's ready look at oxy here as well yanni it is a three-man dive on to fail win and that's going to be an easy kill there camera got quite low but more damage into the bot lane peaches ignite burns away raymond Failwin once again getting put into the gate dimension with Oxy <laughs> showing up and doesn't even have as big of a lead as they did last time, but able to make an impact around the map. And that's something that Eliza was not and has not been able to do early on their top lane picks. So any little bit 
uh, helps Briarcliff out. And they're taking the 1v1. Eliza has the minion advantage here, but Phoenix Stance is going to dwindle the numbers. Eliza with the execute, trying to buy time for the ultimate. A little shield, a little ignite, a little damage is a little bit too short. Oxy gets the kill in the 1v1 and is building on games to success. Hook in the bot lane, Yanni. It's action all over the map here in the deciding match. Ultimate on core zero. We always want another performance on the Senefine. She is ravioli getting low. That explosive charge is going to do it. And Briarcliff get three quick kills in immediate succession. That means a plate for the top side. That means potential plates on the bottom side if they want them. They just take a look at what's going on in the top. Oxy? <gasps> oh, oh my. Wow. The Phoenix Stance triggers the tower. But Eliza did not do any damage, and Oxy actually takes the quick quick way back to base. No, that is so much slower. Look at that death timer. It was over 15 seconds when, you know, three seconds after they die. That ain't the quick way, especially when you don't have TP. But the good news is Udyr is a champion that is definitely known for getting around the map at a, uh, at a pretty brisk pace, we'll say. Yeah, he's got the monkey's agility back in the day. Uh, still has the move speed buff from uh, the the forge god there. You see Orin's horns channeled as uh, grubs are up again, Yanni. And it's going to be Briarcliff getting six, just like they did in game number one. Hawkshot is going to try and spot it out, but I think it's a little too late. Hook Ooh. does connect. Ultimate coming out as well. Raymond is stunned for eternity as Akutso gets a kill. There's a nice snipe right there. And that enchanted crystal arrow hitting flush. Raymond did not do anything. Did not have flash available. And uh, yeah, like you mentioned, six grub is going over to the side of Briarcliff. And Udyr is licking their chops right now. Six grubs for me? Oh, well, uh, gladly. Gladly. Look at the bot lane, though. Yanni Zero is in trouble. Akutsu trying to push in this wave. Glacial Prison connects, and Raymond running into the bot lane, but is a little too late. The carry drops as the minion wave crashes in, and another hook is Raymond a goner here, flashing away. We were just talking about he did have his flash before, just got it up, and Yanni, as quickly as it came back up, Raymond forced to use it again. I've never seen like this level of blitzcrank in the last like two minutes landing every single hook check them pc with the aimbot <laughs> hey peach is just dialed in at this point it is almost four plates of turret gold going into the pocket of the cornell bot lane akutso's ash once again looking to have a big game 202 to start us off as cornell look to pick up their second dragon yeah, also up 30 CS on top of it. That is a large disparity in a game where, because of what the top side's done, you need it. Mike, what are you doing? Mike is adding to the clips. Oh my gosh, he gets another dragon steal with a big ultimate to follow. Zero is making a play happen as Briarcliff charge onto the objective and absolutely capitalize. It's three kills going their way. Mike goes out in a blaze of glory to try and swing the tide in his team's favor. The unfavor, the unwavering faith that Mike had in his team and that his team had in Mike, knowing that he was gonna go in and take that dragon and knowing that they were gonna be able to follow up with another big gut punch to the side of Cornell. That is so rough, so much gold going over to them, getting that extra damage on top of it too. It was a perfect encore, Mwah, fantastic, triple platinum. It's it's top of the billboards for sure, <laughs> Yanni, as Zero and Raymond and crew coming up with some huge plays there. And that's going to give Briarcliff a 2,000 gold lead as we hit Close to the 13 and a half minute mark. Kutso and Peach is looking for more plays. Raymond just barely dodging that one. Mike and Cammer are around. Cheese Ravioli hovering to keep this prized bot lane ahead if possible. And, you know, Kutso getting taken down there. It was a big shutdown that went over to Briarcliff as well. 
The only other member that's got a shutdown on them on the other side, if you want to try to take something back, is this Udyr. But look at where Udyr's at. They're just running amok here on the top side. Finally, we're seeing Failwind move around to try to make a play. They do a lot of damage, and here comes the Garen. Arrow plus hook zero. So low. There we go. Mike trying to turn this fight around. Akutso looking for the flash. No ghost. Cheese ravioli a moment too late to save the ADC. Now this is not the 2v2 you want to take. Peach is getting low as well. It's a double kill for Mike as he continues to have a pop-off game. Oxy ran mid. How did Oxy get mid? Camber, Camber, why are you diving in? He's trying to get the reset. Jumpy gets the kill. See you later. Camber's going to jump on out of there. Oxy, Oxy somehow survives. And Briarcliff just never ceased to amaze me on the rift. Oh, here comes Oxy. Could be in a little bit of trouble. It's completely out of mana right now. But guess what? The rest of the squad is here. Camber jumping in. Camber dropping no the hammer. Going deep. They're going to take out the opposing mid laner. Oh, my God. What's going on, Mac? Another hook connects Yanni Akutsu looking for damage, firing away from the back. It's a lot of low health bars, but the follow up isn't there, and Zero comes in to heal everybody up. Rift Herald pops out on the map, but Camer has got his priorities straight. He is going for <laughs> an inner turret with the explosive charge. Peaches, they ain't nothing you can do about it. That's a lot of gold and a flash away from the hook. Oh, and Camer no. says, wait a minute, that was your only ability. You're gone. Camer with another kill. Yanni, the mid jungle duo for Briarcliff are showing off. Listen, even the top laner is showing off. You saw Oxy doing tricks. Oh no, this is bad. Akutso underneath the turret. It's not a safe place anymore, Yanni. The dominoes are falling for the side of Cornell Mac. Briarcliff in that short span got like seven kills, got some turrets, and Cornell was only able to get one back, I think. Maybe. Uh oh. It is disaster. Uh -oh. And this gravy train keeps rolling. Mike, despite being low, is going to eat up some of the yummy, yummy honey fruit. Heal back up a little bit. Oxy, two items on the Udyr is taking care of business up here on the top side of the fight. Mike just says, you know what? Screw the objective. We're going to go in for the fight, and they're going to be able to take it cleanly. Two kills without losing anyone, and they're going to be able to look for the Rift Herald afterwards. I think the clock has struck 12 on Cornell College's hopes at getting their first match victory. They are firmly out of the game this is the widest disparity we've seen in this best of three at yep. its earliest mark. 16 and a half minutes, and it is a 7,000 gold lead for Briarcliff. This top outer turret's not even down yet. They've got the Rift Herald. By the way, six grubs as well. The true damage they're doing on these turrets is not to be understated. When you already have champions like Udyr and like Tristana, the Tower Taker of Terror, <laughs> it's only a matter of time before Briarcliff just breaks open the base and calls it a game. Peach is looking for a pick here. Arrow's going to be used, but the CC immune Oxy says classic. See you later. As he heads on out, avoids uh, the oh, damage, avoids the CC. Camer dash it in, looking for a kill on the fail win ultimates, I believe. Trey, no, Camer still has the buster shot. Still has that in his back pocket. He's going to try to kite around, but the damage from Failwind gets in the shutdown, Yanni. Yeah, but I you know it is worth it, right? And even who, no matter who gets the kill, it's an 800 gold shutdown. It's worth it. You'll take it. This minion wave is coming in, though, so if they want to do something to this bot in turret, they can. But meanwhile, in the top lane, Garen going to pick up objective bounty, at least get a little bit of gold into their pocket. I think at this point, Oxy's actually okay with, with getting hooked. Mm -hmm. He's like, you just brought me closer. Thank, thanks so much, Peaches. I'll just come around. Not too worried about losing health or damage. Five, two, and seven. Oxy is thriving on Udyr duty and uh, really making it look like the power pick we know it to be in season 14. Briarcliff up big, almost 7,000 gold. Yeah, you said it. You know, Sweet Peach hooks in Udyr. It's like, hey, thanks for the gap close. Didn't know I had a fifth ability in this kit, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, and then oh, it's like, oh, I'll just stun you and take you down as Oxy has just been going to work. This freshman is going to terrorize the MEC with his Udyr for a long, long time. Five, two, and seven. 
and just I'm kind of speechless. Like, I don't know what more to say. They've been doing everything possible. They've been getting 1v1 kills. They've been a nuisance helping out their team by running distraction, running all around the map. It's just a perfect textbook way to play Udyr. Trick2G would be proud. Yep. He's smiling up above in the Gates dimension, Yanni. I was going to say, that's like, <laughs> Trick2G's still alive, man. Like, I know he's old, but he's still alive. <laughs> Now, the gate dimension I'm imagining is like a semi-spiritual plane that, that like you do players can kind of tap into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of look and peer through and see other Udyrs open in the gates. And so, you know, in, in kind of a dream-like state, yeah, he's not dead, per se. Zen -like, just, we'll say. Yeah, exactly. He's the master. He's like Buddha for Udyrs. It's crazy. But Oxy caught out here some additional shielding. I don't think... Is going to be enough for him to get on out of this one. He's dishing out a lot of damage, but there we go. Fail and able to burn him away, but the counter attack is in the mid lane. Yanni, Cammer with a kill of their own. Grubs, Rift Herald, the siege of Cornell's base begins here before the 20 minute mark. Somebody the inhibitor in. goes down blaringly flash. And here we go. The inhibitor falls. Cammer hops in, and it's Tokyo Drift time. Good Yanni shot. diving in the Nexus turret. Numero Uno getting low, but here's a classic Eliza flank to try to save the game. Spinning to win, and it's a shutdown onto Raymond. Mike is the next to fall. He goes on a killing spree and is able to flash out a huge ultimate, though. Damage coming out from everyone. Pouring in is the defensive effort. Ooh. Camera trades. Overall, it's four for two in favor of Cornell College. Yeah, and while that's great for Cornell, they can't get onto the Baron. They don't have the damage to be able to do this. Their base is in tatters. It's broken open. There are still two outer or inner turrets, I should say, that are left on the map for Briarcliff to take, which will give them even more gold. I guess the one thing is that Cornell was able to close the gold gap by about 2,000 down to, you know, 5,000 right now. Worth. But it's still really bad, Mac. Hashtag worth? It's hashtag still worth. in I mean, it. No, it is hashtag worth, right? Because, <laughs> you know, seriously, you are getting these super minion waves mm -hmm. in, right? So Failwin can farm them up. So uh, Kutso can form, form them up as well. The problem is, is just this Udyr in a side lane, right? You're going to need to devote somebody to this mid lane. In mid lane only, you put Udyr in one side, Tristan in the other side. That's a recipe for your turrets going down. I, I know Peaches is a sad bliss crank after that little interaction there between them and Oxy. Briarcliff, I think, going to be gearing up for Baron Nasher. They did lose a dragon earlier in the game, so despite having six Void Grubs, they are a little bit farther away from the Soul Failwin. I'm actually going to teleport from base here, Yanni. What did they got up their sleeve? They were maybe worried about Baron having been started. I wonder if that was the communication between the teammates. Yeah, that is pretty rough. And Oh my god, Udyr from the side! Oxy looking for a flank onto the back line, but he doesn't have a lot of follow-up here. Mike getting stunned up, but he still dashes onto Akut, so he's going to take out the main damage threat for Cornell College. And now it's a front-to-back team fight. You got more ADCs. You got a lot of tankiness. Camera flashing and diving in. Not actually flashing, but he uses Rocket Jump in to try and close out some of the space. And is this going to be enough of an opportunity here? Low health bars for Cornell. Yanni Baron's uh, on the dinner menu tonight. Yeah, you've got enough healing, enough shielding, enough sustain, enough damage that this is going to be pretty free for the side of Briarcliff. Cornell is going to need to an answer, but I don't know if they have what it takes to answer. They're going to need a great smite here from Sejuani. Cuddy, it's your moment. Pay Mike back for game number one. Can Cuddy keep the game alive? Baron getting low. Cuddy forced it back away. It should be an easy secure. The hook there onto Cammer. So much damage. He actually goes down. Failwin on a rampage. A huge hook from Peaches to potentially turn this one around. Yanni. Akutso is safe in the back line. Mike is next. Trying to get locked down. A lot of damage. Now it's time for the carries. It's only Raymond and Zero. But look at Raymond's damage on to Akutso taking them down it's four for three it's a bloodbath in the river as Cornell continue to close the gold gap and try to hang on Briarcliff just could not make a straight call what they wanted to do they had Mike 
and Zero on the Baron. Meanwhile, it was Camera, Raymond, and Oxy fighting the rest of the fight. That allowed enough time for Failwind to get in there. Flashes are getting burnt. They're still fighting. Exhaust used. Cuddy trying to get out. Zero playing keep away. It's up to Peaches to try and stop the base. And I wonder if the thought here is Yanni. Yanni, no teleport for Failwind. Jeez, Ravioli is very low. Briarcliff have a limited window here, but maybe they pull off Baron? I don't know. A lot of members of Cornell heading that direction. Listen, at this point, Bar Baron is toxic. No, dude, stay away <laughs> from it because it is starting to cause problems. Because, again, if they just made a straight call of, okay, we are all pulling off and we're all fighting, they win that fight easily. But because mm -hmm. it was extended, it allowed time for Ash to get back there. You know, she was on a death timer. So, you know, you let that happen. This is a game that Briar Club should firmly have in their hands, but they have opened the door for Cornell College to come back into it. Mac, I don't think that I didn't think that we'd be saying that because of <laughs> no. what the game was like at the 16 minute mark. Now, eight, almost nine minutes later, Cornell have a pulse. They've actually, uh, like you kind of mentioned before, when the inhibitor goes down, it presents a, a somewhat small opportunity for the opposing team to actually farm up and get more resources oh. as the picks go wide. Abort, abort. You missed the <laughs> ultimates. Oh, you gave Mike an area into the back line. A huge ultimate. This might be Briarcliff's moment of opportunity. Cornell, Ooh. the four-man encore is zero. A concert to remember. Briarcliff stormed through the fight, getting a clean ace here. Yanni to finish off game number three. Oh, Zero gonna be playing in Alexandria Palace over across the pond after that one. That was ridiculous and in a fight and just everything that could have went wrong went wrong for Cornell. Briarcliff survived, prevent themselves from getting snake bitten by Cornell. A two to one series victory. Well played to them. Just uh, do, do I say it, Yanni? I think we might have cast or cursed Cornell just a little bit there, but the ultimates go a little wide, and Briarcliff do a beautiful job of seizing the opportunity at hand. Mike takes his, his secret fifth ability of the Peaches hook in, dives in, <laughs> beautiful engage there in Briarcliff. You know, we saw before in those earlier fights... It seemed like there was some back and forth between managing the objective, going for the fight, trying to find the right way to go into the fight, and all that jazz. And eventually the music starts playing beautifully when they just start focusing on the fight. Yeah, and what a crazy last fight that was. You know, Again, you mentioned the uh, the fifth ability of Xin <laughs> Please, don't give that guy another gap closer. That was That's what you see when you get another gap closer there. And what? Once again, an ultimate... Coming out from zero, just hitting all four members that were still alive. It was picture perfect. They lined up for them, and they really showed Cornell how it's done. You saw Cornell, you missed two key ultimates in the fight. I like the idea. They both were on the same wavelength, but it feels like a communication issue, right? Because mm -hmm. both the Sejuani and the Ash ultimate fired in the same direction at the same target. Usually means that one of them did not call it. Like, here, let me fire mine first. Yep. Is that you did not have a disengage tool uh, for what was a perfect fight out of Briar. Yeah, we do have the post game interview coming up very shortly. Uh, but Yanni, have you ever really wondered what goes into running an esports event, sort of like MEC and MEC Clash between your team helping you run the event and the audience that goes into attending the event? The people are the first thing you have to consider when setting up an event. Uh, if you want to learn more about how people power esports events and more, type exclamation point top five in the chat and check out our article, What It Takes Top Five Things Powering Esports Events. Again, we got the post game interview coming up here shortly. Don't click away. We'll be right back talking with one of the members from Briarcliff University. And if you know them, you know it's going to be an interview worth sticking around for. Don't want to miss it.
Hello, everyone, and thank you guys so much for joining us for the post game interview. We are joined by Briarcliff University's hero <laughs> in the bot lane, the ADC, or well, quote unquote ADC in this game, the bot lane carry, taking names, <laughs> coming up really huge in the team fights. My main man, Zero, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, Zero, first thing. Want to talk about that last fight that you just had <laughs> that just went absolutely crazy tell me it's a little weird playing seraphine sometimes as somebody who also plays the same role it gets a little wonky right tell me about like just the angles and everything when you decide is the right time to just drop that ultimate you know you're gonna hit multiple members and how impactful it is to just pretty much turn a fight in your favor yeah so uh, a little bit of background. I used to play support, actually. So I have. Oh, nice! Yeah, I have some games <laughs> on Seraphine. Um, but my ult was on a five-second cooldown when the fight started. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just gonna put it right as soon as, soon as it comes up, and you happen to line up in a row. So mm -hmm. I was able to get a four-man ult. So in thinking about what it takes to come back in a series like this, what was the mindset? From the team to kind of switch things after game number one a really really close match doesn't go your way and then you guys clean things up and take two games in a row what goes into making that happen for you guys um so the first match we like after the game we talked about it and we thought like why did we lose that match and mm -hmm. we figured it was like some team comp but also just like picking the wrong fights being in the wrong spots mm -hmm. So to fix that, we picked Seraphine Senna in the bot lane. And <laughs> as Seraphine, I'm able to just keep my teammates alive, which yeah. really helped us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's always good. Now, I don't want to look too far ahead, but have to ask you the questions. You know, starting to get around playoff time, things like that. And, you know, it's going to be a little difficult to try to move up to that five spot if possible. Uh, but if you could, you know, choose... Uh, an opponent in the playoffs, who would you want to go up against first? Because there are a lot of really good teams at the top. Um, I'm not quite sure about like how the teams are necessarily. Uh, That's my mm -hmm. first year on the team, obviously. I mm -hmm. got picked up from the soccer team. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I feel like we had a good match. Like I feel like we can, if we can get O and U, that'll be good for us. Yeah, and they're they're pretty high up there, but mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I feel like we every team that we've played so far, it's been close, and I feel like we always have the upper hand to take it. Just mm -hmm. haven't had the chance. Yeah. Thinking like about a little bit, I know you got one more week left of uh, of MEC regular season action. I feel like the Briarcliff squads always bring some fun compositions onto the Rift. Is are there any sneak peek little special comps that you guys have saved for the last week? Um, not necessarily. <laughs> it's uh, me being I was silver last time, and uh huh, yeah, just kind of do whatever. On, you got a whole story behind that. <laughs> so uh, well, yeah, if you guys have the time, I can tell you a little bit about how I joined the team. Please, right. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So one day before study all for soccer, I walk to the coffee shop to get a coffee and Raymond, mm -hmm. our support happened to be there talking about league. And at first I was like, why would someone talk about league in public? You know, <laughs> like I'd always like, I'd played it for a few years, but never really talked uh -huh. to anyone about it. And I was like, asked him if I could be on the team. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, sure. And like, here we are obviously, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like, we need you. And so I was like, oh, I'm only a gold. Last split, I was silver. Mm -hmm. So got promoted in my uh, promos. And now, obviously, I'm, I've gotten all the way up to platinum. Soon to make it to Emerald, hopefully. And Huge. Yeah, hopefully Huge. I can make a yeah. change for the team. That is awesome. I hope that I don't run into you in solo queue because <laughs> I will lose. That will be a bad time. i got to make sure that I'm on banned Seraphine alert. <laughs> Well, Zero, before we let you go, we appreciate being able to talk to you and listen to your story. We're really excited to see what else Briarcliff can put on. You know, we're one of those teams. We're cheering you on from the casting booth, all the squads. We hope to see the absolute best. And you guys absolutely delivered on a fun Monday night. 
full of League of Legends action. We're just curious, before we let you go, do you have any shout outs that you want to give out? Uh, yeah, I'd like to shout out first my family and my girlfriends. They all mm -hmm. watch the streams. Um, I've actually, at, during the interview, I've been getting texts from them. They're a little <laughs> surprised. Um, but yeah, they've really supported me all throughout. Mm hmm like starting video games obviously i had never mm -hmm. thought about playing competitively and now they're pretty excited that all the time i spent in my room has actually gone to something <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah that's what i want to shout out well awesome thank you so much for the time zero we wish you a lovely rest of the week briar cliff gearing up and getting ready to go for week five action to finish out the regular season can't wait to see how you guys do yeah thank you and that's going to do it for our first series of the night, Yanni. But we've got a double header on this lovely Monday night. More MEC action coming your way. And it's with two of some of the top teams in the MEC. The Ottawa Braves are taking on Ohio Northern University in just a little bit. Don't click away. We'll be back with our next series in just a bit. Spicy match. First question I want to ask, uh, you've been to a few lands, and uh, what is the most exciting thing coming and playing offline? I think it's just that in general. Okay. Just the fact that I'm coming to land to play with people, yeah. and just be able to see them. Yeah. Yeah. You, or if there's some insanity, mm -hmm. it just adds another aspect to it. Um, I mean, obviously the trash talk you have to. Yeah. I'm not sure how often that happens to me. No. On the interviews, it does a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was pretty much always awesome. Yeah. So, Getting to make some friends with uh, some people from the other colleges, etc. Yeah. So you just nice. seeing everyone and just be able to put it, like, just a face to the name. Yeah, yeah for sure. They are. Yeah, for sure. Uh, second thing, we're going to put you on the, the Riot team. In uh, day one, you've got to bring in a character from another IP or a real life person okay. into League of Legends. Uh, who's that first character? I feel like there's a lot of games that I've played, like. Mostly gotcha games. They usually have like a panda. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. League doesn't have one. But if I was to pick one, I feel like I'd just pick Poe. Poe, like Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. Fu yeah. Panda. Okay. Jack like, Black voicing. It's yeah. Gonna, everything. Yeah. And like, yeah. I feel like you'd want to have him more like Jack Black animations as well, like somehow. Like try to embody Jack Black as much as possible. How do we How do we distinguish Poe from Gragas in gameplay? Then? <laughs> I mean, he's just a little more nimble. I think. Okay, okay, like, okay. Like, the animations just seem a little cleaner. Like, Grog? Yeah. Grog Still the body slam, like, though. I mean, you gotta... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or maybe he's got a counter. You know? Oh, like, like... Yeah, it, it, it's it's like, like, like your repost, where like he gets hit. Well, oh, that's the ult. It's gotta be. But is that also a counter, though? Or is that just, like, you're close enough and you just... Nah, you. yeah, that would be totally separate. I feel like, I feel like the, the repost... Animation would be on, on like a basic ability. Yeah. Because he gets fine. punched in the stomach and then yeah. hits him back. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Uh, and then the uh, Skadoosh has to be like one second CC into a brilliant soul. <laughs> is it slowing as well or is it just like knocking everyone? I I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be balanced. Yeah, I, yeah it won't be. It won't be. I mean, but it's got to be OP. I'm just the dragon boys. Yeah. 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 Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe he's got a passive with the dragon scroll. You know, and it just blinds. Yeah. <laughs> <The shiny laughs> <shiny. people>. yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh final question. Um who's most likely to go viral uh on ONU and for better or for worse why? Uh, you were a popular suggestion by the rest of the team, but I mean I think Kato is like yeah. the go to. Thing. Yeah, that, I mean it, it literally split. Yeah. So. I think there's a plethora of things for him. Like you think good or bad, I think. Like I mean, it, you spread a wide net, you're bound to catch the fish. Yeah. So it just sounds like that's the play for him. Yeah, I'm going to go with him, but I think my reason would be... I feel like he'd be on the news for just something outrageous at some point. Like, whether it's at work... Because or of him, public, or he's just at a crazy, like, event. I could see states. both happening like, oh, on yeah. top of each other. <laughs> like, he could, he could literally be at the scene of just, like... I don't know, like a bank robbery, but he would add on top of that something else, <laughs> like something Kato level. Like, I'm not saying he would join in on said Right, no, no, no. But like, no. something he would do during it would just like, it would make the news higher. Just than add the to the chaos. Robbery. It's yeah. it's the classic, uh, the classic video where it's like a car crash in the middle of an intersection and then somebody on a Mario Kart just getting by. <laughs> yeah, you know? that, that's like, 
it would happen. They're like, oh, there's a bank robbery at you know Huntington Bank on some random road. Yeah. And during said event, and he's in full Ari cosplay, just yeah, like a man casting dressed spells as it. a fox throwing a like, those inflatable balls. Yeah, yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. the bank teller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just <laughs> like, completely unrelated. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, that's so good. All right, well, uh, good luck in your games. Appreciate you coming. Hello everyone and welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Midwest Esports Conference 2024 CLOL season. We've got more action in our Monday night doubleheader. Thank you guys so much for joining us. My name's Mac Dewey. Joining me in the booth is a different face, but Shibby, we are so, so excited to have you on the stream. How are you doing, my man? Yeah, as the bottom says, I finally showed up <laughs> uh, back like I never left. Really cool to see two of my favorite people on a cast together, both Mac, Dewey, and Yanni. Hope you had fun with him. Seems like Absolutely. you guys had a lot of fun. The basketball references were flowing. It was right. A, a back and forth. I was like, oh, Mac has met somebody that loves basketball as much as he does. Um, there you go. Uh, that was That's a all match made in heaven. A, a banger series as well. I was watching the whole thing. I was, I was taking care of some IRL stuff behind the scenes. And yeah, BCU, Cornell, a match that... I didn't think was going to go the distance, but both of these teams brought out a lot of cool strategies, brought out a lot yep. of different champions. I always talked about how Cornell, despite them being like one of those winless teams, they mm -hmm. always kind of bring out these very interesting draft strategies, very interesting picks, right? The Aurelian Soul, the Taric, the Ash, stuff like that. But BCU, not to be outdone, they bring in their own little couple wacky picks here, the Zigs and, and that kind of stuff. And yep. I, I was yep. really impressed. And I, I, I've been very impressed with Briarcliff. I think, like we said, we do have a very clear divide. There is that top four, bottom four, right? All top four mm -hmm. of those teams are mm -hmm. kind of in a league of their own, and the bottom four as well fighting amongst each other. And we've got a pretty big matchup coming up in this top four, right? I know. To think that our first series was so darn good, and that wasn't even the series that a lot of people pinpointed as maybe the one to watch. Shout out Briarcliff and Cornell for putting on a fantastic series. But Shibby, it's time to transition. It's time to lock in. It is two teams in the top four duking it out for a match that is very important for standings. It's Ohio Northern sitting at the top 5-0 and oh, taking on Ottawa Braves. Yeah, and Ohio Northern have a good chance of if they win this, they essentially clinch a top two spot, right? They mm -hmm. they clinch a top two spot minimum. That's what they get, right? They cannot end lower than that if they end up beating out Ottawa here. But like we mentioned when we talked about the MEC pod and stuff like that, if there's a world where GVU ends up beating Purdue Northwest and then now Ottawa ends up beating o Ohio Northern, we could have like a four-way tie for first place and there could be a lot of different <laughs> tiebreakers going on. It could get really wacky. Um, would be just our luck though, because just like we saw Friday, GVU quite handedly 2 0 Purdue Northwest, right? It was mm -hmm. a close game one, but then game two kind of just uh, went to the wayside. It was off the back of GVU's 80 carry Nightstar on Kogma and Zeri, those two champions rearing its head back into the MEC and into the meta ever so slowly. Let's see if ONU and Ottawa have picked that, some of that stuff up. Yep. I think the biggest surprise of this season, Mac, is that ONU is at the top of the standings. Who would have thought last season, I believe they finished the regular season at number four. And then due to some unforeseen circumstances, they actually didn't really get to compete a lot in the playoff picture. Nope. So we never saw 
the the fruition of that ONU season, but things are starting to piece together really, really nicely here. It was for us last season a roster that we really, really liked on paper, and then uh, you know, seeing them in action now, it's it's really coming together quite well as we take a look at the roster screen here, ONU on the left, aggression in the top lane, the king, Julian himself in the jungle, and then rounding out the rest of the team, Kato, Kai, and Cuz. These guys, I feel like the centerpieces that make so much of the team go round. Yeah, the king moniker for ONU transferring over from Kai over to Julian. Maybe it'll come back if <laughs> Kai has another monster performance here, but not to be counted out and a very dangerous team in their oh, yeah. own right ottawa braves his team killian in the top lane prod in the jungle blonde back in the mid lane and we've got levi and plucks rounding out that bottom lane and you talked about a triple threat in kai <laughs> kato and cuz let yeah. me introduce you to the ottawa triple threat of killian blonde and levi these three guys like Killian automatically draws a rumble ban every time. You have an individual on your team that just gives you extra draft resources. He yeah. tanks <laughs> a draft pick for you guys. Can play the cannon, can play the mm -hmm. Gnar, has pretty solid champion pool for this team. And you've got Blonde who has quite literally taken a page out of Karia's book and just started clicking random, right? Draven mid into Seraphine, AD LeBlanc. I think I've seen him on Oriana. He's played so many different champions in the MEC. And the return of Blonde is something I welcome. And he has been grinding it out both on solo queue, on OQ teams. I, I've, I've been very impressed. And obviously, Levi and Plux, uh, a, a welcome addition, right? Levi, obviously, last year, Monster ADC, arguably mm -hmm. one of the best ADCs we had in the regular season. And then uh, Coda, obviously, leaving. Plux coming in. A very good support in his own right uh, and kind of just bolstering that bot lane even more. Ottawa is scary and I think I feel like a lot of teams and a lot of people when we talk about the top four, we talk about GVU and how mm -hmm. they've been so, uh, you know, winning and so dominant back to back. Oh, and you the new kids on the block. Purdue Northwest, fresh faces, right? Really cool to see. I feel like nobody's talking about Owen or uh, Ottawa and I think it's like a disservice. Mm-hmm. With the departure of the MVP from last season, Ottawa lose their stud in the jungle trickster, but Prod has done his best to fill those shoes. And I feel like importantly, Shibby, Ottawa hasn't lost their identity. Aggressive in the early game, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of these squads. And when we stack these rosters up against each other, it feels like the lanes can go either way. And when we're talking about getting locked in and ready to go for draft, a lot can be, I won't say decided, but the teams are certainly going to try to set themselves up for success here. Yeah, and Ottawa, to me, one of those rosters that every lane can or every role can kind of hard carry right prod yeah. can have a game where he just pops off on the lee sin gets like seven eight kills starts insecting people killian if left to his own devices right can really get things going blonde and levi we've seen carry games these are one of the few teams in the mec where i legitimately fear for every single lane right where yeah. i'm like oh God, this guy <laughs> has like a thousand gold lead wait a minute can he just take the game over i feel like they're the most you know Dr. Jekyll and Hyde kind of team where everyone can carry, but also everyone can just like kind of coin flip it sometimes and burger flip a little bit here as we do get into some of the bands right now. Nar Israel removed by Ottawa and Owen you there's the respect. There's the one you essentially have four bands if you play against Ottawa because one is designated to that rumble. The Belveth taken away from prod. We've seen a little bit of it here and there. Are they going to pinch the lease in out? Is, is it kind of? three bands only against ottawa i swear should be more and more teams are starting to ban that velvet against prod so ash get to be taken away as well should be uh we've been talking about it all season at this point in the meta is a lack of karma ban still markable it feels weird because i yeah. think you should mark it because if ottawa don't take it right they have to have an answer for it Right? Or if you're not a Karma team, or maybe teams have just gotten better at playing around the Karma, I still mm -hmm. think she's kind of busted, right? 
top lane, mid lane. I, I really don't like her in that support role anymore. And we are getting the volley bear with the changes that have come in. We got a little sneak peek of it in the OQs earlier this weekend. Volley bear was being played. There's a lot of cool different builds you can go. I've seen blue smite, sundered sky into tank where he's kind of just like a, a jet engine running at you because he's got the blue smite bush passive plus the Q movement speed. There's a lot of things going on. I've also yep. seen this like unending, unkillable tank folly bear where you mm -hmm. go like unending despair, frozen heart, typical tank stuff, and you kind of just become this big, massive uh, meatball of a champion. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's turbo busted at the moment, but I would need to see a couple more games from other people for me to get convinced that he's that good because the dive potential is so much. The lowering of his ult cooldown is the very key thing here because once laning phase was over you could maybe get two to three ultimates off similar to a nocturne where you could turn the turrets off and you can just get a dive going and i think you've got the perfect champion to pair it with a nico right in that mid lane yeah and is there a better team to pick volley bear than the ohio northern polar bears <laughs> uh, they just go right together it's really beautiful here we get gragas in vi locked in for ottawa in this top side of the map, I think is pretty much figured out. It looks like Killian going to be going for the Gragas over his favorite Kennen, I feel like, in a lot of these situations. But want to go something. I like the potential dishing, disengage flexibility of his ultimate to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Udir locked in for aggression up in the top lane. And it looks like King Julian is going to be taking up the mantle of the ONU mascot as Shibi. We're headed into the second phase of bands. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of AD carry, a lot of support bands coming out. The Lucian taking away Varys, another dominant AD carry in the meta here. We're going to get down to the lint pockets, right? We're going to go through <laughs> rummaging through the piggy bank, breaking some picks open. We're going to be like, wait, a lot of these AD carries are being taken out. <laughs> Levi still has a couple champions in his back pocket. Obviously, Kai and Cuz, no stranger to the AD carry pool. Callista being taken away as well. Wow. What do you have left? Misfortune? Maybe Jin? Smolder? Right? Uh, Smolder as well, right? Yeah, you could run a Smolder for O and U. Um, I think Ottawa's cool thing in there. Ah, uh, uh, you jinxed brutal. it. It's gone here. So now, now we're at like we said, the piggy bank, the lint pocket between the keep seat cushions of the couch. What are you digging here for AD carry, right? Because it's like Misfortune's available, Caitlyn Lux is available, Caitlyn Morgana wow. potentially, right? If you want to negate okay. the buy, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff, and I think. Kai's Caitlyn has been a force to be reckoned with, but I think the 180 carry that is actually able to deal with this champion is Levi. Yeah, absolutely. And the hyper carry of Felios to match the long range Shibby is going to get locked in. And I think this is Elio. something that, that complements the comp pretty, pretty well here. Uh, of course, you got to worry about yeah. oh, there's the Melio additional range and... Against the Lux, Shibby. We'll see it's locked in. Is this classic ONU? I feel like back in the day, they were probably the main proprietors of Caitlyn Lux technology. They even, they even, they even used to play a lot of Udyr back in the jungle. Right? Oh, yeah. ONU, one of, my, oh, yeah. one of the few teams that I loved watching them play uh, in the jungle. They've carried on that tradition. A big burly composition coming out from ONU. Very, very solid composition, right? You've got a big tanky front line with the Volley Bear, with the Udir. They can dive individuals like the TF, like the Phils, if they can reach mm -hmm. them. But then you've also got the hidden ability of Kato on this Nico to disguise themselves as a minion, to disguise themselves as something else here. I feel like the Nico Nocturne would have been a little bit better because you saw the TF being locked in. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a Nocturne, one of those champions that can disable TPs, that can make it really hard for the TF to play the game. But they opt in for this Volley Bear. It is one game in a best of three series. Might as well let it rock and see what you can do mm -hmm. with it. But this Caitlyn Lux, such a good matchup into the Filios Milio. It's on Plux to really be on point with those warm, hu warm hugs, with those shields to block a lot of the damage coming in so that Levi can at least trade some damage back. We'll mm -hmm. see what Prod ends up going, right? Because he can gank the mid lane with this TF. We can see a lot of action in that bot side. I don't think Killian's going to get a lot of help here into this Udir, which is rough because Gragas and Udir, yes, it's manageable, but we talked about Udir. What are those champions that can just wrestle lane control super easily and never give it up? A huge test awaits on the rift for both of these teams. Ottawa 
looking to try and stamp their way back into the top four conversation. The team that won the regular season just a year ago are fighting to remain at the top of the standings. ONU, the Polar Bears, the new kids on the block. Do they got ice in their veins? Summoners, welcome on to the rip for game number one of our second series on this fun Monday night of C-Lol action. It's the 2024 FEC season, and two of the top teams are about to square off on the rift. And I don't know about you, Mac, but I'm a guy that puts my money where my mouth is, and I'm betting 5,000 points <laughs> onto Ottawa Braves here because I think they could win this despite what we're seeing on the ONU side, despite what the record indicates and despite the recent performances, I think Ottawa Braves have got a little bit of fight in them. I think Levi and Plux can weather the storm here. It's up to Kai and Cuz to really lay the pressure on, really start whittling down those turret plates and putting Levi and Plux in a position where they hate to play the game. If yep. you give them any breathing room, if you give them any sort of leeway, they'll be fine and they'll be ready to carry these mid to late game team fights. Oh, Shibby's oh, got to Shibby's got to put, put his money bet. where his mouth is. We know it's a, it's necessary. We see those channel points getting dumped in. Everybody, just as a quick reminder, <laughs> if you want to spend uh, Twitch points on betting, uh, if you do have a gambling problem, this is our suggestion to get some help. <laughs> but hopefully, this is a fun little alternative for everyone. King Julian. The major in marketing, a sophomore looking to make some noise, has certainly got quite a brand for himself with the fans in the chat. As we get in onto game number one, Shibby, both junglers starting on the top side of the map. Yeah, King Julian, from an area I'm pretty familiar with, Sacramento, California. I don't know what he's doing all the way over in Ohio, but hey, I'm not going to judge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really cool area. Uh, I love it. I have family over there. It's really nice, but... Ottawa Braves, look what's happening to them already. Ohio Northern talked about putting the pressure on, putting the pedal to the metal. They've already stacked a full wave against them. They've already shoved Levi and Plux under the turret here. We'll see if this Volley Bear ends up fancying an invade onto Prod here. He does have a little bit better dueling oh. power. Is now blonde. Stunned up, and it's a whole lot of damage. The flash from Kato. Blonde gets away, and it's... A duel against the mid-jungle duos. Look at aggression, yeah. though, all the way from the top lane. Aggression has arrived. It's going to get spotted out on the ward, but oh! it's first blood going over to Prod. The Ottawa jungler comes in huge. Let's see if aggression can turn things around. Gold card to slow him down. The root there onto Prod, and he follow up CC. Aggression is only level two. Shibby doesn't have the stun, and Blonde's just going to keep on whipping those cards. At ONU is their force to back off. Nice adjustment from prod from wolves straight to mid lane here gets the flash interrupt onto julian and really well played from blonde to use the flash against kato's flash root here gets them that kill we saw what aggression can do right had that lane priority had the lane shoved under into killian here and was able to kind of come mid lane wasn't able to get too much but was able to stop potentially a disastrous double kill uh good from ottawa braves and really well played from this mid jungle duo i, I like i said I, I said Doubtful and Klexo are probably our best mid-jungle duo, but mm -hmm. Rod and Blonde are not far behind them, right? If It's 1A, 1B in my mind. And with a lot of swapping in the mid lane between Blonde and Riverside, it's kind of hard Ooh. to judge the, the, the Ottawa mid-jungle duo on a hard, <laughs> I feel like, kind of scale. Um, just because, you know, I, I feel like for both of them, they're in that upper echelon of, of tough mid laners to go up against, and Blonde even... I feel like notably last season played a lot of mages, but the mid lane meta, I think, this season potentially demands a little bit more of that. Yeah, you have a lot of strong mages right now, but potentially on this Twisted Fate AD, I believe, should be, uh, should be yep. fun to watch to see uh, if he's able to flex some of those auto-clicking skills. I know if he's going to be able to kite around on the TF, it's going to be a bit of a test. Yeah, I think Blonde's biggest strength, or at least one of his biggest strength, is his champion flexibility. As Prod is just going to come here to try to shove the wave in to allow Blonde for a reset. But Julian and Kato are not allowing that. He's dead! Oh my gosh, Blonde underneath the turret goes down, Prod. but Prod is able to punch back in answer. Shibby, 
I missed it. MEC action, baby. Two kills for Ottawa, one for ONU. The first five minutes have been exciting. And Prod is putting one leg at a time, seeing if the carry pants do fit right. He gets to get his belt buckle. He's got to get the socks on. He's got to figure out. He's 2-0 on the Vi right now. Let's see if he can start swinging the pace of the game into their favor. As right now, okay, it's fine. Flashes out. Was doing a little bit of an invade onto Julian's chickens here. I believe he did get something in return. Stole one of the big raptors. I don't know if this Vi TF can actually go toe to toe with Volley Nico. Let's see who secured it. I believe it was Prod who gets the scuttle as Blonde yep. looks for a gold card. And the mid jungle duo is just going to back off here. Shibby, top lane advantage for Ohio Northern Aggression, level six. They're going to be the ones to look for the grubs. Yeah, they are going to go look for these grubs while Aggression has that lane priority. This is what you can do. I like this. And Prod can't really trade, but they might want to fight this. Plux is here. They bring up their support. Oh, and you are not aware of the numbers advantage. The grubs are getting low. Number two is secured. Blonde activates the oh, they ultimate. Stole they stole one. Killian comes in. Blonde using the ultimate, isn't able to get the pick I think they were looking for, but Shibby, I think that works for Ottawa. Yeah, I mean, they did roam their support up. They had a little window for Plux to come in here, and they trade the Grubs two for one. That's fine, right? Four for two is the ideal split. So Ohio Northern, they want to try to push 5-1, and if they do, they might get collapsed on again. Blonde, really good usage of that ultimate to give them vision, to give them the, the window to say, hey, you guys can go in right now. We have the numbers advantage. Lux is nowhere in sight. They're able to get that kill onto Julian and set him back a little bit. Julian has been all kills for Prod, by the way. Prod has just farmed this volume. <laughs> and we thought global warming was an issue. No one's talking yeah. about Prod at all. He's <laughs> just flying under the radar. But he's, we're watching you. We're seeing you in those uh, trickster pants. Uh, seemed to look pretty good on him as Ottawa up a little bit of gold in the early game. They're looking to make things work. And honestly, for uh, the Levi Plux duo going up against Kai's signature Caitlyn, I'd say they're not doing too half bad. Only losing one plate so far. Still got about six and a half minutes left, though, of uh, potential plates for Kai to try and pick up. Oh, and you going for Dragon. Yeah, they do have that 2-1 Grub split, so it's going to be a little bit more pressure for Kai and Cuz, or a little bit more pressure they can put on, at least. Uh, but like you said, Levi and Plex not doing too bad, right? They're down, what, about 14, 15, 13, 14 CS, down a plate like you mentioned, but all things considered, could be a lot worse, right? Yeah. I've seen a lot worse when facing this Caitlyn Lux lane, so... Levi and Plex knew what they were doing. They, they Level 6 saw Levi? The Lux. Levi might just go in on Cuz. Red and white, it's time to fight. Flashing over the wall, is it going to keep you safe? Kai Prod is coming in and looking for more damage. Levi, use the Moonlight Vigil, but can't keep the fight going. Looks like they're just going to try and shove in the wave. I don't think they're going to be able to dive underneath the turret here, Shibby. It's going to be close. Oh, no, no, not at all. But they did get a lot of summoner spells out of this bot lane, although Killian is in a bit of a tricky situation. They do want to dive this. Volley Bear's on the top side here. It might be a top dive for a bottom dive. They have Julian's to Julian's got Prod, the ultimate. Yeah, Prod has to know that Volley Bear's on this top side here. Oh, Killian flashed. Oh, Killian. Not in a good position at all. This is easy territory for the Volley. Oh, no. Disabling the turret. Yeah, easy money. <laughs> Look at Bot lane. Look at Bot lane. Blonde and Prod are going to respond in kind, though. They're coming to bring the house down. Kato does have teleport available. Where is Kato on the map? I I don't see him. Is he disguised somewhere? Where is this little Nico? He's right there. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's always oh, blood. Oh, wait, can he pull it? I can't believe it. Oh, Kato trying to be sneaky. They, they can't pull off the dive. They, they, they stave off the dive because Kato's missing. He's not in the mid lane. He's a little minion right now. And so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really well played from Ohio Northern to get that dive off, turn the turret off, and mm -hmm. really punish Killian flashless there. Really well played. I like that from Ohio Northern, right? They don't allow...
for the get back between Prod and Blonde on this bottom lane. Yeah, kind of ideal situation, right? They're able to kind of stifle Ottawa's play on the bot side and able to get some get some money back their way. They're still hoping for that five to one split, even though they can't it's get two void mites. Rift, uh, the second set of void grubs is spawning and they're going to hope to try and cash in aggression with a level lead. A bit of an item lead as well. Got, got the chain, got the chain vest. Already Prod looking to secure. He's looking for the split shippy. Can he He's get it? Minion. Smite secure. Does go over to Prod. The rest of Ottawa go back. Blonde looking for the d bot dive. A lot of damage on to Kai. Levi picks up the kill. The teleport coming in. It's Kato looking for damage. A huge pot Split. blossom into the bot lane. But the stun comes through. Blonde trying to keep the rest of the team alive. Plex goes down. But is it going to be a worthwhile trade? Blonde with the gold card Aww. setting up Levi. That's what we call a good teammate. What a homie. Blonde could have easily taken that. Gives it over to Levi. Let's him get up 2-0 there on the Affiliates. And if Kato had a little bit more mana, he probably turns that around. He got the double Pop Blossom onto Levi, onto Plux. But it just wasn't there. The damage was not there. A really good gold card from Blonde there. Kind of stopped it out as now Blonde is going to be relegated to pushing this bot side here with that TF. And Merc Tread is going to provide so much value here, right? into the Nico, yep. into the Lux, into the Volley Bear, some would say, right, with the stuns and everything, as you do get a flash of the gold. Top lane, relatively even 300 gold for aggression. Jungle actually going in the favor of Julian here, despite giving a ton of kills over, despite at one point being down in farm. But the real disparity right now is in that mid lane. Tia, 600 gold ahead. Blonde, the highest gold member team, or player on the on the rift right now because of that gold card passive or because of the tf passive and his ability in roaming and getting everywhere on the map the guy has four assists almost 100 percent kill participation i mean in this match a, a team player in the truest sense the next dragon is going to be on the map in just under a minute oh and you with the first drake slight void grub lead but ottawa i think okay with how this early game has gone so far, Kai uh, is not ahead on this Caitlyn. Levi 2-0 matches the first completed item. It's lethality, Caitlyn going the collector and Shibby got to gear up and get ready to go. We might get a fight around the dragon. Blonde able to use a gold card, get out, but Prod looking for the engage. Kato, which one's the real one, Shibby? It's a hard guessing game. I feel like Ottawa can just give this away. I don't want to see them throw away this small gold lead they have because of a second dragon, right? Especially when you have champions like TF, champions like Aphilios who need a little bit more gold right now, right? Levi still needs probably another item before he feels like he can kind of carry these fights. Blonde is still sitting on components. Is now prod. So much engage aggression looking in. Levi is safe though. Plux is the first to fall. The support is down. Levi shut down and that is when you taking a huge fight should be playing beautifully around vision yeah just sneaking into that tri bush that is theirs waiting for somebody to kind of try to clear that pixel brush ward or that tiny one little bush here is blonde and the rest of the ottawa braves should just let this dragon go like i said i don't want to throw the game away here they did lose two of their members levi and plux it's sad that Ottawa can't really get anything back, right? They can't shove top lane in. They didn't shove these waves in. They didn't really yep. get any turret plates or anything like that. They kind of just lost two members and were like, well, do we contest this? Do we not? I feel like at that moment, you give up all hope of trying to do anything around that dragon and just start shoving waves as fast as possible. Make Ohio Northern miss something despite getting those two kills. Killian, meanwhile, going to try to freeze this top wave ahead of the Rift Herald spawning. Prod and Flux heading up to try and contest the objective that could help get some gold into the back pockets of Ottawa. But Rift Herald comes up after plating. It's not as much immediate gold, but could try to sequence some towers together. It's they got the fight. numbers advantage with Blonde coming in, stunning up Julian. Here comes the CC chain, Shibby. Assault oh and battery on top of everything. It is a beautiful sequence watching the Braves fire on all oh, cylinders, and, and I believe the objective's going to be theirs. Yeah, the Rift Herald should be theirs, and Levi gets a lot of alone time with this turret on the bot side. Might be able to just pick it up, like we said. First turret is theirs, and they might catch Cuz. Another potential gold card from Blonde could do it, but instead, 
They're going to get that pick with that TF roam, the numbers advantage. I like how Ottawa's playing it, right? They are being unfair. They are throwing pocket sand in your face. They've got the brass knuckles ready to go. They are not allowing Ohio Northern to take fair fights. Oh my gosh, somehow Julian is given enough time Guys, to come him. back up to this objective. Prod's going low and Prod goes down. Julian is the one that secures Rift Herald for Ohio Northern, but Levi is taking the fight in the mid lane, Shibby. Ottawa looking to push underneath the turret. Flash gold card connects. Levi, a lot of Chakram just disappeared. Pop Blossom going to CC him up, and Julian is here to apply the truest bear slap down. Levi somehow turns it around for a double kill of his own. Oh, and you and Ottawa continue to go back and forth here at the 15 and a half minute mark. Shibby, both teams are neck and neck. Yeah, trade of kills. And I'm just surprised that Ottawa decided to leave Prod by himself. Help your jungler finish the Herald, guys. You got the kill onto Julian. Just get the secure, help him out, put a little bit more DPS on there. Just a big blunder and aggression ends up picking up that Rift Herald for Ohio Northern after Julian ended up taking that smite away. Really well played from Ohio Northern to not stop on the play, but also Ottawa to just kind of think it was free when it wasn't and underestimating Prod's damage. Yeah, it's kind of one of those moves where the chess.com algorithm will kind of roast you a little bit, but <laughs> Ottawa still very much in this one. Eight kills to nine, less than a thousand gold. Again, both teams neck and neck. It will be critical how ONU utilizes the Rift Herald can either maybe open up mid lane or save it for this next dragon that's coming up that would put ONU at soul point. Yeah, and I love how Ohio Northern is kind of using this Caitlyn and Kai. The prototypical take Caitlyn that we'll see is something like Lethal Tempo or Fleet Footwork, but this is more of that one-shot Barrett 50 cal kind of Caitlyn <laughs> where she just takes a pop shot at you with the ultimate. She's got first strike, she's got lethality. If she hits somebody like Levi, like Plux, or even Blonde, their HP half bars health. are going down <laughs> half. Yeah, it's half health, right? Almost. And you take them out. It's like a giant big cooldown that you can use before dragons, before some of these objectives. And by the time, you know, they're healed up and everything, this Caitlyn ult's almost back up, right? It's more than halfway up after he just used it onto Levi. Pretty sure she's going to get one or two more uses out of it before this dragon comes up. And, and I like how Kai is playing this Caitlyn, understands that he just needs to chunk out one of the two carries on Ottawa Braves. Yep. Difficult coming minutes for the Ottawa squad. Wild down, certainly not out, and the gold lead actually exactly even or just about only uh, less than 100 gold or out thereof uh, separated these two teams. Killian's actually, this big wave is going to come in for a little bit of a difference, and ah, Ottawa takes the gold lead. It's... A really fun match we have on our hands. The second series of this Monday night delivering on the hype. Two top teams facing off. Levi, this ADC for Ottawa, we've been such big fans of in his senior year. Looking to put the pieces together. Ottawa in the finals last season. Let's see if they make this engage happen. Should be stunned onto aggression. The Udyr able to back off. They got a lot of long range threats. There's oh, East in the hole. Levi blocked out. Shout out Killian. They got team members for Ottawa. Everybody's pitching in to defend their star. Oh, the Rift Trail does get dropped by Ohio Northern. And somebody's going to have to answer this. We do get Twitch chat coming in here. Just a little <laughs> bit. What's going to happen? The turret doesn't go down. Do this. Ottawa take this fight. Prod dancing around all the abilities beautifully. Whoa! Levi's in the back. A huge Moonlight Vigil. Kai goes down. Aggression can't get on. Look, Look at blonde. Levi. One after another. Gravitum slowing and bringing everybody back down to earth as Ottawa take a beautiful fight, Shibby. Uh, Killian and Prod dodged everything. How is that even possible? I mean, they've just got the moves. Right now, it's not done. The fight. Aggression underneath the turret. Look at that shield. It's going to buy a lot of time for the rest of the team, but Levi is powered up and ready to go. Two tower shots going to force him to back away. Kai is down. Final spark is used. Levi is safe. Ottawa, though, not going to look for this dragon again. Shibby, Ottawa has windows of opportunity here, but in these close games, in these close moments, when you win those fights, you got to be able to take advantage, and that is not what Ottawa is doing. Yeah, I, I feel like they were looking for kind of that full ace, the tower, and the dragon. They wanted everything rather than just taking what they could get. And because of that, the reset timers are messed up. 
Blonde hasn't backed right. He's got... He's sitting on quite a bit of gold right now. He definitely wants to potentially build towards that rapid fire cannon or static shift, whatever he's as going in his pocket. But now he's got to fight while the rest of Ohio Northern were able to cash out and get a little bit more powerful. Ottawa Braves might not have the power to take this fight. Big ultimate from Cuz there to zone everybody away. And Shibby, Ottawa does not have the cooldowns to look for this objective, so they just back off. No ultimate for Prod, Blonde, Levi, Plux, or members without big abilities. They can't look for the fight. Ooh, Kato. Nice. At least force that cleanse out. And yeah, Ohio Northern taking advantage of uh, Ottawa Braves. Just kind of sleeping on the wheel after those two kills. They got the good team fight, but like we mentioned, they just didn't take what they wanted or what was given to them. And so they're going to lose so much more here. Low health bars. Nobody's back. They're going to get dragon. They're going to get tier two for themselves. Ohio Northern might just snowball this into a Baron. Wow. Killian goes down on the back half of this major play from ONU. They secure soul point. They are one dragon away from the Chemtech soul. Classic Whoa. prod going in, flashing for Kai. He wants the kill, but he doesn't have the follow-up. He has to back away, and that might have been a mistake. Now Kai is caught vulnerable. Big ultimate plugs trying to keep his star ADC alive. The chakrams are coming out. Aggression's taking a bunch of damage, and it's a huge shutdown for Levi. As that play looked a little sussy for Ottawa at the start, but they're able to kite back and make it work. Prod only goes one way, and it's <laughs> right. He, he he doesn't know how to retreat. He doesn't know how to leave. The white flag is not a term in his dictionary, in his lexicon. No. As Prod on this vibe, playing it to its full extent, Sundered Sky into the Black Lever to try to shred the armor that Julian and Aggression have been stacking. Right, because Killian is just not that big AP threat that we usually think of as Agragas. He went for more like beefy, bulky Gragas with the Rod of Ages. It looks like he's trending towards that uh, Seraph's Embrace as well. He's going for a little bit beefier, tankier version. So the AP damage, the magic damage threat that normally Ohio Northern would need to face is on a bit of delay so they can stack some of that armor and really kind of negate what Blonde and Levi are trying to do. It's one issue to deal with one AD carry, but to deal with mm -hmm. two is a whole nother problem. But Ohio Northern seem to have found the answer. Just frozen art, guys. Just play that frozen art. They can't kill us if they can't attack us fast. It's <laughs> it's math. It, it checks oh out. But you do have to deal with some pretty strong AD carry threats. Blonde has got the rapid fire cannon. It's my favorite item on Twisted Fate. Levi gets chunked out quite a bit. We wonder if there's going to be some life steal in his future because uh, those Kai ultimates hurts and then it's and then it's cuz firing again they're just gonna ult you from across them we didn't even see Levi get hit take a look at his health bar it's below half off of those two abilities but look at aggression potentially caught out here CC immune not for long gonna get stunned up explosive cask is available if he's gonna be running away killing oh my gosh he's gonna be able to do it Killian did not use the Gracchus ultimate in aggression. How does he do it, Jimmy? He gets out. That's crazy. Blonde now in a bit of danger. I think he's going to be able to walk out of here because might have a different conversation to have. He's going to try to ghost. Gold card. See you later. Oh, nice. Both of them using some fancy feet and some footwork. Ghost being used by aggression and blonde equally here on different sides of the map. As the ultimate does come down, they're going to try to go into Kuz. Blonde, one card oh! after another. Oh, he flies out! Oh, 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 oh no! Levi, no! Oh, Ottawa fans are seething as a shutdown on to Levi is huge for Ohio Northern. The ADC threat does go down. They don't have a good Baron team at this moment, but that was hard to watch. Aggression's going to keep looking for this fight. Should be, but I think it's pretty much over. What? a play what a <laughs> blunder from blonde i mean didn't believe in his own heart of the cards yugi would be disappointed blonde yugi would be disappointed flashed in for that extra auto just did not believe ends up tanking the tower shot dies and then levi gets tp'd on kato coming in with the pop plus and catches him out and what looked like a net positive for ottawa actually swings into the favor of ohio northern this game is so neck and neck. I don't think the gold lead has budged 
more than about 800. I don't think I've seen a 1,000 gold lead from either of these teams. A close mid game <laughs> as Yuki, sad eyes. That's hilarious. Is Dragon spawning in 20 seconds, Shippy. This is soul point for Ohio Northern. They get this objective. They get the Chemtech soul, but they also could maybe look for a Baron angle. Ottawa's the ones in control of the river. Yeah, and Ottawa have to contest this dragon, right? They don't have an option. It's Chemtech Soul. Shields could be disgusting with the Lux, with the Volley Bear, with the Udia, right? If you get that just walk in. Oomph, yeah, it becomes harder to contest this team and harder to kill them, especially with how tanky they are. Prod is just walking forward like a madman. He has nothing to fear right now. Shibby, all eyes on Levi in the back line. The Ottawa ADC, it Watch all Kato. relies on him. Kato looking for the flank angle for the Pop Blossom. Does not have flash available. A lot of damage there on to Killian. Levi's still safe. Prod looking for the engage. Moonlight Vigil into the back line. Kai knocked away. The damage is still coming through. It's going to come Levi down to the carries though? as Dragon gets low. The objective going to be secured. Ohio Northern get Dragon Soul. And they look to keep the fight going. Flashes away though. They maybe want to look for Baron here, Shibby. The comms are on point. Ohio Northern move as one on the map and they're looking for baron yeah prod does have to back here no oh they oh. just get killed double pop blossom bada bing bada boom baby ohio northern are taking over oh and levi's caught out as well oh my god oh kai flashes over kai look at these bloodthirsty in this match it might Come to regret. Oh no, the shield from Lux. Is he gonna get out of there? An ace for OAU. Call that man Twinkle Toes the way he <laughs> moving and schmoving and grooving, Mac. Kai with the elite footwork absolutely jukes Prod out of his boots. Ohio Northern with an insane sequence. You gotta sell Merc Treads at that point. You can't have boots anymore. I'm sorry, Prod. That's just how that's how it works. Your ankles are swollen. They're not fitting in there. Anyway, O and you, they've got the soul. They play. They get the A. It was a clean ace. I don't think they lost anybody, Shibby. And now the king, the crowned man, Julian, looking for more. One bear slap after another. The huge explosive cone. Gonna send Plux and Julian hurtling different directions as O and you prep for Baron. Ooh, and does Ottawa Braves look to fight this, right? They don't really have a choice. The TP's coming in from Killian, and Plux is already half health. The man does not have much <laughs> health to work with here. Can O and you stave this off? There's oh so my much God. Plux. Oh, a kill for Kai the Snipe from downtown. Oh my goodness, he gets a kill there as ONU look to back off the objective. They're looking a little D6 here, dead. but Kato's got a kill on the backside. We didn't even see that one coming. Levi, the king of ADCs, goes down. The Aphelios has been completely neutralized, and Ohio Northern have four kills. Uh, Shibby, they are taking over here in game number one. They're on Baron now. Rod looking to try to steal this. I think he knows he can't do anything, right? Aggression playing the bouncer, playing the bully. They're not even going to let him back. Prod can't You're out do of the club. anything. He's out. out. He's not even, he got kicked into the alley. He's not even allowed near the club right now. He's got to go to the bar across the street. Like that's, that's what aggression is corralling him <laughs> into. I don't even think they're going to let the man live. No, no, you don't get to walk away. Coming into the club like that, we saw how you treated some of the bartenders, punching everybody around. <laughs> We're not having any of that. Oh, and you, the way they played around that dragon, wow, beautiful gameplay there, and then setting themselves up for success, playing around Baron. Uh, Kato, I... We didn't get to see that pick there on to Levi, but taking him out of the Baron fight completely is huge. And oh, and you, they, they knew what they were hoping to do with this composition and they're making it work really well. I mean, Kato's pop blossoms have been phenomenal, right? Two three man pop blossoms onto the right targets as Kai drops another ultimate. And I believe, I don't even know who that was on. 
Got quite a bit of damage. His blonde is just gonna die. Aggression's just gonna walk him down. The damage from Cuz as well. He's gonna try to take the oh. ultimate out. Barely escapes. Wow. Close. Close. But no cigar for blonde here. He's gonna live. Ohio Northern in the blink of an eye have jettisoned themselves. 7,000 gold in a matter of three minutes, right? The dragon sequence, the baron sequence, and now they're just sieging on all the turrets. What does Prod do here? He's trying to look for a fight, Shibby, but I don't think it's going to work. The shielding from Cuz's Lux is doing so much work. He's going full AP, but he's still supporting the team super, super well. 5-1-15, and 15, by the way. 20 out of 25 kills participated on... The Baron power push begins as mid lane is sieged, bot lane is sieged, and ONU look to crack open the base. Oh, Levi is pumping out quite a bit of damage. Blonde he is just going to back off here. Three item Levi can do something. The game goes late enough, Levi might have a chance here, but he's just getting everything thrown at him. Flash stuns, ultimates, the whole nine yards. Moonlight Vigil misses as two inhibitors Go down for Ohio Northern. They extend the gold lead to 10,000 Shibby. And uh, they're going to be backing off Elder Dragon spawns in 45 seconds. I'm going to see if Ottawa can maybe look to interrupt some of these backs, potentially. We do see Killian <laughs> looking for something. But realistically, Ottawa have to shove this mid lane, this bottom lane out as much as possible. Set up for a potential dragon fight here. And Cuz, not even worried, didn't even take that much damage. This AP Greg is just not there especially on top of what is that Chemtech Soul that gives you 50% damage, or sorry, 11% extra damage reduction when you're below 50% health, and 11% mm -hmm. increased damage when you're below 50% health. That's off a the lot. Dome? That's off the dome. Off the dome. Wow. Uh, you just gotta you. know these things. You're yeah. elite. I can't I know. believe it. Look at you no, go. I know some things. I know a couple you things know, so here. We've been around the block just a little <laughs> bit as ONU. Familiar territory, it feels like, for them this season. Closing out at least looking to another dub, another ultimate. Levi goes to below 50% HP. <laughs> Julian turns on the thrusters. He's looking for the engage. Cuz is ultimate about to follow up. Oh, Prod going to make sure it doesn't happen. Prod trying to get onto the support, but he can't uh, quite do it. The rest of the squad is here to protect. Elder wait, Dragon is wait. being attempted by the wait. Ottawa Braves, but is huh? it going to be too late? They got to worry about the base. They got to worry about the Nexus turrets. Elder Dragon may have been claimed. Plot is coming, but it is too late. The game is over. The Elder Dragon don't matter when that Nexus explodes. Ohio Northern after... Just what a mid game of team fighting perfection they take our first match. Huh? Huh? Crazy. That was wild. Elder <laughs> trade for Nexus? I don't know where you went to school. What economics <laughs> class you're taking? You'll see a financial expert right now, Mac. Because Elder Dragon <laughs> for Nexus is not the trade that anyone would commence there. Is the math uh, not right on here? I don't I, to... I, I, I mean... I don't... I don't... It's not adding up. I just saw a throw in the LPL literally not too long ago. Literally today. Or today. Top Esports ended up <laughs> trading Baron against FPX for the Nexus. But we got one even sweeter in the MEC. The Elder Dragon... Or Nexus. I, I don't even... It's the Hail Mary. It's the Hail Mary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't hate the call because you're down 10,000 gold, right? If Prod gets mm -hmm. that kill onto Lux, maybe there's a world where they could potentially finish the Elder back in time. Levi and Plux can and potentially defend the base there because Levi is mm -hmm. so strong. It's not that bad. I think in hindsight, the top esports one was worse. I get the play. I get the call just was not there, right? Not enough damage. The Elder Dragon did not go down fast enough. And unfortunately, Levi and Plux didn't have summoners to work with. So when they tried to defend under the two Nexus Towers, Violet Bear just turns them off and you can't really do anything about it, right? You just die immediately. Um, that game went from really, really close to completely out of view for Ottawa in the matter of minutes, right? It was the yeah. Dragon play. It was the Baron. 
But really specifically, I think we can kind of look back to two key moments. Uh, one was that Rift Herald play where they didn't help Prod finish it and they lost the momentum there. They didn't have the Rift Herald to then drop onto the tier one turret for that third dragon, which allowed Owen Yu to then drop it, take the turret and take the dragon. But also that third dragon fight where Ottawa won didn't take that dragon, instead stuck around for more kills and allowed yeah. Owen Yu to stack that to the fourth, right? Those were the two big moments. Yep. Ottawa, a lot to think on. It's a best of three series. That's what we love, not best of one round, Robin. We got a few more games in the queue. You won't want to miss it. Shibby, if you want to see these MEC players live and experience the MEC action for yourself, I'm just enjoying it here, but you could do it in person. Come join us for the MEC finals at Unified Gaming Fan Fest in Illinois College. Uh, on April 6th and 7th, use command in the chat exclamation point spring championship and follow the link to get your tickets to join us there. We're going to be getting ready for game number two here. Don't click out of that browser. We'll be back with more MEC action. So first question, I'll start off with the, for lands, I mean, not your first land, of course, but what gets you most excited about coming to these events uh, uh, offline? I just love traveling. I think yeah. traveling is a lot of fun. You get to do a lot of stuff. Like yeah. we went out to dim sum last night in the city of Chicago. That was pretty sweet as a team. So Wait, where'd you go? I don't know. No, <laughs> I don't know the place. There's so many good dim sum places. I, I don't right? know the place. Yeah. Ken took us there and it was really uh, good. Okay. So, I mean. Uh, doing stuff like that with the team is a really good time. Other than that, obviously playing in person, I, I prefer compared to playing online. It feels a little more, um, what's the word? Intimate. Yeah, a it's more intimate. Intimate. absolutely. Sure. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, we got you on the dev team, okay, for Riot Games. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, before you get the axe, uh, you've got one day to bring in a new character to League of Legends. Whether it's real person, fake, like non-fiction, whatever, what character are you bringing into the roster? Uh, King Julian from Madagascar. It's got to be the lemur. The lemur, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, get yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen to do the voice again. <laughs> that would be so. Uh, cool. Yeah, I gotta get that one. I mean, that's what my name's yeah. after, so I have to do that one. Okay, so like, what's like, what's the old? What's the what's defining the part of the kid? He sends out Maurice, like Annie. You know, like Maurice comes, <laughs> Another messes summon? him up. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, but he has Mort and Marie, so it's like two. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you alternate. And then after that, I would put the hammer on Hamster Boy and ban him. Okay. Yep. Yep, honestly, respect. The uh, final question then is, uh, out of everybody on ONU, mm -hmm. uh, who is most likely to go viral and why? Like, what's showing up on the podium page? And uh, what's... Uh... I think it's probably Kaden, Kato, uh, yeah. uh, for making it OnlyFans, probably. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, nice. I think, well, I think you, that's probably it's it. It's for the brain. It's gotta be. It's for the brain. It's for the, we've, we've talked about it. We've talked about it. There have been some talks. Maybe. We'll see. You gotta pay the bill somehow. Absolutely. We'll, uh, no this land is not paying itself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, appreciate it. Good luck in the games, Thank right? you. Yeah.
Hello and welcome back everyone. We are continuing our coverage of the final night of week number four here in the 2024 MEC C-LOL season in We Got a Doozy Shippy. My name is Mac Dewey. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our second series in our Monday night doubleheader. Two of the top teams, Ottawa Braves and Ohio Northern, gave us a great first game. Yeah, I think for roughly about 23 minutes or so it was very very competitive and then ohio northern just kind of won fight after fight after fight objective mm -hmm. after objective and kind of just took over the game um ottawa with that last ditch like you said hail mary of a play going for mm -hmm. the elder leaving three people there to try to defend this is the thing right the thing about genius is if it works he's heralded a hero a mastermind if it doesn't work, you look like an idiot. So I think if Ottawa and them, if they take that elder, turn the game around and win the game, we would be heralding them as like a genius call. And I think yeah. realistically, yeah. I, I, I don't hate it. I think it was a trade and it was a trade that happened. But realistically, I think Ohio Northern would have won that game regardless because they were so far ahead. If they didn't end up ending the game there, they would have just taken all three inhibitors, gone back to the elder dragon. Ottawa couldn't do anything. Prod would have to do go for like a, miracle steal um mm -hmm. but yeah very very competitive from both of these guys up until like the 24 minute mark i think the big thing for ottawa like we mentioned uh, uh after the game before the break is that they just did not capitalize on some of those free objectives they could have taken after winning fights right harold and that mm -hmm. third dragon is what come to mind the most i think if they clean that up they're in a much better position in that game to kind of win because they have a dragon under their belt. They can solve the game a little bit more. They have Rift Herald, so on and so forth. And they allow Levi to get that much further ahead and potentially carry these fights. Yeah, I think you pointed out a few key moments around some of the big objectives. But also, if we think about earlier on in the game, Prod staying late to try to make plays work. I'm thinking about the time early on. They try to set up a bot lane dive. They bring Blonde in from the mid lane while Killian's getting... 2v1 dumpstered up in the top lane and it's easy plays for ONU whereas Ottawa are trying to respond in with that with harder plays that did not end up going their favor so it'll be interesting to see how they adapt here in game number two are they going to switch up the draft are they going to keep things similar Killian I think is a, a big piece of that puzzle to try and figure out if you're Ottawa usually we see him as the later season gets going. He's opting for more of these team fight champions. And the Gragas, I think I, I kind of see where it was going in, into the Udir. Udir, not a lot of mobility, can potentially be caught by the Gragas pretty easily, but they never really took advantage of that. Yeah, uh, I feel like I want to see Killian on something a little bit more very orientated, right? Mm -hmm. I get why you picked the Gragas, right? You've got Twisted Fate. You've got Aphelios. You provide some much needed peel the explosive uh, cast can just kind of disrupt a team and spread them kind of apart and allows allows ottawa to kind of pick and prod them away we do get the side switch ah. coming in so ohio northern are on the blue side here and they are still gonna ban the same champions <laughs> you got to. as well yeah i don't think it's a champion issue right i don't think necessarily one champion from ohio northern did it right like the volley bear mm -hmm. For what it was worth, yeah, I got one dive off in the top side. It was pretty good, but you can flash stun on a handful of champions, right? It doesn't have to be Volley Bear. It could be flash stun literally any CC champion in the game, right? Anyone that has like a point and click easy kind of stun. So like you slot that out. You don't need to really ban the Volley Bear. You could argue that Udir was a problem for Killian and the fact that Killian can't kind of get his lane pressure going and some of that more carry oriented play style, removing that from aggression opens up the top lane pool a lot more and you now you have to really test can aggression dig deep into his pockets the volley bear how <laughs> northern prioritizing it once again and this might be a flex pick as well right we could see it piloted for aggression in the top lane i would put the tally on but at this point i don't I, is i've been Nico working Nalkin. on i've been working i've been working on this all season shibby nico Nalkin here we so go wow it gets locked in Crystal ball coming through for game number two here. Shibby, why don't you break down this combo? I mean, it's it's bread and butter, right? It's literally the most bread and butter you can get. It's that nice Saturday butter morning jelly? toast. 
with the <laughs> Irish butter, right? The European butter. That's how that's how well these two go together. You turn the lights off. You mask the Nico. You get her into a disguised minion, wolf, ward, whatever, and she can just old and kind of change <laughs> plant. Yeah, you could really world's your oyster here. The Azir being taken for Ohio Northern here, and Mac. Do I have a surprise for you? We have oh, been seeing some tank so Azir surprised. recently. No. Yeah. It, Stop. No, I'm serious. Grasp Azir is rearing its head. LCK played it not too long ago. It's been infesting OQs. You go tank, <laughs> infesting. you go Leandries. Infesting. Infesting. 100%. Oh, if you know my position, I think it's a disease of a playstyle and build. You go Leandries. You go Abyssal Mask, you go Frozen Heart, and he still does Frozen damage, Heart? and somehow he's really tanky. Yeah, it's kind of disgusting, it's kind of <laughs> wacky, but it works for whatever reason. And if Kato plays it, I will be removing some of my like <laughs> attributes from you, Kato. I will just say that. I, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't in good conscience support a man that no. plays Tank Azir. Well, let's see. Ottawa Braves setting themselves up for what... What I'll say is kind of a spicy draft should be. I think they're cooking. Varus, Varus? Red 3 into banning some of the really good ADCs. I've, are we going to see a Caitlyn ban maybe pop up here? They're worried about mm -hmm. the potential Zaya ultimate Featherstorm really good into Nocturne. Sure, you can poke in the early game with Caitlyn Lux all you want, but it's all fun in games until Prod turns off the lights and then the nightmares start. Yeah, and then Levi can really deal with that long range because... In this kind of matchup, you would just kind of go poke Varus, right? If they do mm -hmm. lock in what would be a Caitlyn Lux here. Oh, and you banning some of the supports that really pair up well with the Varus. Nautilus, Karma uh, here would kind of deny that poke lane a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, what does Ohio Northern do, right? They could go for more poke. They could go for something uh, uh, more poke support orientated, like potentially the Lux for themselves. They could also go for something more tank orientated. Although the Scion for Killian would be interesting. I feel like this Maokai is going into the support role. Um, Owen, you beefy composition so far, and the Scion does get locked in for Killian. I am just imagining the comms. I feel like there needs to be a big red button in the room that says engage and everyone's just <laughs> got to go in. It's actually pretty. I feel like the big red Ooh. button's just prods ultimate. Sivir going to be locked in. This is nasty. To you, A, get the spell shield, which is huge. Potentially avoid the pop blossom, maybe, or even like Scion ultimate. And uh, oh, and you, what are they going to go for? There's no way. Probably Maokai support, we were thinking. Yeah. Aatrox? Wow. Aggression. The spicy pick up top. Yeah, so that is a Maokai support paired up with the Sivir. Volibear once again going into that jungle, into Julian hands. Mm -hmm. And now we have support counter pick here. And well, that was fine. It, it kind of fundamentally counters what Owen you want to do. Because you look at their team composition... It's Sivir, he runs at you, or she runs at you, presses the ultimate, it's Volibear, Maokai, it's really what? scary, but okay. instead, they're going to pair it up with the Alistar. I like that, right? Because if Volibear is running at you, you can headbutt him away, and now he's out 2,000 yards into the distance, <laughs> well away from Levi, well away from the team. Also provides another dive buddy for this Ottawa Braves composition. How terrifying is it, Mac? When the lights go off, the train sounds go on, and then you got to worry about Nico coming in from another angle. That is, that's like those tornado alarms when you're stuck underground. That's what's happening. The tornado Ottawa, trail you, from school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Ottawa Braves are channeling pure Midwest mayhem here. Absolute hornet. It's, it's close to home. Rift. <laughs> it's, 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 it's really close it's really close it's so scary right like it's actually not fun to play against this comp if you're Kai <laughs> if you're Kato even if you're aggression here like you are fearing for your life when Nocturne presses that paranoia button luckily mm -hmm. they do have Maokai one of if not the best champion in my mind for that peel right throws yep. down the ultimate catches everybody off can desync some of that uh um dive that Ottawa has here with mm -hmm. that Nocturne, with that Nico. 
but he's got to be on point. The moment the lights go off, they've got to be ready here. Kai is probably going to be popping ult on cooldown as well. This is mm -hmm. a very kite back composition from Ohio Northern. They would like to strike after Ottawa has used all their buttons. Yep. Yep. Let the let the tornado come. ONU going to try to survive the storm. They're used to the northern winter. Let's see if they can pull it off. They are going for perfection here. They haven't lost all season long. Let's see if they can keep the streak going, Shibby, as summoners. Welcome on to the Rift for game number two of our Titanic Monday night matchup. Ohio Northern University up 1-0 in our best of three series. The Ottawa Braves trying to give us a game three. Can we get two game threes in one night, Shibby? Are we that lucky? Let's find out. Well... Just like I don't know when to quit, I've bet my last 900 points on Ottawa. Ah. <laughs> 5,000 in game one. I'm going, I'm going for broken game two, Ottawa. Don't let me down. You've got a cool, crafty composition here. Can you execute is the question. Oh my gosh, he's got grass of them dying. He's got grass yeah. of them dying, Shibby. Oh my god, get uh. away! Why? <laughs> Why, Mac, if this is your first time seeing it, it is. I apologize. I, it, is, <laughs> it is disgusting. It is absolutely vile what Tank uh, Azir does. I think it's worse than Tank Katarina way back when. Wow, bold. Quick question. Do the Azir soldiers proc Grasp of Undying? Yes. I, they yes. do? Yes. Really? Yes. Watch this. Who yep. allowed? Look, just... Who? Who allowed that? <laughs> Am you freak? I'm just probably not him. It was probably something implemented way back, and nobody yeah. really ever thought that this interaction yeah. would be used yeah. because of the, <laughs> the, I guess the the negative consequence you get of using ranged on grasp. Right. But the Why thing is, would Azir can just Azir can just proc it constantly. He procs it so much that the 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 consequence of the grasp is not actually felt. Right. He just gets so much. I think at yep. one point. You can get like blonde was saying you can get 129 stacks of grasp at like 18 minutes if you're good enough with it like it's it's not that hard to wow. really get it going and kato on this azir is so safe level two first for the ottawa bot lane ghosts popped as the adcs try to kite away killian meanwhile gets dragged back in and kato our exercise physiolo physiology major uh he's run the numbers he's performing at his absolute peak here with the Azir Grasp of the Undying build. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to get Grasp, grasp stacks, check-ins when we can later into the game. Right now, oh, there it was. Crazy. I saw it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> t 10 minutes, 20 minutes, we'll see how disgusting it becomes. It just scales so well, right? Um, thank God Demonic Embrace is not in the game because that would just break it. <laughs> completely right because the ap get the health it scales all that fun stuff luckily that's been removed but ohio northern kind of have their 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 finger on the beat when it comes to the meta i like that they're more than willing to take recently buffed champions right the patch dropped not too long ago mm -hmm. they're already on the volley bear they're already picking up the azir that was played quite literally on saturday and we're monday and they've just picked it up kato has the confidence to play Grass Vizier two days later, that's one of these big edges that Ohio Northern has, I think, amongst a lot of the other teams. Ottawa, one of oh. the few teams I think can match that is Plux. With a pick in the river, let's see. Julian does have flash, but headbutt away into no man's land. Ottawa Braves pick up first blood. That was a caster curse if I've ever seen one. But yeah, <laughs> like I said, Ottawa, one of those teams that I think can match Ohio Northern in that comp flexibility as we see the grass stack use max health gained 28. I mean, that's just, he's Busted. used it seven times already. <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to get worse, Mac. It's going to get so much worse uh, once we start seeing some of the more items coming in for this tank Azir. Um, oh, he did it again. Well played. <laughs> yeah, well played for Plucks, right? Really nice roam yeah. on this Alistair. What you have to do is top lane is getting to fight as well as bottom lane. Action all across the rift. Aggression used to force his flash as Killian used the flash as well. Top laners exchanging summoner spells. Kai forced to flash as well here on the bottom side of the map. 
Levi and Plux, I feel like they're gaming with a, a little bit of a of a different energy here in game number two. <laughs> they are aggressive with this Varus Alistar duo. It's it's like they put their suits on to the club, right? Yeah. They're not just wearing the jeans, the Air Force Ones, the, the polo. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're wearing something fancy. They're going a little bit fancy with the button up. They've got the matching outfits and everything. Yeah, they are playing a bit differently here. They're in a lane that they can win, though, right? They're in yep. a lane that allows them to have lane priority, shove. This is on hit Varus as well, so it's going to scale very well into the late game. This is lethal tempo Varus. But once again, Ohio Northern with that top lane push, that Aatrox into Scion matchup, and last game, the Udir into the Gragas. They're able to pick up all three Void Grubs here. And Ottawa Braves cannot make a play like they did last time, right? Before they moved Flux up on mm -hmm. that first grub spawn and were able to get a kill even though they lost it. But here, they just lose out three for zero. That's that's the King Julian jungle right there. You know, I feel like that's what all the fans are talking about in the chat today. They're hyping up Julian and that is what we like to see from the ONU jungler, Blonde. Ottawa in Blonde in the mid lane. Ultimate went wide for Kato. Blonde trying to capitalize. No summoner spells used as uh, the mid laners like to keep it interesting. Yeah. Trading ultimates here. Aggression having a good time. There's a potential for him to solo kill, but Killian does still have the ultimate available. Can just charge on out of there if he wants to. I think it's hilarious that he screams cowards as he runs away. <laughs> It's just the funniest thing. Ult for ult trade. Although Killian does not have TP available here, so he's going to miss potentially a big wave. And if he stays, there actually is no threat for a dive because Julian's on the bottom side waiting to kind of punish Levi and Plux. Playing so aggressively, they have not had to worry about jungle pressure for a bit. Let's see if Prod can come in here for the counter. Prod not yet level 6. The Nocturne ultimate not available. Dragon is up. For Ottawa to potentially pressure Julian, actually thinking about recalling and backing off Prod, getting a Scuttle Crab, and keeping my eyes on if he's going to get level 6 off of getting that jungle camp. Oh, he does. Paranoia is available, and now might be the time to strike. Levi gets level 6 as well. First, Chain of Corruption and Paranoia are a lethal duo. Let's see if they can pull it off. They're just going to look for Dragon. Yeah, they have the lane priority, level 6. They're going to shove that in. Help Prod with the objective this time around. Do not leave the man to his own devices, please. We saw what happened in game 1 here. But other than that one kill from Ottawa, uh, specifically Prod and Blux working in tandem in that river to catch out Julian, game's been relatively quiet, and that's completely fine for both of these squads. Right? Ohio Northern with the tank is here, with the Sivir, wants to get to those team fight uh orientated oh here uh -oh. it is the combo i was talking about into the bot lane kai deleted off the map with those level six ultimates yeah i said relatively quiet uh, i lied sorry my bad because <laughs> does need to get out of your prod flashing in this is ottawa playing to their strengths playing more comfortably feel like there's the tone and attitude shift here the game two power spike, as gamers like to call it. They're starting to get a little more comfortable. The game one jitters out of the way. Ottawa Braves came here to play. God burning the flash there, trading because his heal. I guess that's worth, right? You don't have that combat summoner, quote unquote, if Kai and Kuz decide to go a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Ottawa Braves, though, using those cooldowns, using the flash pull into the paranoia, like you mentioned, just get a kill onto Kai. Deny him some CS, get a big wave shoved in, and get that killed. Uh, really well played from Ottawa, but it feels like they have to do this, right? Yep. They have to be on the trigger. They have to be proactively making uh, plays in the game here, because if they let these games, this game specifically, slip into comatose, slip into this kind of lull state that we've been seeing, Ohio mm -hmm. Northern are more than happy, right? They've got the Aatrox, they've got the Azir scaling up, they've got Sivir, who's a team fight monster when she hits three items, right? And she's just going to start ripping through your team with these bouncing blades, with these boomerangs. And so Ottawa kind of feel like they're pressured a bit. And if they let up any of that momentum, let up any of that aggression, it gives ONU windows to come back into this game. The dragging stacking, in my opinion, is what will be the most important for Ottawa. 
engage into the mid lane. Kai using the spell shield on the route, but still going to get stunned up. Pop Blossom misses. Julian looking for the re-engage. Cuz ultimate on top of it, and it is a beautiful turnaround for ONU in the mid lane completely turning the tables on Ottawa. It's a two for zero. And a really, really good peel from Cuz specifically. Uh, Dunna, dunna. Oh my gosh, Whoa. Kai survives! He gets on out and survives through the surprise assassin attack, and that is going to be six grubs for ONU. Yeah, Prod trying to make something happen, trying to make that mid, mid lane play work, but ONU, like we mentioned, right, cuz on this Maokai, quite literally the best peeled champion in the game, denies blonde the flash pop blossom can't get in is yep. only able to pop blossom the maokai and allows kai and the rest of onu specifically julian to turn that play around get two kills in the mid lane get the six grub stacks and now lux is gonna try to go for table here <laughs> Flex a beautiful interrupt there, but the flash Whoa. still comes through. Emperor's Divide gonna knock everybody away, but he has no mana and no escape. Levi, a piercing arrow through the heart of the chicken is gonna be a kill going over to Ottawa, trying to even this game up. And once again, Shibby, as we get into the middle of this match, the gold lead is strikingly close between these two teams. You really similar to game one here and it was a nice play from ottawa braves right to make something right you can't get those grubs you just overload that bot side look for a play on takeda the flash and the tp burned dragon is coming up in a minute and although you've lost all grubs all hope is not lost as ottawa can start stacking towards that dragon can work towards what would be roughly a 22 to 24 minute uh soul for them if they can get full control of these dragons and they should right They've got Nocturne Nico. If Ohio Northern decide to funnel into that dragon pit, they decide to start it, they can just, <clears throat> excuse me, pull the trigger there and really kind of ruin Ohio Northern's day. Next dragon spawning in 40 seconds. Prod going to be able to secure the Scuttle Crab. Aggression going for a profane Hydra. It's not your tanky Aatrox that we're used to. Oh, no. Some new season builds, Shibby, are uh, coming through in a big way. ONU with those six grubs. Aggression going to be able to get some more turret plates going his way. Uh, it seems like the bot lanes have moved strictly out of the bot lane. And our, you know, Kai is pretty much the perfect player to sit mid and clear on this Sivir ADC uh -huh. carry. Um, a lot of wave clear, a lot of abilities that hit all the minions, and so makes the minion wave easy to clear, and he's just going to be chilling. Dragon going, once again, the way of Ottawa. They're going to get their second as Julian looking for a dive in the top lane. Shibby he has got the ultimate available. Scion's going to be the trickiest player, I think, on the side of Ottawa to dive. And just oh. that threat, aggression getting low, they're just going to back off. Yeah, they were looking for that dive. Instead, they give the dragon over and look to establish vision control on that Rift Herald side because it's coming up in a minute. Look at all the blue vision scattered within Ottawa Braves' jungle there. Will allow them to kind of get a little bit deeper in, make some plays. And, oh, Killian might be in some trouble. He has to clear this wave. Kato as Not well. does get popped. Oh, Flux using the bell. You know what a time it is. Kato <laughs> taken down. This is, I, I think, Shibby, you're... Your best case scenario for watching the Azir Grasp build get a little bit focused. Yeah, glad. Put that thing into the dirt. I don't want to see it <laughs> rise again like a zombie. Hilarious, right? We talked about the tornado drill. Plus in full effect, <laughs> sounding the alarm. A little bit different from the elementary school days, but still very, very menacing. As you hear the Nocturne Ultimate and the Cowbell going, you know your fate is sealed. <laughs> You cannot do anything about it. Kato, helpless in that bottom side. Rift Herald has spawned, but oddly enough, Ohio Northern haven't really made some movement towards it just yet. Cuz yep. is still in the bot lane. Kai as well. I'm surprised you gave up that second dragon to establish oh. vision control on the top side, but now you're going to get punished. Here comes Blonde. No Pop Blossom available, but Levi has so much damage with the Blade of the Rune. King Ease goes on a killing spree. Cuz does not stand a chance. Chain of Corruption was used earlier. Levi with a lot of lockdown. 
able to pick up that kill with the help of Blonde. No pop blossom, no pop problem, Mac. It's <laughs> fine. It's fine. Blonde it's is fine. okay. He hits the root. He gets onto Kai here. Kai still had the flash available. I'm surprised he didn't try to look for a player, make it a little bit uh, mm -hmm. more uh, difficult for Ottawa to take that kill. But with that, Bottom lane turret goes down. There's a reset coming in. Levi, once again, in a prime position to carry. Not on the Filios, but another immobile champion like the Varus. And I feel like it's really difficult for Levi to play this game with an Aatrox breathing down your neck. Kato on this as you're looking to scoop you into the waiting hands of Cuz and Julian. There are so many threats as this Scuttle Crab just gets bounced around like a 10-year-old's birthday party in the bounce house. Dude, holy, holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> Uh, I just hear jump around playing in the in the background <laughs> of Scuttle just trying to make it through. Rift Herald baited a little bit, not gonna get drawn out fully. Kai gonna try to clear the wave. Ottawa's up two thousand gold here. There's been a lot of consecutive nice positive plays from Ottawa, and I think they're setting themselves up for a little bit of a simpler game, right? You just go in with prod, go in with the nocturne, look for some of these picks on the engages. Of course, those are going to be progressively hard as the team starts to group up, but they're going to look for Kai here. A huge oh. Emperor's Divide stops the Pop Blossom from happening. Kai is now safe in the back line and fired away, but so is Levi. It's That's a Levi. duel between the ADCs. Here comes Killian charging in aggression, trying to help, but the Aatrox can't do a whole lot in this position. He has to back away, has to try to play it safe. Levi Levi 401 on the Varus in Ottawa. They go full tornado mode spinning. They pick up a kill. They may pick up more. Yeah, and smartly not going for any more kills, just trying to set up a trap play, going for this Rift Herald. I like this. Ottawa has learned. They've evolved. They've adapted. It's like Terminator 2. And they are back, baby. Let's see. Are they going to get any more? No, Ohio Northern able to kite back. But look. Prod this time is protected around the Rift Herald, and Ottawa looks to secure the objective. Really, really well played from Ottawa. Levi on this Varus, 4-0-1, but they've got to reset quickly. Dragon is up in a minute, and although it is Cloud Dragon and Ottawa are more than happy to give that away, I feel like you shouldn't. You've got the momentum, you've got the right gold onto the carries, and you can yep. start stacking these dragons. Cloud Soul would be so good for Ottawa, right? The Nocturne Ultimate, the Nico. I mean, even for Levi, getting that extra bit of move speed after the Chain of Corruptions will allow him to kite that much more and allow him to, you know, kind of space himself from this uh, Aatrox and Volibear potentially in these mid game team fights. As I say that, though, is Zion just going to walk it out? World Ender comes out, flash from Killian okay. to avoid getting taken down. He does have teleport available, Shibby, with a quick recall. He can join the likely fight around 15 seconds here. He's going to have his ultimate available as well for some additional mobility aggression, knocking down this turret as the objective gets ready to spawn. Uh -oh, Cuz is looking for a pick. Levi does not get rooted down. Now is Ottawa's time to strike. Prod has his ultimate plucks oh. with the knockup. A lot of damage from Levi. He's trying to get targeted. Julian looking for the damage. Kai safely in the back, but Prod's what looking to end that. Levi. Levi staying alive and firing away. It's all going the way of Ottawa with a double kill on the jungler. A double, double kill whip. on the ADC. Wait. Tokyo drifting into the mid lane. Here comes the Ottawa Braves with an ace. What a beautiful sequence of events for Ottawa here. That team fight played masterfully, but really Levi just kind of playing that so well, flashing diagonal down to start doing more DPS and just keep going, right? Most 80 carries would have flashed towards their team. They would have flashed towards the turret. No, no, no. He flashes to get the maximum distance away from everybody and absolutely drifts around the rest of Ohio Northern. Levi's playing so well right now. Ottawa taking over here in game number two. Shibby, we saw a lot of awkward shot calling, I'll say, from Ottawa in game number one, but they have cleaned... Oh, excuse me. They've cleaned things up really, really well here. Uh, it, and Prod on this Nocturne, Levi 
604. Plux is playing out of his mind. The bot lane for Ottawa, uh, I mean, it, last season, it was one of the most hyped parts of this team. And uh, a lot of times this season, it been kind of up and down. But here they are showing out in a really big way. Yeah, and not to be kind of understated by any means, Blonde has been finding some very good pot blossoms, right? Yeah, yep. it hasn't been able to hit everybody. You're not getting the four to five man ones, but it's catching Kato, it's catching Kai, it's forcing sums, it's doing what it needs to do to allow Levi to get the space in his Killian might look to bully Kato here, but Julian joins the party. Ultimate available. Bye, cowards. Whoa. I'll see you later. <laughs> He's just gonna drift all he's even clearing the minion wave as he tr as he's charging in kai's gonna try to answer but shibby look at the top side of the map the rest of the ottawa it's braves baron. are focused on bigger dishes tonight they've got their eyes on baron and the rest of ONU are none the wiser is scion taking damage guys hello is scion taking damage is it our um, internet no, he's just uh, running into the tower he wants it he's what he wants the to guys this is what he wants oh he's actually Dealing negative damage. Was that changed? Was that nerfed yes, actually? Long uh, time ago. Yeah, tough, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, tough. Boss, boss, boss is not a, is not allowed to play the game. It was, <laughs> it was changed. I wouldn't say super long ago. I, well, it was changed not too long ago. And yeah, he doesn't get to do that damage. But with that distraction, Baron goes into the hands of Ottawa Braves. Killian played his role perfectly. He's the imposter among you guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Ohio Northern. He was just a ruse. A tantalizing piece of candy for you to chase while Ottawa, like you said, fried the bigger fish. Extending their gold lead now. And with Baron buff, gonna look to extend it even further. They've got some inner turrets, a lot of gold sitting and standing, waiting the open arms, the open embrace of Ottawa. They've also got that weakened mid lane inhibitor turret. Kato with a potential pick. Nico was there as well. He's got Levi. He's got Blonde. And what a play from the mid laner. But it's just one kill. It's a trade one for one. Levi is a huge pick though, Shibby. Ooh, Ottawa Braves. That massive, massive pick on Kato. Even though they don't have Levi, they can still pressure some of these lanes. They do need to start getting their wave states a little bit more in control. Bottom lane, you see, is pushing in the favor of Ohio, Ohio Northern. Top lane kind of still middling in that in the, in the mid-juncture there. They need to get all these lanes shoving so they can actually properly push and siege, right? They're kind of wasting this Baron that they took, right? They took it off the map. They got a bunch of gold. But realistically, they haven't really been able to do too much out of it. If there was a Baron power play graphic, it'd probably only be like plus 500 at the moment. Yeah, but I think that fight really encapsulates what has to go right for Ohio Northern. They can't keep letting Ottawa Braves drive this ship with the engages from Prod, with the engages from Plux. There is so much engage potential that even though Ohio Northern have tools to disengage, it's just not enough to counteract all that Ottawa is throwing on them. So what are their best opportunities? If the fight starts on Ottawa's terms, you're not touching Levi. He's 7-1-4. and four. That was the first time he's died. Kato's going to have to continue to try and make some magic happen. Aggression's been pretty quiet in this match. Same with Julian. What big plays are they going to be able to try and make here as the Dragon Soul potentially goes Ottawa's way in just under a minute? And I feel like Aggression just hasn't been able to find those massive Aatrox flanks that we're looking for, right? Yeah. Like anytime a team fight starts, like you said, it's on Ottawa Braves terms. It's never on Ohio Northern's flank angles that they can get with aggression potentially kato looking for a scoop right they're always the one kind of playing back and rightfully mm -hmm. so they've got Siver, they've got emperor's divide on the azir they've got maokai but they're hiding and and they're and they're hiding correctly just the counter punch isn't there it's it's very very weak and so ottawa are just allowed to run over run them over despite them getting kited out properly dragon spawns here shibby and i don't think there's going to be a contest levi is just going to melt this objective down like nobody's business teleport from blonde to go up into the top lane as the soul is secured killian going to keep on pushing ohio northern they're down but not quite out need some team fight miracles to get back into this one yeah and i ohio northern really do have to stall it out right the 500 cs siver meme 
Uh, it's odd because Kato on this Azir, typically you'd be like, okay, we can stall it out. We have scaling. Tank Azir is a little bit different, right? He doesn't have that really crazy Emperor's Divide damage, right? The Sand Soldier's damage. He's kind of more in for these extended team fights, the long, drawn-out mm -hmm. ones, making him harder to kill. And so until he gets a little bit more AP, whatever he ends up building, right? If it is just going to go full tank like we've seen, or if he's going to build a little bit more AP, more of those bruisery kind of AP items, right? With the health and the ability power, it's mm -hmm. going to be a bit. So Ohio Northern really want to stall this game out 32, 34, 35 minutes in. Maybe that's where they can fight because that's when Otto, at least Nocturne, kind of doesn't become a champion, right? He's a very big one, two item power spike kind of guy. Next Baron spawning in just about 80 seconds here, Shibby. And for Ottawa, I think the, the good thing for them here in this match is that they have a lot of control around the objectives because of Levi's damage output. They can make very snap decisions to go for the objectives and just try to melt it down while ONU is busy looking at other pieces of eye candy like Killian. We'll have to see if how they try and set this next objective up. If they set it up as well as they did the first one, they could start to kind of put the final dagger in place to try and close this one out as it looks like we're headed in the direction of a game three here tonight on Monday night both series delivering on the action and with this tank Azir build Kato he can survive some of the damage Killian is dishing out but Scion's looking good yeah looking very healthy unfortunately tank is biggest flaw is now whoa aggression trying to survive all the damage but the world ender has come to an end aggression taken down on the top <laughs> side of the map in ottawa braves they're going to get a tower and they're going to head up for baron the meteors have come crashing down once again <laughs> uh mac we're going to go extinct in the ice age world <laughs> is ending here is the baron up in a minute killian doesn't have to do much, but still Again? look pretty. <laughs> Cowards! As he runs away. Now he's going to come back again. Oh, guys. You want to go for me? <laughs> Nothing else is going on on the map. Whatever could it be? Oh, Baron. Oh, my. <laughs> Sion wildly swings his hips back and forth tantalizingly <laughs> against Ohio North. <laughs> Ottawa Braves take the Baron here. And now <laughs> they've got to start sieging, right? Because their first Baron, albeit good, but a waste, right? They a little get underwhelming. A bit underwhelming, right? It's 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 like you get some fries with just a little bit of salt. It's like, ah, these could be better. Uh, the second Baron <laughs> should be a lot better, right? They should be able to siege. They've got Levi with Varus. They've got Blonde. They've got the yep. dive ready. So if, even if you are standing under these turrets, you've also got... Um, Plux on this Alistar who can just tank turrets for an eternity with his ultimate, his unbreakable will. It's really difficult for Ohio Northern to kind of stay under these. They do have Sivir, they do have got those bouncing blades and the ricochet ready to go, but I don't think it's enough as mid lane tier, mid lane inhibitor is going down. Meanwhile, Blonde is pushing the top wave. Here come the rotations as the Azir defense turret starts trying to pop some balloons. A big minion wave, though, crashing in, and Ottawa's just going to rotate away from the Azir turret. Engage coming in. Levi is still safe. Levi's firing away. All eyes on the Ottawa stud. Sees their main damage dealer. Blonde got a big ultimate as well. Lights go off. Here we go. Here's the fun big plot blossom. It's a double kill immediately for the Ottawa Ooh. mid laner. Kai's safe in the back line, but the health bars are too high. Ottawa's too tanky, and they are storming through into the base. Levi starts adding some names to the collection, and the Nexus turrets get quickly melted. Look at the enhanced Varus attack speed. It goes absurd, and Ottawa forces a game number three. Shibby, they come back in dramatic fashion here, pushing us to a third match. The decider is coming up. Game one and game two went exactly the same way, except opposite teams were able to execute, right? Game one, yep. super close until about 21, 22 minutes. Ohio Northern win a couple objective fights. They blow the gold lead open. What happens in game two? Super close, 19, 20 minutes in. <laughs> Ottawa Braves win a couple team fights around Dragon, around Rift Herald. They blow the game open and they end it to game three. Carried two on the back of, I will say, Levi the man. Put Ottawa Braves in the back bets. You know what? Get it, like guys. That. 
I've got it. <laughs> and so now we go to another game three. Max, six games for you. What a Woo! treat. What a treat. I'm super excited for more MEC action, Shibby. I mean, these are two top teams. We want it to be close. Ottawa and ONU. We mentioned it before, but there's a lot riding on these teams in this match. It's a big one. Ottawa, one loss, still looking to fight their way into the top four picture. Ohio Northern has been unbeaten so far. 5-0 with some very challenging tests ahead. We'll see what they're made of here in this game three to finish the Monday Night Madness here on the MEC stream, Shibby. There's a lot that goes into running an esports event like the MEC Clash or MEC Championship. One of the most important aspects is setting the scope of your event like setting your goals and balancing your profit with your expectations. If you want to learn more about the scope of an esports event, type exclamation point top five in the chat and check out our article, What It Takes Top Five Things Powering Esports. We appreciate you guys tuning in to the MEC action. We got more to come. One more match. Can I get it in the chat a little bit? One more match. We've got it coming right up. Don't click out of that browser. We'll be back in a few. First question, uh, you've been to a few lands before, but like, what right. kind of gets you excited about these events, getting to play offline? I think just like getting to interact with people. Like, yeah, I'm, big, I think like being in the environment is way different than like being in our rooms back at school. Like, mm. like being here like almost makes it like another sort of like competitiveness, like intensity, which is what I like the most. Yeah. Do you so. think you play better? Um. Or do you think other teams play worse? <laughs> no, I think I think I got the lane buff. I got the oh, lane okay, okay, okay. Yeah, for sure. Huh, a lot of people have said that. Oh, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, you know, a lot of layoffs at Riot, but we're putting you on the team, okay? You're on the dev team. Uh, you've got day one, you're setting up a collaboration with another IP or okay. literally anything. Fictional, non-fictional, what character are you bringing into League? All right. Anywhere. I'm bringing in a character that just gets rid of Karthus. Like if that, if that. What would that be? Okay, so let's 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 flush this out. You know. All Wait, right. Karthus so Karthus undead, right? Yeah. So we need we need uh, historically. All right. So Karthus alts, right? Yeah. This guy comes out of the floor. Wait, isn't this the Undertaker? Isn't this York? Sure, but York doesn't York doesn't do anything against Karthus, bro. Like uh, this, well, this, person, just... this person is gonna come out of the ground. <laughs> This person's going to come out of the ground, put yeah. a shield over your entire team. Nothing from the sky hits you. Karthus all useless. Karthus is useless. Yeah. And then okay. Karthus basically can never be played ever again. <laughs> I hate that champ. <laughs> Get that champ out of here. Uh, then, Car okay. Then we're looking at, like, Rihanna with an umbrella. Maybe it's just, like, it's just God. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just God. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. his name, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. It just beats. It yeah. just beats everything. <laughs> That's what we need, I think. Is this the is this the rock paper scissors where like the one kid who's like, nah, get gun, and it's like, uh, yeah, 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 that's the worst thing ever. Stop. Like black hole, like, you're like, bro, yeah, come on. on. All right, well, sick. Uh, now, final question of everybody on your team, right? Who is most likely to go viral for better or for worse? Not not league related <laughs> necessarily, but like, I can't say uh, myself. You cannot say yourself. Obviously. Julian. Yeah. Who's popping up on your on your 40 page? Julian. And for the worst. Julian. 
something said, something We're done. Try. Probably both. <laughs> okay, well, all right. All right. You know, we'll, we'll keep it under wraps. And check out your. Uh... But I might be in the background somewhere, so I can't. You know, <laughs> you're behind the camera. Yeah, I'm recording him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. Well, uh, good luck today. Thank uh, you. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you there. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Hello everyone and welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Monday night double header six games on this wonderful Monday night Ohio Northern University and the Ottawa Braves are going the distance. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the stream. My name is Mac Dewey still with me hanging on in the casting booth is my main man Shibby and boy oh boy did Ottawa Braves turn things around in game number two. I mean just a complete 180, right? Yeah. I mean, we talked about them cleaning up their ability to take objectives when they can. What did they do? Mm -hmm. They took the dragon <laughs> and they had the opportunity. Yeah, literally, <laughs> I think every single objective nearly went their except way. Grubs. Uh, except <laughs> grubs. But the grubs were irrelevant, right? Because they got the herald, right? They snuck that away. Oddly, ONU actually did their auto cosplay from game <laughs> one, right? They sack second dragon. Yep. Herald's up in a minute. They establish all this vision around the, the, the Rift Herald area. They look for a dive onto Scion or in Killian in this case. They don't get that off, but the Rift Herald is still coming up. You had a very good window of opportunity to take that, but instead you overstay in the bot lane. You overload a little bit. You look for something there. You end up losing, getting TP'd on by Blonde. Levi picks up a bunch of kills. That jets him forward a, another thousand couple gold, gets him to his item break point, and They just kind of take over from there. Very odd, uh, almost as if both teams kind of have a, a, a pension for overstaying and, and going for more when they don't need to. I know yeah. both coaches will be cracking the bell after this series. <laughs> it's time to get things in line as we get geared up and ready to go for game number three. And this one's going to be a big one. Ohio Northern trying to stay in the hunt for first place. I'm excited. I'm not. Is that hyper loaded? The hype music in here <laughs> for game number. I was like, is my stream music on? I was like, am I hearing that right? But we're getting into it. We're getting ready for it. I'm super hype, Shibby. Oh, Ottawa. They're trying to get their fifth win, trying to knock down ONU a peg. If ONU loses this game, there's this weird tie between all of the top four teams who all have just one loss. Yep, yep. If ONU lose, like Mac mentioned, a four-way tie for first place. But if they win, they guarantee themselves at least bare minimum top two here. Yeah. And the funny thing is, right, if, if everybody ends up going 4-1 here, if ONU fall, the schedule next week is even more hilarious right yeah because then <laughs> you get briar cliff grandview you get ottawa versus grandview who are both four and one you get purdue northwest versus ONU, who are also four and one so eventually it'll all shake out <laughs> depending on the winners and losers yeah. they are all playing in theory for first yeah if ONU lose this that's how competitive our top four teams are in the Midwest Esports Conference here as the sides have swapped. The draft is here and Mac, Ottawa on the blue side, ONU on the red side. And fun fact, uh, statistics here, on that side has a 100% win rate. <laughs> if you're a betting man, I, I would bet ONU here. <laughs> keep, keep it rolling, ONU, Shibby. Just keep it on the... <laughs> 
Well, I guess well, you've been betting a lot of Ottawa. I, been... I've literally <laughs> only been betting Ottawa. I will once again bet Ottawa. I have 3,000 points. Thanks for your points, you Owen, you suckers for game two. <laughs> They're mine. Yoink. Yoink. <laughs> As we get into game number three, the teams for the first few bands not switching things up. The old salty run back a little bit here, but these bands are, are founded in good reasoning. I'll say Shibia's Killian's Rumble should be banned at all times as we've learned throughout the course of this season. Udir, banned away by Ottawa. Oh, and you, are they going to keep Prod's Belveth up? Or do they, I, I mean, at this point, they're like, are they, is he even going to play it? We, we may be worried about the Nocturne more. Are they going to give up a, a Shibi, I believe, as you call them, a, a little bit of a trauma ban? Yes. Oh, Aha. They're traumatized. The term. <laughs> They're traumatized. The trauma. That quite, that's my term. That's the trademark. It's, I hear it getting used in other leagues, and I'm like, that's not a that's that's mine. It's <laughs> mine. No, it's okay. I don't care. Use it. They deny the nocturne <laughs> here, but that does open up ONU for potentially. Would you like maybe a third volley bear game, Mac Dewey? I know I would. I think Julian's been pretty stellar on it. Instead, they're gonna remove two power picks, Kato. Going potentially back onto that tank Azir and taking the mm -hmm. Varus, like you mentioned, out of Levi's hand. But picking an AD carry that early is very scary because it allows for so many counter options. And Prod is going to take the Volley Bear away. Madness in game three draft. The teams are stealing each other's champions. So, hey, you had a good game on that one. And one of the key things for ONU. They go the Varus, but on red two, right? So this gives yep. Levi the opportunity to counter Smolder, counter Smolder, not, it's just going to be one of those champions that can actually lane against the Varus and have a hashtag not terrible time as uh, yeah. Julian's going to lock in the Zin Zhao to go into the Volley Bear. Ottawa banning out that Gragas from Aggression's hands this time. Cannon being banned away, so Killian's champ pool ever so slowly pinched a lot of top lane bans here where mm -hmm. game one, it was a bunch of AD carry bans. Uh, Kai got really kind of pushed off of his champion pool, picked that Caitlyn Lux in game one. Did pretty good, went that Barrett 50 cal sniper build, <laughs> right? With the first strike, lethality was just taking yeah. names and just really kind of chunking them out. And Ottawa, getting a little bit of respect put on their names. The Nocturne taking out the... Alistar removed, Pluck's not allowed mm -hmm. to play that, although I don't think he would have played that with uh, yeah. the uh, Smolder here. I want to see something more Enchanter orientated. Could be the Lulu, could be the Sona, the Seraphine, whatever you want. Um, yeah, I want to see something like that. I want to see something empower Levi. Because he is the carry. He's running hot, right? It's like in a basketball game. If the guy is landing threes, <laughs> keep feeding him the ball until he stops. <laughs> shoot or shoot. Shooter Simple shoot. as that. Nautilus locked in for Cuz here, so a very aggressive duo for the Owen New bot lane to go in. I think nicely with Julian, hopefully going to be aggressive on the Xin Zhao in the early game. Uh, so we'll see Zach potentially going up into the top lane. We have seen Jason do some absolute work yeah. with yeah, this he's, Zach top. He's, he's been killing he's it. <laughs> Quite literally, absolutely goose stomping everywhere. Yeah. The just madman and the engage coming out as well. You've got to worry about again, Nico, Volley mm -hmm. Bear, Zach coming in from the top ropes, ladder match from 30 stories high. Like, you know what I mean? That's what's watch happening out, watch out, watch out. Yeah, aggression. Gonna lock in that Darius, though. Another champion. Wow. Of these elongated, laning kind of fights in that top side, right? Mm -hmm. You want to auto trade with the guy? You want to keep going? Bleed stack, bleed stack, bleed stack, bleed stack. Yep. Oh, you're at five bleed stacks. I'm dropping the hammer on you and it's not <laughs> even close. Luckily, Killian does have that ability to kind of regen stall out, which is really mm -hmm. nice. But the Rakan being locked in for Ottawa here. Levi Plux piloting nice. a smolder. Look, Rakan lane is very, very interesting. Yep. Once again, just drafting quadruple engage Ottawa. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You don't got the Nocturne, fine. <laughs> Slot the Volley Bear in. 
Slot the Zack in. Let's get quadruple engaged. Let's give the space Levi needs to work. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the shining stars, I think, for me in that second game, Shippy, was Plux on the Alistar, making plays in the early game, putting Julian in, honestly, a bit of the dumpster in that level, like, three skirmish in the river, trying to shut down ONU a little bit. I'm happy to see Plux given the keys to the car a little bit again with some of those engaged tools. Place your bets now, Shibby. He's all in already on Ottawa. <laughs> Excited to see where this game three goes. I have dropped all 3,000 <laughs> points. Come come one, come all, you own, you oh, cowards. Yeah. Nom, 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 nom. I want your points. I'm going to eat it up. <laughs> Ottawa Braves. Coming in with the cool composition, but not to be outdone. Ohio Northern have all the tools and, you know, abilities to kind of stave off some of this, right? They've got the Zinzao Ultimate. They've got Emperor's Divide. And we're loaded into Game 3, Mac! Summoners, welcome on to the Rift for Game Number 3! Huge regular season matchup between the Ottawa Braves taking on Ohio Northern University. Can ONU remain perfect or are ottawa braves gonna play spoiler oh, and put themselves in the conversation for first place we're starting off with potential rumbles in the jungle because hooks the wall is gonna back off he gives himself a concussion is gonna back <laughs> out there um blondo trying to be a little devious trying to interrupt some backs here i like that from ohio northern it was five point defense is pretty much across the board for them game one and game two I like that kind of mix up in game three, trying to go for an engage, trying to go for, uh, you know, a cheeky little invade here. If Killian doesn't path properly or if Cuz is just a little bit faster, that hook might have ended up in a kill there, or at least a blown flash from Killian. So respect from them. Vision goes down defensively. So both junglers starting um, mirrored starts here, right? So they're going to be meeting each other potentially in that bot side. They're starting on the same side of the map. But Plux and Levi have gotten full control of this tri-bush that's supposed to be Ohio Northern's because of that invade. Um, mi uh, mirror starts, sorry, but also hidden starts, right? We did see a ward get dropped, I believe, from Blonde onto the Raptors here. Mm -hmm. So unless Julian has some really creative pathing, Auto Brave should know where the Zinzao is at all times, at least up until the three and a half minute mark. Early game information does help some of these teams, but look at the mini map. Should be Julian is going around the world to avoid Ooh. these raptors. No information given. Uh, Blonde's ward does not. Maybe it's a little. I mean, they'll see him not taking the raptors, so they got to play yeah. a bit of a guessing game, you know, because gonna find that early hook and uh what the nice thing for levi here in this game I, I feel like they're not put in as tough of a position against the varus because they were able to get their hands on the smolder pick should be able to match the early pressure uh at least a little bit between uh between the smolder recon we'll see how it goes as uh kai's gonna be looking to try and channel some of his levi after that performance in game two yeah it feels like the varus is more of a takeaway prod flash for flash Root misses from Blonde, just barely, as uh, Summoner Spell is used, and uh, I think Prod will be back. He's going to give him a little <laughs> little rain check. I'll come back another day. We'll see what you got in inventory. And Kato has dropped the disease that is Tank is here, has gone back to what I think is Fleet Footwork. I don't know if he's going to go Tank still. Um, could potentially still go there. It's a bit, a bit of a better laning phase for him, right? Uh, maybe mm -hmm. into the Nico, but those grass stacks do allow you to live a little longer. As Julian isn't on this bot side, he didn't he seem to take it. the Raptors like you mentioned, so they should know he's hanging around somewhere here. Blonde Blond is also here. Yeah, there's a lot. There's of two volley here. bears. There's two volley bears coming down into the bot lane. Hook there on to Levi immediately trying to lock down the Ooh. Ottawa ADC first blood, but it is now a three v three situation. Who's the real bear? What is going on? Blonde is revealed, and they're going to be able to get a kill there onto Julian. Now it's a two v three situation in Lethal favor tempo. of Ottawa, but Kai is firing one arrow after another. Plux trying to lock down Cuz, but Kai using a huge flash Kai is feasting in the bot lane now it's a 1v1 he's got a guess right no vision can't auto attack trying to arrow in but it's a double kill for the Ottawa mid laner 
and such a bad play for Ohio Northern. You could argue, yeah, a three for three, but Mac, put your goggles on, focus in. Where do those kills go to? Two of them went into Cousins' pocket. Um, the support. While you look on the side of Ottawa Braves, at least Blonde picked up two of those kills, and that's going to put Ottawa in a much better position mid lane. I am not afraid of the Nautilus with your two boots. I am afraid of the Nico that's going to pick up what is most likely going to be lost chapter. We've got more action to start game three as Kelly and just bonks everyone together a great cue there on to julian to set up ottawa for continued success in this early game i lied he probably won't pick up lost chapter to the <laughs> alternator uh, because he's gonna go for that hextech proto bell but nonetheless mm. blonde so far ahead right now yeah just able to drop 1300 a little bit more big gold doubloons into the shop and yeah ottawa braves make a, a disaster play turn into a positive for them with a little bit of luck. Ohio Northern, unfortunately, Cuz picks up two of those kills. Kai does get one, so that's good, but Levi is just happily farming in here. And we talked about kind oh. of Smolder being one of those champions, as blue team does say slay the Void Grubs here. Prod, Auto Braves, getting the first three stacks, getting those Void Grubs here with mm -hmm. that kind of mid lane pressure. Uh, the big thing about Smolder that I want to talk about is that you can really tell which AD carries have mastered that champion and which are still kind of figuring it out or just kind of play it because they have to. Because a lot of the good ones will get those 200, 225 stacks around the 18 to 22 minute mark. It's still actually crazy a lot to easier me. than most people think. Yeah, it's a lot easier than <laughs> most people think. You just have to farm dutifully, hit your Ws ever so often onto the champion so you can get those stacks going. It's a combination of both. And those that have truly mastered Smolder can really get the most value out of this champion, in my opinion. Yep, the faster you stack, the faster you get to that late game execute that is just so, so valuable. Aggression taking some turret damage. Killian playing around this very well. There's a lot of healing from all the Zac blobs and looking for the solo kill. Flash it away. Aggression it is not Duncan time just yet. So He's small. gonna try and run for the hills as Killian having a pretty solid game. He's gonna try and heal his way back up to full size. Yeah, and the crazy thing is here, this is phase rush Zac. It's not Conqueror, it's not Grasp, it's Phase Rush so that he can get his quick kind of three abilities down, whether it's the E into the QW or the EW Auto, and just zoom out before Aggression can actually look to trade a lot of that damage back. Nice uh, rune choice from Killian, kind of swaying the lane a little bit in his favor. As you saw, just what can Aggression do if he can't land his Q, land his heal? Killian is just going to out-sustain you and out-damage you. It's just high base damages from Zach. Yep. Julian may be looking for another gank into the bot lane. Kato, no flash available still. Prod knows when his flash is coming up. He's going Time. to invade. Julian going to be forced to back off here. I don't think a turret dive is in the cards. And uh, Prod's just going to get a lot of value on the top side of the map. Oh, no. Julian, Guys, did he come him. in undetected? No, apparently not. Plucks, though able to just dash away yeah i'm surprised there was a ward on that third bush in the bottom lane as prod is now just going to ruin aggression's life no summoner spells available for the darius he's going to try to pull in killian but i think it's too much damage the dunk comes out but the storm has been brought Whoa! so much damage aggression's actually pulling it out is prod gonna die what yeah! is going on Oh my gosh, what am I watching? The bleed stacks doing so much work. Blonde is forced to come all the way up. Teleport coming in. This is Killian. Killian? Low health. Still looking to make plays. Arrows coming in. Chain of Corruption is going to connect onto a lot. Levi able to fly away. They're trying to stay under turret, but a huge push. A Sharima shuffle. Lops? The, oh my gosh. Killian does get taken down. Cuz has to be careful. So much turret damage, but oh, and you. That's a huge play for them on the bottom side of the map. Prod, Prod is going to try to play spoiler. He's coming in with the auto attack. Everyone's just Ooh. trying to recall. Kai, no. He gets caught. With Zeus's lightning, Prod smites down Kai <laughs> with thunderous effort. They make that play an even gold total here 15.7 to 15.7 this might be one of the most evenly matched teams early game wise that we have in the mec right yep. guys 
trading blow for blow. Bit of a head scratcher from Killian, like TPing in with a quarter HP. Um, did actually end up getting a kill in return, making that play a little bit more even sided for Ottawa. But yeah, massive, massive heal coming out from aggression. You saw. He got the double Q heal onto both Killian and Prod, and he just healed him up so well. I thought they had it in the bag. Yeah, I was right. I was like, what are you, what are we watching right now? Luckily, Blonde coming in with the roams. Really good, right? On the bottom lane, on the, yeah. the top lane. Yeah. Blonde has been everywhere, man. In your dreams, in your closet, <laughs> under your bed. He's sitting down with you at the kitchen table. Like, he's eating dinner with your family. Blonde's everywhere, man. Is he the chair you're sitting on? His ultimate advantage for ONU in the bot lane leads to an engage, but Flux has got those blue suede shoes on. He's staying safe. Meanwhile, Kato taking quite a bit of damage. Teleports are unleashed, and food for thought should be Prod died in the top lane, then ran all the way bot to pick up a kill there. That was the course of sequence of events. While all the grubs are going to be going over to Ottawa, Julian looking for a bot lane effort. It's a oh, teleport from blonde. blonde. Flash Pot Blossom is available, and Julian try to knock everyone away. A huge chain of corruption is going to come in clutch. The Flash Hextech Proto Belt into everybody. Julian gets taken down. Kai going to try and turn this one around. Kato has roamed down as well, but he has no flash. He has no ability to get into the fight. Flux oh. oh. barely survives. Survives the arrow, almost taking him down. Ottawa, they're taking some advantages on the top side of the map while ONU continue to try to make things happen in the bot lane. Yeah, and Kai just not having the same success that Levi did in game two, right? Kind of stifled on this Varus just a bit. Actually, behind Levi, who's playing the smolder here, and we talked about locking that AD carry early. I wanted to say it was more of a takeaway from Levi and, you know, Kai definitely a solid AD carry right now. I actually lied. Uh, he's not behind. Kai just didn't actually cash in. He's up 30 CS. He just didn't cash in the items there. I uh, was not looking at that. Apologies there. But regardless. It's, it's, it's it does... your first time. You're, you're doing great. Don't, yeah, don't yeah, worry. You know, like, Grandpa's <laughs> back on the walk. <laughs> <laughs> Levi, though, I think for all intents and purposes, doing pretty well. Despite all the attention that's been given down to bottom lane, right? I mean, yep. realistically, Ohio Northern have called for ganks, have called for dives, and Ottawa Braves have been responding with TPs, responding in sound, but it always feels like they're on the back foot. This is not how far a smolder should be behind in a lane like this. He really needs to get let down, like put down early and really put in the dumpsters before he can become a major threat. Come about six to eight minutes from now if we could get a stack check on on levi here i'd love to see it dragon getting focused down ottawa braves going to secure the objective smolder oh, stack check 68 is quite low at this point right yeah it's a, it's a little low right now oh so engage still. though shibby we got to focus up as plux finds three members charmed up and knocked up kai trying to escape but levi's gonna be able to chase him down one more auto attack Bop not gonna be able to do it julian is taking the fight it's two kills for ohio northern levi channeling the reek or excuse me kai i'm getting flashbacks from last game it's kai on the varus and he somehow manages to escape yeah is able to get out of dodge there and Levi just not at that point ready to fight, right? Uh, Smolder, biggest weakness. He cannot take early game skirmishes. It's really rough for him to do damage. Even if he does call Mom into some of these fights, mm -hmm. he's very heavily reliant on what this build is going to be, his Q. And so he doesn't have that Essence Survey, only as Sheen. He's not going to be outputting that much damage there. And his E can't crit as much. He can't do as much damage with it. He can't fly around. And so it's a little bit rougher. And like you said, 68 stacks, he's kind of low at the 12-minute mark, right? Assuming... You know, game starts at minute three or minute two, right? Minions come in. He's only been farming about, like, what, say, seven, eight stacks a minute? And that's not that good there. You need to try to hit that 200 to 225 stack ASAP, right? You need to f feed Levi waves if you have to. Leave Killian to sack something there, right? Feed two waves into him so he can keep stacking. The big stacking momentum comes in with his Q when he can kind of divulge it into a, a three-shot AoE, and he can start one-shotting those casters and getting three stacks per WQ. Yep. Yep. If, it's, if it sounds like I know a lot about Smolder, I put in so much research into this champion because I really wanted to get his timings down. 
Oh, Plux got some timings down on to Cuz, looking for a pick there onto his fellow support, but it is a tanky Nautilus. It's not going to be taken down very easily as ONU prioritized the Rift Herald here, Shibby. And uh, the Smoldering Knowledge, I think, is getting put to good use as Ottawa, they were ahead a little bit in the early game, but ONU, they've kind of found their footing here, I think, in this match as... I believe Plux looking for an engage there. I, he didn't use the ultimate, even though I thought for a moment he did. Oh, and you just going to plop Rift Herald down in mid. And I drive the whip right into that mid lane tower here. They should at least. I, I feel like we should be. Oh, cuz. Here we go. Engage onto the back line. Kai able to back off here, but it's Julian that falls first. Aggression is coming to join the rest of the team here. Chain of Corruption has been used. Oh. Here comes the ONU top laner. Mom's going to try to help out. Levi looking to get into the fight. It's a one-for-one -one trade. The junglers have been sacrificed. The team's just going to back off after that, Shibby. A one-for-one. -one. Good look from Ottawa. Just trying to use that Rift Herald charge like Ohio Northern are lulled into a sense of security. Like, oh, it's Winley C. Blonde. He's the only one here. They're just going to give this up. And so Cuz actually ended up hooking in, and that was the go-ahead for Blonde to be like, oh, you can't stop me anymore, as we do flash to the gold here. Blonde, a little bit ahead of Kato here, but the big, big gold discrepancy right now is in that top side and that bottom lane for Ohio Northern, right? They are so far ahead of their counterparts. Almost 1,000 gold, nearly four Kai here, but also nearly about 800 gold, roughly, for this uh, aggression in Darius here. And so these two are going to be the ones carrying the fights, looking to make some ha wreak some havoc. And these dunks that are coming in, like, aggression had a very good chance of resetting, potentially, if that fight goes a little bit longer. Luckily, auto is back out. They reset. They understand that they're getting collapsed on. Kato from one side, aggression from the other. They get the kill. They trade one for one. That's as best as you can get. Keep prolonging the game. You've got a dragon in your back pocket. You don't need to contest Ohio Northern just yet on the second dragon here, or third dragon here, but second for Ohio Northern. And let Levi stack, let him cook, and get him to that execution point. That is the name of the game. This is what Smolder does. He warps the game around him. And for a player like Levi to get his hands on a champion like that, it's fun to see the results here in real time. Ottawa still fighting to try and... Put a little put a little damper on ONU's perfect season. Ohio Northern trying to go to 6-0. and Should be, as you mentioned before, would secure a top two regular season finish as they get geared up after this match. They're going to have to face up against another top dog in Purdue Northwest. ONU trying to pass this test. They're grouping up in the mid lane, but the minions get cleared out. Levi using the ultimate to get rid of that. That's before this upcoming dragon fight. Yeah, just able to get a little bit more value out of that mid lane tier one. It should go down soon enough, right? Um, Levi being sequestered into this mid lane, allowed to push it out. But it's what can Ottawa Braves do with the rest of the map, right? Rest of this kill squad that we want to call it with Blonde, with Prod, and potentially Plux here. Because really, the damage is going to come out from Blonde on this AP Nico. And if he can't find a good plop blossom combo onto one of the, the squishier members here, either Kai or Kato, it's looking a little rough for them to kind of win these fights. It's just a waiting game, and Ohio mm -hmm. Northern kind of feel that. So now they have to say, do we just keep stacking these dragons, hope that we can get Infernal Soul before Levi is ready to fight? Do we rip Baron potentially to bait a team fight, right? They use the Baron as a team fighting machine to draw Ottawa in and then pull the trigger. Even though Ohio Northern... Seems like they've kind of had control over the objectives, control over the map for the majority. The The time window is sinking for them, and it kind of feels like they're on a timer before Ottawa Braves is ready, and Levi is just going to take over these fights, in my opinion. They do have two dragons to go, about nine minutes. That would yep. put us at around the 27-minute mark uh, for potential Infernal Soul, Ohio Northern... Also have Baron to play around in just a little bit, but it's a very even game. Less than a thousand gold separating these two teams. The two top dogs are going at it here on this lovely Monday night. Turrets traded across the map. Teams just looking to get gold on high priority characters. 
or ONU. It's definitely Kato on this Azir. Not going Grasp of the Undying this time around, Shibby. No, this is uh, Azir that is looking to dish out so much DPS. Uh, they really do actually have a lot of fast objective taking potential. Like Baron gets melted by this yep. Azir Varus duo. Yeah, you even got. You know, the, the Zinzao and the Darius putting a bunch of damage onto that Baron, right? The monster damage with the bleed. It is, it, it does go really quickly. And I hope Ohio Northern kind of recognizes that and uses that to their advantage to pressure it, right? At minimum to get Ottawa Braves into a team fight. Because Ottawa Braves have just been playing back and forth, ping pong with the waves. They've been getting a kill here, but they've just been dodging around the map, just finding out where ONU is and then just kind of avoiding them really expertly. As you see, Levi trying to get the max value. We are stack check on that 20 minute mark yeah i did want to get a stack check hyper i know you can do it I love you so much he's at 132 so he's still a ways away from 225 right assuming he's stacking at the same pace or roughly it's not going to be until what 28 minutes like you mentioned maybe that infernal soul is when he's ready to fight levi's very behind the stack the, the stacks right now and with these upcoming fights around the objectives it might be a bit of a detriment for Ottawa. He's still, I mean, we saw his various game last game. Uh, knows how to he knows how to position well in these fights. He's still going to be a threat. Still dishing out damage. We're just getting into the nitty gritty of the optimized gameplay that we like to see from players of this oh, caliber. Killian yeah. finds to engage. Here comes the fight. Flux follow up as well. Kai try to flash away, but he gets bear slapped and stunned underneath the turret. They've Whoa! got their target. Kai gets taken down. Ottawa Braves looking to continue the fight as well. Levi firing away. He takes down Julian, and it is total disaster for Ohio Northern. Killian with a massive play, stepping up when his team needed it. It was off at the back of the Zach engage. Plux able to follow up. Prod able to follow up. Now Baron. Kato used his ultimate. Aggression, full health, ready to go. He's going to have to come up clutch here. Plux. Avoids the pull here. Baron at about 50% HP. Damage Aggression. dealers are here. Cuz trying to join the fight. Julian is down. A Baron steal seems likely. Dunk goes wide. Aggression has to back away. Safe is the Ottawa carries as they continue Stopped to it. fire and fire. But Shibby, you're right. The objective has been neutralized. Ottawa can't get it. They don't have the same Baron taking team that they had last game. They can't secure it as Dragon spawns in 40. And a good job from Aggression there using the Ghost, using the Flash to dodge out on a lot of key CC abilities, right? Mm -hmm. Flux's uh, Grand Entrance, right? The W, uh, the Zack Blobs, the Zack Engage, and him being there and not being CC'd and just being a presence on that side was more than enough to stray Auto away. And like you mentioned, really good play from Killian to get that Engage off, but an even better TP from Blonde, right? You saw him... Keep yep. being on the backside, and Kai used all of his summoner spells, and what do you know? It's a flash pop blossom to end your whole life. He also Brutal. catches Kato mid mid slide, so he can't get that Emperor's Divide in. Wow. Really good from Ottawa Braves overall. That puts them at even gold still, though, right? This game, probably the most neck and neck we've had so far between these two teams, and that's saying a lot considering how close game one and game two were for a majority of that time. Here comes another fight in the river. Oh, Julian Levi. trying to go in. Levi's getting focused, but Julian gets what? taken down. It's a double pop blossom into the back line. Ottawa has once again taken down Kai. They're going for the throat, but Kato remains. He's on a killing spree. The re-engage from Cuz. It is three on three and a shutdown on to Cuz. Kato trying to run for the hills. Aggression trying to find his way into the fight, pulling everybody in, but Kato... He doesn't have the room to dish out the damage. The fight goes the way of Ottawa. And my MVP this game, Blonde, right? Chef's kiss. Massive pop blossoms onto Kai, onto Kato. I don't know how he keeps finding them. Right? <laughs> he is just getting some insane angles onto Owen Yu's backline, and there's just no answer to it. Unreal team fight management. I think back to last season in these close moments, Ottawa can rise to the occasion in a lot of these close games. ONU, this might be one of their more significant tests in this regular season. They're down but not out. 
They've still got room to try. They've got the scaling carries that they need. But again, Shibby, I think in this one, I I'm going to need more out of aggression in Julian. They're gonna. It it's tricky for them, too, on the Xin Zhao, on the Darius, playing into the Zag Volley Bear. Uh, I I'm hoping they can surprise me here in game number three. Yeah, and ONU, it, it just kind of feels like we don't have the answers for this auto of Braves composition, right? They try to go in. They thought they've caught somebody out. Julian's diving on to Levi, but they've just lost where Blonde is, who he is, as he's just going to pop blossom. They don't just have to flash here. Oh, okay. Blonde maybe going to get taken down in the side yes. lane. Shut down. Huge, 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 huge shutdown for Kato, who has teleport who can go to a potential objective. Cuz looking for an engage. Time. Julian Wynn becomes lightning. He's found his target. Killian just trying to escape here at the moment. Cuz going to take the flash over. And here is a huge moment for ONU. Hook into Killian to try and slow him down. Kai is here as well. That's two deaths. Do they go on to Baron? Shibu, we talked about it before. ONU have such a fast objective taking team. This They just turned the game on its head. Yeah, Blonde. Looking for a play onto Kato. Kato flashes out and then redirects the aggression back to Blonde. Says, you know what? An ultimate for an ultimate. An eye for an eye. And that Baron lickety split, like you mentioned, in under 10 seconds. 0 to 60 in 4.5. That's a damn fast Baron here. <laughs> Owen, you shred it and melt it like butter. Auto Braves. One misstep. One misplay in that bot side allowed Ohio in order to get so much there and now you look about 2,000 gold ahead not insurmountable by any means for Ottawa Braves but I think another misstep like that another you know misplaced aggression into that bottom side a solo kill or anything like that that could be ONU ending the game very very quickly Ottawa Braves have to be very careful on this next engage because it could just be their last Kato with that shutdown is on three items. Rabadon's death cap has been completed. Kato is the threat. Level oh. 16 on this is year. A huge bounty on his head for any member of the Braves who can try and shut him down. But look at the state of the waves. You talked about this before, Shibby. With the Baron power play, it goes to waste if these side lanes aren't pushing. Yeah, it really does. And this Baron kind of feels like that Baron from game two that Ottawa took where it kind of just wasted away. They got the mid lane tier two for themselves, but other than that, bottom lane shoving in Ottawa Braves' favor, top lane now shoving, or was shoving in Ottawa Braves' favor, and Ohio Northern now has to split up some of that Baron, Baron split pushing power into just shoving waves in, and now mid lane's gonna go their way. They're gonna dive mid. No, oh, Kai, don't stand a chance. Levi goes on a rampage as the turret ready. is neutralized, and Levi is stacked here at the 27 mark. He gets a double kill to stop the power play, to stop the bleeding for Ottawa, and they're right back in it. The tides of this match keep going. I mean... Talk about the moon impacting tides. Look at Blonde, a surprise <laughs> play there on to Kato. He's got the pick and the shutdown. Levi cashes in. Ottawa Braves, they've got six grubs. They're going to keep pushing. Look at the death timers. Oh, it's so low. Aggression has to stop this somehow, some way. Kai and Kuz are up. But is Ottawa just going to go for the end here? Aggression is caught out and he goes in trying to defend the base. It's up to the ONU bot lane. Chain of Corruption connects there onto Killian. They're going to try to lock down the tank, but Levi is safe in the back line. Julian wants to try to get in onto this smolder, but the fire just can't stop burning. Levi, 9-3-3 three, and three now, comes up huge for the team when they needed him most. Levi with the massive kills, but Blonde setting up pop blossom after pop blossom after pop blossom you would think there was a shooting outside how many pop blossoms are <laughs> happening mac infernal dragon is next on the menu ottawa braves they go on to soul point critically the next dragon gives them even more damage we're talking about three stacks of the infernal dragon a lot of bonus a P and A D O N U. They're down once again. They're gonna need more hero plays to come back into this one. 
Yeah, Ottawa Braves have been playing very, very well. But this game going back and forth. ONU, honestly, just Kai is is there, right? He's at that three item mark with the, the on hit Varus ready to go. You've got Kato on this not tank Azir, but damage oriented Azir. It just feels like you mentioned Julian and aggression cannot get into these fights, uh, cannot, uh, you know, find their way oh. into this back line as I say that. All they need is one chain of corruption onto Plux. They did not give my man a chance to escape. They didn't want none of that. Big ultimates used, but it's a big pick. One minute, 50 seconds until the next Baron. Ohio Northern, got to be careful. Killian's on the bottom side of the map. We're going to try and get this mid wave as shoved in as possible to limit the potential of the super minions. Yeah, Plux, unfortunately, is just going to be the sacrificial lamb here. No objectives really to take for Ohio Northern, although Killian sneaking his way behind. He might have dove too far into enemy lines. Oh, Killian giveth and Killian taketh away. Explosive Cone goes into uh, his cell split, tries to survive, but Kato's soldiers make quick work of the secret weapon for Ottawa. And big momentum swing, two kills, two picks, Ohio Northern. Uh, if, with these picks going their way without getting a lot else, we'll see what if they're able to keep sticking in this one. They need more of those picks. Yeah, the, the, it's, it's, we're heading into Clown Fiesta territory just a little bit. When do you breach what is genius and insanity, right? Where's that line get crossed back to Because <laughs> Killian was going for something pretty wild. It feels like neither team has a solid grasp of the game. Uh, but it, it's it's it, it's just so rough because Ottawa have the recipe. They have Levi now at that execute threshold. Blonde has been getting some massive, massive uh, Nico Pop Blossoms onto the back line. He has to kind of keep doing that because if he doesn't, the fight is lost. Ohio Northern, if not, if either of their carries are let, you know, kind of allowed and let to kind of just do damage across an extended team fight, Kato will auto you to death. Kai will auto you to death. They're both very, very strong on hit champions here. So really, it's up to Blonde, Flash, Hextech, Proto Belting. Potential Pop engage in here, here, Shibby. It all comes down to this chain of corruption in the back line. Levi and Kai are both safe, but Plux finds the engage there. The Pop Blossom as well. Kai trying to run as far away as he can, but there is no let up in the aggression of the Ottawa Braves. Kills traded. Turret placed down. Aggression trying to find more aggression is Duncan, but Levi remains standing strong. It's Kai and Kato. It always comes down to these two. Can they make it work? trying to defend the base baron is up Ooh, prod on this volley bear what can they do right a minute 15 seconds for this dragon oh they're gonna go for kato okay all right all right i got a little excited he had the slide ready to go prod oh prod, prod! shut down for kato in the ottawa jungler is taken down at potentially a horrible time. It's a long death timer. Julian is about to respawn again. It is a very fast Baron taking team. Are Ohio Northern going to find another chance? <laughs> the clown, the circus has arrived to MEC and it comes in the form of Ottawa Braves and Ohio Northern <laughs> University. The game has devolved from a neck and neck, neck battle to who has the biggest shoes, how many ties can they <laughs> swallow down. Both of these teams are just throwing stuff at a wall, hoping something sticks. Chevy, take a seat. It's going to be a close Baron contest, but Kai is melting it down. How long did that Baron last? I mean, 20 seconds, if that. Now Dragon spawns potential Infernal Soul on the Rift for Ottawa. And that Baron lasted not too long there. Was not long for this oh, world. Hook? Oh, he gets hooked! 
It's only on to Plux, though. Are they going to pull the trigger? Plux able to dash out. Blonde, Blonde is separated away from the fight. Another hook there. This time on to Prod. Chain of Corruption comes out. Mother's going to try to mother around. Blonde finds oh, three with the pop blossom, but there's no follow-up shibby. Nobody is around to help him out, but Levi goes legendary. Levi's going crazy, but it's Ohio Northern who are taking the fight in the river. Ohio Northern, they get four. Killian is the sole survivor, a triple kill for aggression as he goes Space Jam mode on the Ottawa Braves. Dunk after dunk after dunk after dunk. Shaquille O'Neal has entered the building. Get some icy hot for Ottawa Braves because they might just need it after this series. A back no way. and forth battle. No back. way. Can Killian do it? Killian dives in trying to save the game, but the brothers have solidified their place at the top of the MEC standings. Ohio Northern remain unbeaten, and they move to 6-0. Mac Dewey, if you come for the king, if what? you come for the crown, you said it best. You better aim for the head. And unfortunately, Ottawa... Just miss it by a margin here. Oh, and you six and zero in the regular season. They are one win away from an undefeated season. They lock themselves into top two. Their final test, the last battle in the Tower of Power, the Tower of Death. <laughs> they have to face off against Purdue Northwest in week. Uh, week five, the final week here. Yep. I mean, just, just, just insane, right? Oh, and you, monster run here. I, I mean, it's, it's, they are the best team that we have in MEC right now. Like, it's just facts, right? It's just, just facts. facts. It's just facts. No paper. Shoot I think shoot. I, I'm giving my applause, my golf clap here. We just saw greatness out on the rift for O and you. I think I mentioned it before in game number one. They were in sync. They were moving as one, making those plays. Shout out Cuz on the Nautilus for those hooks in the last fight. One hook after another. Uh, the dredge line was looking like a predator missile. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, heat seeking, right? You would think. You would think. I mean, it was just kind of crazy. And... and a heroic effort from Blonde there, right? I mean, just boom, boom, boom. It was just it was just not enough oomph, right? Killian on the Zach, just not able to produce that double kind of overhead engage that we were seeing from mm -hmm. Prod, or sorry, from a uh, 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 Zach, from Killian, from Blonde here on that uh nico there and just levi was it was not allowed the space to win these fights right it was a, a fractured fight nico went down you got some executes down but realistically aggression picked up three kills on the darius dunk after dunk after dunk and then just levi not able to kind of do his his smolder thing right he yeah. got to the execute i think he was at the other threshold where if you add another 60 stacks you gain another percent that's how deep we were into this game ottawa had the lead they had control and it kind of just slipped through their fingers because they were getting a little desperate right it kind of started from that mid lane river uh death from plucks and then killian was deep behind enemy lines they lost yep. momentum <laughs> the baron went to owen you then the dragon fight and then boom the game was over wow couldn't be in a more ottawa fashion i think <laughs> well should be Esports events are really more than just a place to compete. It's a social experience. You get to meet friends and rivals, bond and grow with your peers, and create memories that define someone's esports experience. It can capture the passion of esports in its truest sense. Gamers and their experiences are just one aspect that's covered in Unified's newest offering, Master the, Mastering the Arena, People Power Esports, which you can read using command exclamation point people power in the chat. That was a social experience for me, for all of us, I think, watching that series. What a crazy finish. We're going to hop into a quick break as we get ready to go for the post-game interview. We'll be talking from one of the unbeaten members of Ohio Northern who sit currently atop 
the MEC staring down at everybody else. It's the king himself. You won't want to miss it. We'll be back in just a sec. Hello everyone and welcome back to <laughs> our continuing coverage of the Midwest Esports Conference. Should be laughing at me as we're getting ready for our post-game <laughs> interview. We're here with the king! Square up! Get ready! We're, we gotta show up! This is serious, man! Julian, thank you so much for joining us for the post-game interview, my guy. Absolutely, my name. pleasure. <laughs> You said his name wrong. It's His Excellency Owen Yuki. That oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, That's what yeah. I was looking at. Read the, read the title, Mac. I'm sorry. Read the title. Yeah. Do the exclamation <laughs> mark, Julian. Is that one? Yep. 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 Uh, Julian, it's just insane to see Owen Yu time after time just beat team after team after team it feels like you guys have gone through the gauntlet of teams at the moment um mm -hmm. i would argue you're facing one of your biggest challenges ne uh, next week obviously is going for that undefeated record something you guys are, are, are gunning for keeping in mind or for you guys is it more of a focus on let's get better let's get ready for playoffs because that's when the true test kind of begins it's 100 percent about playing for improvement at this point um I agree, Purdue is probably one of the hardest opponents that we have. I saw the GVU-Purdue game. I don't know what happened that game. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened. They were not playing the best, but I, mean, I don't expect that out of them. I expect a lot more. I think that was probably just a fluke, and I think they probably are our hardest opponents. Mm -hmm. Well, but thinking about our series tonight a little bit, Julian, it's a late night for y'all, three games. Is there anything that keeps the O and U squad going in these close series? Um, that's a great question. I don't know. I think we really don't like losing. And so whenever <laughs> we drop a game, that's kind of just a wake up call. It like gives us the yeah. adrenaline rush of like, okay, let's stop trolling. Granted, <laughs> I think we still trolled so much in game three. I don't know what really happened tonight. All three games, like, I don't think we played very well. I think we had a mm -hmm. bad series tonight. We still came up on top, luckily. Uh, but at this point, like we talked about it earlier, but we're kind of guaranteed high seed in playoffs at this point. So it's mm -hmm. not really about going undefeated would be nice, but it's more about playing for improvement. I mean, as you can see here, it's completely empty. I, my team <laughs> carried me, so I stay late tonight. You know what I mean? <laughs> I saw like, a light I, I turn late. off in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's completely dead here. I'm only, I'm only one. Uh... Final question from me, Julian. Obviously, you guys are playing for improvement, all that stuff. Purdue Northwest, your toughest matchup. Heading into playoffs, right? It feels like everybody comes in 0-0. Everybody's a different beast. Is there anyone that you are, you know, I guess in particular, looking forward to kind of, I guess, potentially rematch up against, in this case, into the playoffs, right? Um, Honestly, not really. I think for some reason, like... I think we've been like slept on this season uh, in MEC and just in general. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we're really good. I think we're probably towards the upper side of MEC and probably towards the upper side of just all college teams, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think Power honestly, rankings? I ding, mean, ding, I, collegiate power rankings? <laughs> yeah, for real, honestly. I mean, I think it's crazy because like on paper, I think we're really good. Like our entire top side, like peak grandmaster, except for top who's going to peak grandmaster and then Kyle was challenger last week and Ken was challenger before. Like, I think we're really good. Um, mm -hmm. But going to playoffs, I think Purdue obviously looks like the strongest team. I think GVU also looks really good. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, our goal is to win, you know. I think being slept on has made us realize that if it comes down to a board decision, maybe we won't get picked for college playoffs, like the bracket. And that's the ultimate mm -hmm. goal. Like, we want that bracket. And so 
I think we kind yeah. of realize like we just have to win, and so to get that guaranteed spot. So that's the yeah. goal. What's what's it mean for your squad who things were kind of jumbled a little bit last year, headed into this year as a little bit of a redemption? What's it mean for you guys? I'm talking about the playoffs, talking about CeeLo. Um, what's it mean for the squad to go into a bit of a redemption this year? Um, I think that's a good question. This is my first semester at ONU. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get in for the past like year beforehand and mm -hmm. problems came up and I couldn't get in. Mm -hmm. um, but I finally got in here. And so I think, I don't know. I think it definitely is a refreshing aspect with, with this iteration of the roster that we have. Um, I think all of us feel pretty confident in ourselves of, of what we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was some disappointment. I know last semester they had to forfeit all their games. I think that was really disappointing. Yeah. And I think they've definitely had some rough times. I mean, Aggression was playing jungle and he's a top laner. And I, <laughs> there, there, there have been some tough times for sure. But I think it feels like this is like final form. You know what I mean? A little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think we, yeah. we, we feel really strong. Don't sleep on the aggression jungle loot here, man. That's my <laughs> oh, my goat last. <laughs> you know what? I will say he has beat me in the jungle on Udyr in when I was in middle school. So no, don't no sleep on it. Don't absolutely, sleep on no, it, aggression. Absolutely. I got you. Yeah, you got you, your fans are still. <laughs> you know what? Here, but, Might have um... been a little bit of a team gap, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> Happens. Well, thank you so much for joining us for the post game interview, Actually, Julian. Before we let you go. The people the have people a question can hear me. for the king. Yes, they have a question gotcha. for the king. What is the uh, question? Do you like to move it, move it? Oh, I love to move it, move it. <laughs> I love to move it, move it. Absolutely. I would move it, move it right now if we had music, but we don't. Unlucky. That'll be, have to be for next time. Maybe we can take the that? music for next time. Do the copy. And... Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind then. <laughs> Maybe some copyright safe music. I'll move it, move it next time. Are there any copyright safe alternatives to move? Is it Shibby and Max rendition? We'll get that cooked up for <laughs> yeah, you yeah, for yeah, the for night. Sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, I can, can, I can, like, I can beatbox. I can beatbox it. Mac, acapella? Yeah, I think we can muster something up. We'll, we'll, we'll figure right, something. How about this? How about this? How about this? If you win 7 0, if you go the undefeated, me and Mac will have the, uh, the, the acapella version of move it, <laughs> move, move it, move ready it. to go. Move yeah, okay, it. all right. As a deal, that's a deal. We e shake on Done it. Deal. We e shake Done on deal. it. Absolutely. E shake on it. Done deal. Okay, for sure. okay. There all we right. go. It's happening. It's signed. <laughs> it's here. Chat says it's a little bit doomed, but we're okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we're gonna make it work. We'll figure it out, Julian. Before we let you go, do you have any shout outs that you want to give out? Shout out the family. Shout out my team. Shout out all my friends and fans in the chat. I appreciate all you guys' time. Well, Julian, we appreciate your time staying late for us for the post-game interview. We'll let you move it, move it on out of there, and we hope to see how things go next week for you. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. And that is going to do it, Shibby. A fantastic Monday night of League of Legends action. The MEC delivered on their Monday night madness promise. It's been an absolute pleasure being with all of y'all through all of it. Shippy, thank you so much for joining me for our crazy series. ONU going to the top of the standings. They finish week number four, six and zero. Oh, one game, Shippy, one game away from protection or perfection. Excuse me. Uh, we'll have to see how things go. There will be more MEC action throughout the week, I believe. Some Rocket League action coming your way, as well as League of Legends coming back on Friday. Week number five, the final week of the regular season. You won't want to miss it. That's going to do it for our coverage tonight. Shibby, thank you again. That's been it from Mac. Shout out Hyper, helping us make us look so good on stream we appreciate you so much hyper for everything you do for us and the community as well so that's gonna do it hope to see you guys soon